It's 8 o'clock on today. Coming up in the U.S., the five American prisoners held for years in Iran returning home. He's missed eight years of the most productive years of his life. This morning, new details on their emotional homecoming and the controversial deal at the center of it all. Then, no more needles? The FDA set to approve the first ever needle-free EpiPen, a new nasal spray that could be a game changer for nearly two million people. So how effective is it and when will it be available? Plus, honoring the courageous. This morning, a Today tradition. Caroline Kennedy and son Jack Schlossberg are live to reveal the recipients of this year's Profile in Courage Award. The exclusive announcement straight ahead. And the countdown is on. Three, two, one. Hallmark Channel releases a first look at its new holiday lineup. All the movies, all the stars. Let's do this together. Absolutely. With just 97 days until the big day. I'm sorry, what day is it? Today, Tuesday, September 19th, 2023. Go! Tennessee. Today is my 60th birthday. Hi, my sister's Kate. Watching in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Celebrating our anniversary. Married 25 years. Visiting from Sedona, Washington. Washington. Madison, Wisconsin. Speaking from California. And home Good morning to our kids. In Melamore, Illinois. Sister's trip from Roswell, Georgia. And Titusville, Florida. Because today I turned 60. Love my mom, who watches the Today Show every day in Richmond, Indiana. We love you. We are back at 11 with the Today exclusive. Since 1989, the Kennedy family and the JFK Library Foundation have used the Profile and Courage Award to celebrate the qualities President Kennedy admired most. It's given to public servants who've made courageous decisions without regard for personal or professional consequences. And we're so delighted to have Ambassador Caroline Kennedy here and her son, Jack Schlossberg, to announce this year's recipients. Good morning to both of you. Thank you. Good Lots morning. to catch up with you about. I, I hope we have our, our um, drum roll ready, but we're gonna let you go, Jack. You're gonna, you guys are gonna announce the recipients this year. We have yes. two. Well, let's start with the domestic recipients yes. who won this year's award. Well, this year we're celebrating five state senators from South Carolina, Senators Sen, Sheely, Matthews, McLeod, and Gustafson. Uh, each who took a stand to protect individual rights when the state considered uh, a ban, uh, a total abortion ban. Uh, this is a bipartisan state. group of senators, yes. by the way. Uh, they represent all the female senators in the state Senate. Uh, they're from different political parties, and they have very different views uh, on the issue of abortion. Some are pro-choice and others are pro-life. But they came together and they stuck together, and it wasn't easy. They, uh, they faced personal and political attacks and intense opposition. Um, but they stuck together uh, to protect individual rights. One of the things the award always recognizes is people who take actions that might actually be against their own political incentives. Is yeah. that the case here? Yes, it came at um, great political risk for each of these senators, some of whom are facing primary challenges. So this was not an easy issue for them to take on. Um, but they thought it was important enough uh, to fight. Ambassador Kennedy, you have an international recipient to tell us about, too, actually. Right, right. Well, um, this year we're giving a special international award to President Yoon of South Korea and Prime Minister Kishida of Japan. And um, they both um, put their difficult historical issues aside to pursue closer relationships between their two countries, which are democracies, economic powerhouses, and neighbors, and close allies of the United States. Um, and they, um, the relations had been at a low point and the, um, President Yoon uh, went out of his way right after his election, faced uh, political opposition at home. Prime Minister Kishida, oh, the same, um, met him more than halfway and together they forged a new uh, relationship and, um, and it's in their country's interest and in the U.S. interest as well. And for people who aren't familiar, as familiar with the history there, I mean, I read one analysis said that this meeting, this coming together was a minor miracle. Absolutely. And people here don't understand how di how difficult the relationships can be there um, uh, over many, many years. And um, so it's incredibly courageous. I saw this firsthand when I was in Japan, how difficult and complicated some of these issues are. And they deserve tremendous amounts of credit and they're facing opposition at home, but they did the right thing for their countries. Well, that's what the award is really all about. We're always delighted to have you here. It's our tradition now. You tell us about the profiles and courage. Obviously, the original profile and courage is of your father and what he did 
uh, you know, in the war. And you guys recently recreated the three mile swim he took for his life, saving uh, his crewmates sort of recreated in the right. Solomon Islands. Now you're all, you, you, we talked to you when it happened, you were soaking wet, but here you are. <laughs> so take us inside this moment and what it meant to you. Oh, it was incredible. It's so beautiful there, but I think we were both uh, overwhelmed by the scale and the immensity and the courage that it took for all these young men who were serving so far away from home 80 years ago. And, um, and this was a miraculous rescue and the people in that community were so welcoming and so proud of the history that our country share. So it, it meant a lot to us. It's astonishing. I mean, it was a three mile swim again for his life that your, your grandfather took and you took a version of that. Yeah. What goes through your mind when you're retracing those steps? Well, I, I couldn't help but think that I, mean, I wouldn't be sitting here. My mom would not be sitting here if it weren't for the courage of my grandfather and of the Solomon Scouts and Australian Coast Watchers who saved his life. So. That really sunk in when, when we were out in the Solomon Islands. Now, I heard there was a sting. I didn't know if it was a jellyfish or the sting of your mother beating you yeah. in, in the swim. Yeah, I don't know which was more painful. <laughs> um, but it's not, my mom beating me at swimming is nothing that I'm not used oh, to. So. Oh, 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 he is so nice. He always lets me win. He's so good. Well, so tell me what's going on with you. You know, I was checking on your law studies. I, I hear you passed the bar. You're about to go practice law. I passed the bar. Um, I'm about to start a new chapter in my life. I can't say exactly what I'm going to be doing next, but I'm very excited to be done with school. Oh, OK. So you're going on American Idol. Got yeah. it. Uh, <laughs> and how about you, Ambassador Kennedy? You're the ambassador to Australia. How has that been? I just told you it's this country of my birth. I so know, I'm very I excited so I'm, to meet the ambassador. I'm <laughs> here. I'm making the round. Um, I feel connected. But um, it's incredibly interesting time. I'm, I'm so lucky to be serving. Um, President Biden out there in the Indo-Pacific and the administration has a huge agenda. They're our closest ally uh, along with Japan and Korea and um, and there's so many important issues. I'm sure the president's going to address them today at the UN and um, so it's, it's an incredibly important time to be there. Clean energy, climate revolution, national security, economics, so it's a lot. Many important issues at the UN this week. A lot of world leaders are there. Jack, I have to ask you, you did post a video. You're obviously, your uncle RFK Jr. is running for president. You posted a video and you were quite critical of him um, and, and some of his no, views, no, his standpoints and the things he's said. What led you to do that? Why was it important to you? Are you glad you did it? I'm very glad I did it. I stand by what I said uh, in my video. I love my family and I'm very proud of our legacy of public service, especially my mom. Uh, we're lucky to have her as U.S. ambassador to Australia. Um, but I think Joe Biden is a fantastic president. I think on every issue from uh, the economy, health care, climate change, civil rights, his record speaks for itself. So everything else. These is were harsh words, though, Jack. I mean, you no. said he's using Camelot. He's he's. It's essentially abusing the family name in a way. Well, I think President Biden has done a fantastic job. And I think the issues in this election are way too important for any of us to be distracted. So I stand by what I said in my video. Did you know he was going to send that video? Oh, no. <laughs> no, and he did. <laughs> and is it complicated right now? In, given the situation, you obviously not are really. great. Not complicated. Not complicated. No? No. Why not? Why not? Um, because I, I, you know, I know what I think. I know what Jack thinks. I know what Bobby Kennedy thinks. And so um, it's not complicated. All right. Thank you so much. Very interesting to hear about the Profound Courage Awards. Thank Always good to us. catch up with Thank both you of you. Us. Keep us posted on your next adventures, wherever they may be. Okay, we will. Ambassador, we thank will. you, you Jack. come swimming with us oh, next time. I mean, I don't want to embarrass myself <laughs> or be seen in a bathing suit, frankly, but that's another that story. Was, that was courageous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. Appreciate it.
am fired up for this one, guys. This morning on Today's Style, the People and Today Beauty Awards, we teamed up for the ninth year in a row to try hundreds of new products and find out which ones really work. Here to walk us through some of the must-haves, we have Jill Martin Brooks from Today and People's Style and Beauty Director Andrea Laventhal. Good morning, ladies. Good, Good morning. morning. I mean, two for the price of one. I just love it. Yeah, we love these because we teamed up about, we said, a decade ago. Yeah. Everything here is drugstore and under $22, okay. which you get the bang for your buck. And so. you and the editors, y'all tried everything. Everything. Yes. Our staff, we're very well we're, moisturized. Yes, 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 we're that's very why well. we don't look like we've been doing it for a decade. <laughs> You've right? been exfoliating, moisturizing. Yes, okay. Without further ado, what's this one? This so is this is a L'Oreal blush. This is okay. their infallible. What we loved about this, it's a bold color payoff. Yeah. How so do you if you do like that? your blush bright and bold, like Dana here from People, you this color lasts forever. It gives you good pigment. You can layer it, right? If you don't okay. want to look you oh, know, it is too a much. real pop. I'm yeah, wearing it pop. right now. The, yeah. This is a color I wouldn't normally wear, but I wore it more as a bronzer for and and I like it. And you did it with like a cherry lip, which is really pretty. Yeah. On you. Well, we're getting to the cherry lip. Oh, yeah. are we? Well, so what a segue. So that's a, it. that's a great one. Let's move on to mascara. So this is the Winky Lux Detail Oriented Mascara. It's nineteen dollars. What our tester loved about this is look at how small the oh. applicator is. So what's great about this, Wait, you they can gotta get, show that. It's teeny tiny. Yeah, can you zoom in? Yeah. It's just a skinny brush. So what's great about this is you could get every single lash and it doesn't clump. Mm -hmm. And even the is bottom. It for a lashes, light look, it's not for like heavy yes. nighttime wear. Right, but you could layer it. And so yeah. when you go to the bottom lashes oh. like this, which I'm wearing it right now, you could get that like extra detail without okay. a clumping. So this is a really good one, and you get a lot of bang for your buck. Okay. $19. No lash left behind. Yeah, with I was this gonna say, one. I've never seen one so small. Yeah. Okay. What is this one we so have? So this is Lottie London Bright Bounce Under Eye Brightening Primer. Does this primer. really work? Okay, so our Have staffers met my bag? said, <laughs> we had one staffer who said she has really, really dark circles and swore that this conquered them. But okay. it's cool, it's a primer. So you put this on first mm -hmm. under your concealer. And this is Sarah from my team, and she is a brand new mom, and no one has circles like a new mom, and she swears by it. Wow. So you put it on, it's gonna brighten, and it's gonna create like the perfect canvas for your concealer. Okay, so that first, then the concealer. And yeah. do you, you recommend to go a little lighter, right? Because yeah, it's you under your eyes. It. Because you wanna brighten And you don't wanna get all cakey. Yeah. Either. And you so. can wear it on its own too, but okay. for those who really, really need the coverage, this is gonna be like. Lottie, the best. I, didn't even, I don't even know that. Yeah, brand. Lottie okay. Lenton, it's a great brand. Cute. Okay. So this is Glossier G Suite Liquid Lipstick, $22. Now this is like to have a little fun. I am wearing color, which I, I never love, wear. Which you should, because it's, it's, it's so beautiful. pretty on Thank you. Thank you, I, I like it. Thank you. So it's just a little lip stain. A little goes a long way. So I love a lip the, the one yeah. trick to this is not to overdo it. So you oh. take it and you just put a little bit on. Now is this and matte? Then, you know how some of them kind yes. of dry out your lips? It's However, matte, but it's not a dry, dull matte. Yes, because I wear lip gloss yes. and this I'm just wearing, You know, if you know me, I'm always walking, walking around with my lip gloss. I just did a little bit of the stain and it goes a long way. And I've been wearing this since like 5 30 this morning yeah and it's yeah. so it's got great color payoff yeah and, and there's lasts. all different colors so it's this pretty. is a great way to experiment with color did you put gloss on and top of it i did not oh because it looks nice and yeah. moisturized it's I not too not. dry okay cool all right this is one of my favorite brands this is sold to target it's odell this is a hair oil hair oils are tricky right they give you the shine but they can also give weight Greasy. this one is totally weightless mm. it feels great in your hair it's okay. 12 Wow, and okay. I like the size too. Like if you had and no you can fades. Yeah, you can use it Garden. before. Yeah, you blow dry. You oh. can use it after touch ups. It smells nice. I just did a yeah. little. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, and a again, we don't. We have my hair's mess. Twelve dollars okay. for yeah. hair oil is a really great price, and this one's just awesome. Our our, our staffers love this. Like smells good too. Yeah. Okay, so this the brand says in fourteen days will change your life. <laughs> it's a lot to promise. No, it will change your skin. And I use this this morning. It's great to just put on, let it marinate, let it soak. I even use it at night and yeah. take it off with a washcloth yeah. cloth and let it sit. So this is a lot of bang for your buck. It's the PM moisturizer, the skin barrier. Um, we have our tester here, I think, that who's used it. But it's $17, and this will renew, it'll brighten, and it'll, in 14 days, yeah, and everyone rejuvenate your skin. Luxurious. Oh, that's the okay. word that everyone needs. Right? That's what you want. And that's a night cream, although you used it this morning. All right. Because you're wild like that. Yeah, that's like crazy. you. I mean, yeah, just go crazy. Like you hair oil, as you yes, say. Yes. And last but not least, Dove Beauty this. Bar. It, it's such a classic, yeah. like, simple item, and yet, bar soap is hard to get right. 
This one's awesome. It doesn't dry your skin. It's moisturizing, and it's five dollars for two. Love that. Two bars. It doesn't get I better than that. I still use this. Yeah, that's and great. this one's for dry skin. What a Proxy. team, Jill and yeah. Andrea. Thank you so so awesome much. Too. Yeah, you can know, find these products and more of our beauty award winners. We, I could just do this all day. All with day, you ladies. Uh, but you could just go to today.com/shop and then you could do it all day. Uh, you can find the new issue of People with the full list on newsstands as well. Andrea, thank you. Thank you, Jill. Thank, thank you. you. Hold it over to you. Can you believe who's sitting next to me? Aww. The one the only Taraji P. Henson. We're going to talk about the wonderful work she's doing far from Hollywood. Very important work. But first, this is today on NBC. with one of our very favorites, Taraji P. Henson. She's an award-winning actress with dozens of hit movies and series, including, of course, her unforgettable role as Cookie on Empire. She's also a fierce advocate for mental health. Through her foundation, Taraji is on a mission. She is going to bring more resources directly to women on the campuses of historically black colleges and universities, and she's got an exciting announcement. Mm -hmm. Taraji, first of all, this has kind of become your life's work. Yes. This is not a fad or a phase yeah. or a cause. This is something very meaningful to you, and you are bringing it straight to colleges. Yeah. What exactly are you doing? So we're um, erecting these uh, She Care pods, um, partnering with Kate Spade, New York. Mm -hmm. um, I'm so We're so grateful for them. And um, it's a place where it's respite. It's a respite mm -hmm. center. So it's a place where you can go and uh, decom decompress. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of students have never had a therapist. It's a place mm -hmm. where you can speak openly about mental wellness because in our community, you know, we don't really talk about it. It's taboo. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to... We wanted a, a, a safe space for students to come and, mm -hmm. and be able to talk about what might be bothering them. Well, you know firsthand how difficult mental health issues yeah. can be. And I mm -hmm. think I was reading this. Let me find the page. <laughs> it was a 2020 episode of your Facebook Watch series, series yeah. Peace of Mind with Taraji. And you revealed that you thought about taking your own life during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And you said this. I had a dark moment. I was in a dark place. For a couple of days, I couldn't get out of bed and I didn't care. That's not me. And then I started having thoughts about ending it. It happened two nights in a row. I purchased a gun not too long ago. It's mm -hmm. in a safe. And I started like, well, if I could just go there right now and just end it all, because I want it to be over. But then something happened and you went alone away for a month mm -hmm. and kind of found yourself again. Mm -hmm. How did you get out of that? dark place well because i have a therapist you yeah. know um it's not taboo for me i speak yeah, openly about it. it right and i knew for me getting it out of my head like saying it, this mm -hmm. is how i feel would help 
Um, mm. But when you don't talk about it, it then becomes a plan, mm -hmm. you know? So I knew that I had tools and I started speaking about it. And then my friends were like, <laughs> they got really concerned. So yeah. we found a place for me to go in um, Bali for me to just regroup and gather myself. And the thing about mental wellness is knowing when it's enough, knowing when to say no, knowing when you've reached your, your limit. Yeah. Um, and I think people are so afraid to say that because we are in a grind. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all about yes. grinding and pushing yes. through and you can't push through. You, you have to stop and really listen to your body. These uh, college kids you're talking about mm -hmm. are in desperate need yes. of these kind of resources. Absolutely. How do you know how critical the need is? I w I'm a college student. Yeah. I graduated in, in 95 and so many students dropped out when I was in college and we didn't know why because we didn't talk about about it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the work that I'm doing now, I wish I could have done back then. I mm -hmm. wish there was places for, you know, f that was there in, for us to go and talk. I, I think I became pregnant in college. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Thank God my family was supportive. But uh, what about the many students that didn't have the support of a family that had to drop out? And your first pod was in what? College? Alabama State University. And this one is going to be at Hampton University. OK. And Alabama State, you opened it. And what was that like? Oh, my God, it was amazing. Yeah. The students were very receptive to it. Um, we're very particular about what schools we pick because we want to make sure we're picking um, universities that are invested yes. in their students' mental wellness. Wellness because once we once we um, erect the pod, now you have to make sure it sustains. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, we're we're really particular about which universities we're going after. Mm -hmm. Daraji, are you hopeful? Because I feel like this is an option for you to do this or not do this. Oh yeah. And do you feel hopeful? Very hopeful. Um, I get people in my DMs all the time um, saying how the the foundation has changed their life saved their life. I really feel like I'm doing what God sent me, put me on this earth to do. Um, it's something really freeing when you find your life's purpose. Hmm. I thought it was through acting. Acting is what brought me here. You know, um, I just want to help people. I don't think people should suffer in silence or suffer alone. We all have our cross to bear. Everyone has something that they're carrying that they have to get through and you're not alone. Well, and what I love is just a few seconds ago, your your friend from seventh grade was yes. standing right next to me. And you Tracy. said, this, you said, this is Tracy. She's my friend from seventh grade. She's the one who started the foundation with me. Yeah. She's my, like next to me all the way. That says so much about you. Like you've got yeah. all your history with you. I do. Tracy rocks. <laughs> yes, she does. And so does Case Bay, New York. We are yeah. so grateful for our partnership. Yeah. Well, I yeah. can't wait to see how far it goes. And yes. I can just see. Taraji, we love you. Thank you for coming to see us here in Thank Studio One. So we appreciate it. We're back with Today Food and this morning's guest, uh, one of our favorites, Stanley Tucci. Lucky us, an Emmy Award winning actor, author, dad, and one of America's favorite home chefs. And he just launched a new cookware line with Green Pan. I mean, it's so exciting. On the menu, he's got a special recipe from his childhood 
Maria Rosa's sauce. Yes. Who is Maria Rosa? She was a woman that my mother uh, met when we were living in, in Florence. And uh, my mother had never made a sauce like this, and she taught her how to make it. Oh, and now you're going to yeah. tell us. I am going to tell you. Very yes. exciting. Yes. Is there something yeah. super secret about her sauce in particular? I mean, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. No. People always think that. No. Basically, what it is, it's almost the the base of a of a bolognese, but okay. without the meat. It's a, it's a great sort of vegetarian meal if you want. If you want. I was just hinting at it during the tease, but it's really, I mean, we all know you as an actor, you're an incredibly accomplished actor, and now you've discovered this passion, or let, we have discovered that you have a passion yes, yes. for food, and it's really become a big part of, of what you're doing. Yeah, it's a huge part of what I do now, and, um, you know, I did started this, doing this show years ago that I, it was an idea I had a long time ago, you know, going through Italy, and, um, and so that's lovely. We, you know, cooking always has just become a huge part of my life. And I'm lucky enough to have uh, chefs who are friends and or friends who are chefs. And um, it's it's kind of taken over a bit. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like it's a big tradition, too. I know when you were young, you would watch Julia Child cooking shows with your mom. Yeah. And now, flash forward, you've got a son who's graduated culinary school. Yes. What is that like for you? It's amazing. It's amazing. Now he teaches me. It's great. I love that. Well, let's go. We got to get Maria Rosa's recipe yeah, here. Yeah, so let's come on over yeah. here. We should mention, Stanley, not yes. only are you a chef, you have your own cookware line. Here I have now. a cookware line that we just came out with, made uh, with by with Green Pan. And um, it's we worked on it for the last couple of years. How fun. Uh, and it's very exciting. It's all made in Italy, which was something that I really wanted to do. And it's all nonstick. Hmm. Yes. All it, there's no quality crust, stuff. There's none of that sort of toxicity. All, so it's and it and it has real weight to it. It looks. I just pretty. love it. It's based very on, elegant and classy, uh, like you. Hey, thanks, babe. It says Tucci I, on the know, side. It, it does. does look like. You. Yeah, that's so I know it's mine. The guy that designed yeah. it that helped you in Italy, Jan, I think was his yeah, name. He's he watched all your Instagram videos and he yeah, said he that did. this is actually designed by the way that Mr. Tucci dresses. Yeah, and it, it does look <laughs> like you. Um, yeah. This is also born out of the idea that you would travel with your cookware, and you know this. We we rent a lot of homes with our family when I'm there for work. Yeah. And you can rent like a really sick pad, but like there's crap in the kitchen. The true, true, oh, it's true. terrible. It's terrible. No money is spent in the in the kitchen. Really, it's certainly in cookware. Was that no. part of the reason you wanted to design this? Yeah, because you're bringing of. your own all over the world. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, when I whenever we go on vacation in England, you know, because we live in England, we go on vacation. I always bring stuff. <laughs> I bring like knives. I bring pots. I bring. Yeah. This is not an eight quart pasta pan. Yeah, exactly. No, I no. need. Yeah, and or they'll have a colander because the British don't eat pasta the way right. I eat pasta. Right. And so you'll have a colander that's like that big. Right. You yeah. know. No, well, that's not gonna happen. I love that you right, travel so with your own cookware. Let's okay. Get back. What do we all right, rendering so, down? So this sauce, this is this is really an incredibly simple sauce. It's onion, uh, carrot, uh, pars uh, uh, celery. celery. What's that called? Celery. celery. Yeah. Uh, a little Holy bit of garlic. There of you put sorts. that in there with a, a little olive oil and a little butter, and you saute it down. Actually, you've done it in here. Are your knife skills that good? That's amazing. They're not quite that good. Yeah. But yeah. I don't. There know, is something know special about that. Yeah. a bolognese sauce that even if you don't like meat, there's something in there that you want in just kind of a basic marinara. What is that? Is it a fat? What's the missing? What makes this taste like a great bolognese without the meat? Uh, it, it's really hard to say. I think it's the addition of this smallest amount of butter really makes mm -hmm. a difference. Uh, and making sure that everything is, is rendered down properly. OK. Um, and then you're just going to take like this canned tomato. Mm -hmm. So a fresh, uh, no, not a fresh tomato, a canned tomato. Yeah, a fresh can canned tomato. tomato. Fresh canned tomato. Just canned. And, and Throw it in mm. here. Mm -hmm. You can crunch it up with your hand. Should you I do can that puree now? it if you want. I wouldn't do that. Okay. You have such nice, nice nails. What do you think? Do. do you want to do that? I do. Well, knock okay. yourself out. Because now I can tell people is a I am. Person, right? Oh, what? Your Felicity does camera for Felicity your show. Felicity and and my business partner Lottie. Is, is both food of something them. you shared? With your wife, was that oh, a yeah. common thread? Oh yeah, that's that's really that was of... that was sort of how we met. We met at her sister's wedding, and all we talked about was food. Right. And then you've got little London. kids too, like our kids aged. Are yeah. they adventurous eaters? No, or is it the trifecta? Oh no, they're terrible. Okay, so chicken fingers, French fries, William burgers. Sonoma exclusively. Yeah. Check out the line today.com slash food for more on the Tucci wear. Stanley Tucci, thank you. See you after thank local. You. This morning on the third hour of today, sneak peek. Tiny towns are bracing for big crowds of foliage fans, including one Vermont farm that's become a social media hotspot. This is insane. 
how some people are now trying to shut down the leaf peeping before it starts. Plus, out of this world, meet the trailblazing astronauts set to make space history. It's still exciting every single day that we get to come and do training in this mock-up. And step inside the high-tech simulator, preparing her for a trip around the moon. Then before you launch into a workout, we'll show you the proper way to warm up and cool down in this morning's Start Today. And it's Tucci Tuesday. Actor Stanley Tucci is here to share one of his favorite Italian recipes in today food. That's all ahead today, Tuesday, September 19th, 2023. Live from Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza, this is the third hour of today. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the third hour of today. I am Dylan here with Chanel and our friend. And Good morning. Good morning. Good to Joe be here Fires. with you all. Good to have you here. Was I supposed to bring workout clothes? Is yes, this? Is. yes. Well, okay. That's why we, we wore pants worried. today. So we figured we'd be wearing pants. I'm good. I did yes. wear pants today, so I'm feeling out. good. Well, All we're right. happy you're here with I'm us. I'm glad to yes. be here. It's going to be a fun hour. Um, we're going to start, though. You know that chill you feel in the air? Yes. Kind of starting to feel like fall. It's certainly approaching. Well, every year... It's when the leaves change. Well, then tourists flock to New England to see all the beautiful foliage. But one Vermont farm in particular has become the backdrop for fall photo shoots that are all over social media. I mean, it is beautiful, but now some locals are saying leaf us alone. Who wrote that? I didn't write that, but I, wanted to, I wish I could give the you writer nailed credit. It, though. You nailed did it. you write that out? That was a line for Al. Uh, oh, okay. Who did it? No, I said it's a line Al should have said. Oh, there you go. Well, NBC's Kristen Dahlgren is live there to explain. It is. Look at that. I mean, it almost doesn't even look real. Right. Good morning, guys. Yes. Here it is. I'm told it's the most photographed spot in Vermont. But in another four days, we wouldn't be able to give you this view. Neighbors are closing down the road. They say it has just gotten out of hand. You've probably seen Sleepy Hollow Farm on Instagram or TikTok. From here, we'll stop by the famous Sleepy Hollow Farm, which we've all seen all over social media. Out there! When the leaves change, this quaint little spot rivals Grand Central Station. This is insane. Hundreds of cars line the narrow road, trying to get that perfect pick. It's worth dealing with the crowds because this is the most picturesque place in Vermont. The problem is it's not an actual tourist destination, but somebody's private residence with real life neighbors. People showing up and walking all over private property and peeing on the side of the road and on private property. Neighbors Not like today. Mike Doton and Amy Robb say it's Yesterday. out of control. We see people in dressing rooms, like they bring dressing rooms to change in different outfits and take pictures. Yep. And it's not just privacy, it's safety too. Emergency vehicles often forced to wait in the traffic. So this year, neighbors petitioned to close the road to outside traffic from September 23rd to October 15th, raising the money themselves to cover most of the costs. Yes, it's beautiful up here, but please, um, could you make it so that our everyday stuff can get done? Like, I'm just trying to get home with groceries so I can make it. Okay. It's not only New England towns pushing back against tourists looking for likes. Across the pond in Europe, Hallstatt, Austria, which resembles Arendelle in the Disney movie Frozen, sees more than a million tourists each year. Now its 750 residents have blocked the only road in. Venice just approved a new five euro tax on day trippers. And also in Italy, Portofino is issuing $300 tickets for lingering in popular selfie spots. Back in Vermont, townspeople say the latest move doesn't mean you won't get a spectacular selfie. So this is not the only place where you can see beautiful foliage in uh, Absolutely not. You can actually just drive up 89, which is our north-south throughway, <laughs> and have a beautiful drive. Vermont's kind of pretty. <laughs> it is. <laughs> We're pretty lucky. Yeah, you are not going to miss out on a beautiful shot if you come to Vermont. Now, we reached out to the people who own this house. We didn't hear back, but the neighbors said it was okay for us to park here today uh, and do this. They say it's really just during peak season. And they've tried to make other, you know, 
accommodations. Last year, they made it a one way road, but that didn't really help the problem. It's still an issue of safety. And then it's just respect, guys. I mean, you see those shots and those videos, people walking down their driveway. You said people are urinating on the side of the road. Like that is not OK. <laughs> yeah. And so they really just want people to be I respectful. Yeah, that's where you got us if yeah. they're doing that on yeah. the side. Cool. I can't yes. get over the fact that some people are bringing dressing rooms and wow. change. It's like one thing to be in my well, yard, yeah. but to Photo change your shoot. clothes oh. in my yard, my goodness. Yeah. Well, I don't know, Kristen, you have the perfect outfit on right now. I think you should just snap a selfie and, and call it <laughs> in. One more selfie. Post it in a month. Already did, Dylan. Yeah, thank you, Kristen. <laughs> All right, well, I don't know if this is going to make matters worse, but I do have a fall foliage forecast okay. for you yeah. when you can see some of the best foliage. So what you need are nice, mild, sunny days mm. and cool, crisp nights, but not frost. You know, you don't want it to be too, too cold. But typically, late September across the northern tier of the United States is when you get some of the best foliage. And then as you get into early October, it starts to settle down a little farther south across New England, right through the mid-Atlantic, across most of the country. It's really mid to late October uh, where we do see some of our best foliage. And we can't leave out the South either. You're right. You know, Absolutely. down in November, you get some really nice foliage. So. Absolutely. So there you go. Go outside. And it's free. It doesn't yes. cost a thing <laughs> to if go you outside. Drive anywhere and, and see it. As long as there are trees. In. All right. Well, now from some of the prettiest places in America to the nicest places in America. Mm. Reader's Digest, we talk about this. Um, we did it last year as well. They're out with their annual list in their October issue. You want to guess which city is number one for the nicest city mm. in America? Kind people wherever you go. I would always guess Minnesota, where I'm Minnesota. from, because it's called Minnesota that's, Nice. Oh, so easy. somewhere yeah. I, I was going to say like Des Moines, Iowa, yeah. somewhere, yeah. Iowa, you know, where I'm somewhere from. in like the go. middle of the country. Yeah, that's true. But apparently the answer is Buffalo, New oh, York. All right. They won yeah. this year. Reader's Digest says Buffalo has been through a lot and its people continue to persevere. We know that and spread kindness. And Buffalo Bills player DeMar Hamlin wrote a special thank you letter expressing his love for Buffalo. And here's a look at some of the other nicest places, cities and businesses that they highlighted. Uh, what cheer flower farm and Providence, Rhode Island. Oh, Providence is lovely. Yeah. Yes, I love that. <laughs> Are they nice? They're very nice. I lived there for about two years. Everybody was very kind. How about kind. Red Lodge, Montana? Very I've never cool. been. Unity Park in Greenville, South Carolina. It Craig, sounds like we Craig have some, bet, I bet Craig knows I know. We have some yeah. traveling to do, guys. Yeah. And Mark Barbecue in Colchester, Vermont. Been to none of these places. I know. So now we have to add so that to our go. list. So yeah. if you'd like to spread some kindness <laughs> again in the car and maybe road trip, be sure to check out the full article on their website for highlights of other great neighbors and neighborhoods across our country. That's great. So there you go. All right. Now to some nice news for anyone who suffers from severe allergies. Mm. The FDA is expected to approve a nasal spray that's an alternative to the EpiPen. NBC News me uh, medical contributor Dr. Natalie Azar joins us now with more of the details. So this is called Nephi. It's really a game changer mm -hmm. for people who don't want needles, don't like needles, don't want to stab someone mm -hmm. else with a needle. What should we know about it? So um, do, do any of your kids carry EpiPen? My kids have my nut husband. allergies, my twins. And I'm, I mean, we're, we're horrible. I'm yeah. not going to lie. Like so Colleen, here right? is the thing. There are over 200,000 anaphylactic reactions every year in this country and more than half a million emergency room visits because mm -hmm. of this. Because we don't have our EpiPens. Because, well, or what? what do people say? They say that they're not exactly sure how to use it well, or they're the needle thing. Thing. I'm like, try this needle. You have to like, right. jam it in. Yeah. Yeah. Or, you know, or it's hard to carry or yeah. use or anything. So I think this is really going to be a game changer, game changer for anyone who's at risk for this anaphylaxis or who's had it before and for parents to think. Now, here's the thing. It's approved, right, or will be approved, right? We're, we're expecting the approval to come today for adults and children who are 66 pounds and, uh, and I said older this morning, and heavier. And heavier. Okay? That makes sense. So here's the thing. That's like a 9, 10-year-old. So they're, they're um, studying it in kids who are younger because that's really the group, right, that we're yeah. most concerned about with needles and stuff. But yes, nasal spray, easy to carry, a little compact case, super easy to use. Wow. So crazy, right? A couple questions. Yes. Is it as effective and fast acting and are there side effects? Perfect questions. So um, yes, so for the FDA to approve it, they had to show that it was equally effective to currently available EpiPens or more effective, and they showed that it was equally effective. Um, quick little nasal spray. So some of the common side effects that can happen because it's a nasal spray, a little bit of congestion, that kind of thing, but stuff that's always associated with epinephrine, irregular heart rate, hypertension, headaches, some anxiety. Each little thing, um, like spray applicator, comes with one 
dose One in dose. it. Okay. Oh. Um, but each time you would fill a prescription, you would get two of them, just like you normally get two EpiPens, because sometimes you need to retreat if the person's not responding. Right. This okay. is a game changer. I This summer, my twins went to summer camp. And I just prayed every day. I'm like, you know, you know, it's a nut free place, but you just never know. And so if they could just have Can you imagine? a spray in their backpack, because who's trying to shoot? I mean, they would, they, you know, you could stab yourself if you have to, but who? But teaching a child how to do oh. that, but you'd be surprised how many also parents said that yeah. they were uncomfortable giving it to their kids. Sometimes they would accidentally give it to themselves and oh, occasionally yeah. they would, mm. you know, it would Cabinet. malfunction yeah. or, or something like that. But this, you really can't go wrong with a nasal soon? spray. Good. So the, um, so if it gets approved today, manufacturer things month or two wow, with great. commercial insurance the copay is going to be roughly $25 for each of each prescription it's not bad. Um, but we want it to be accessible right yeah, like yeah. I know yes. people have spent a lot of money on EpiPens yes. we cannot have this yeah right. this needs to be accessible oh us. this is good we've talked thank about you. shortages and <laughs> EpiPens, so this yes. is good good news, good news Dr. Yeah. Azar thank you. thank you all right I love how we do this peppy music and then we're like, Bills! <laughs> Back now with our series wow, wow. on the money. If the sight of a doctor's bill in your mailbox causes anxiety, you are not alone. You don't even want to open it, right? Well, at least 20% of Americans have outstanding medical bills on their credit records. So, CNBC senior personal finance correspondent uh, Sharon Epperson is here to tell us why uh, we should handle it. We, we know we should, but more importantly, how to handle it before it becomes a bigger it's problem. It's why I don't check my mail, because I, I know, know they're the in there. You need, you need to I check your mail. Admittedly, And it's awful. peppy because you're going to figure out how to pay your bills now in this yeah. segment. So yeah. that's why we're happy. So we will be the It's answer. so important to do it, because if you don't open that bill and you get into debt and that yeah. impacts your credit score, then that impacts your ability to rent, buy, You're right. insurance, You're right. job even. So it's important to do. You know what happens? People open up an envelope and then it's an unexpected medical bill. Yes, I just right, know. Right, right. You're not, you don't think it's gonna come in and so that's why you have to really investigate why you got this bill in the first place. So you should before investigate you pay, it. Before you pay anything, you need to investigate it. You need to make sure that you get an itemized bill. Make sure you know all the procedures and services that they're charging you for, and that those are things that you actually got, well, and compare it like you that. Can't fight it, like you feel like you don't, you don't well, know. You get something the else bill. in the mail too that's really important. Some people what? may throw away. It's called an explanation of benefits. It says at the top, "This is not a bill," so then you throw it away. No, yeah. this is what you need to see what the insurance company is charging you, and compare that with that itemized bill. Scrutinize those details and make sure you compare and contrast. And if there's a contrast, mm -hmm. you have a problem. There's an error there. The good thing is things are changing. So. For years, if you went to perhaps a hospital and you had an emergency situation, you may have a provider that's not in your network. That happened to me when I had brain surgery seven years ago. I got this bill a month later and it said that I had this provider out of network and I had to pay this bill. And I'm like, wait, I didn't have a choice for that. I'm right. in an emergency situation. Oh, does that that's a surprise bill. Oh. Now there is a law that was enacted and went into effect in 2022 called the No Surprises Act. And the Center for Medicare and Medicaid has a place on their website, cms.gov, that you can go to and file a complaint. I was in the hospital. This was an emergency situation. I shouldn't get this bill. Really? So you can call a helpline or you can do that. So it's very important to know your rights. It's good. I've gotten these bills in the mail. I call the hospital or the doctor's office and I say, what is this? They say, don't pay it. It's still going through your insurance. So they tell me actively to not pay this bill. So what do you do in that situation? Or if you notice things are, there are errors on your bill, how do you handle it? So there's a terminology, CPT. It's current procedural terminology. You don't need to know what it stands for. <laughs> you need to know that it's a billing code and you need to use those letters to that provider so they know that you know, 
I want to know exactly what I'm being charged for. Wow. You can look that up online, review those numbers. The other thing that's important to do if you are changing jobs or changing insurers, make sure the claim has been submitted to the right insurance company. That's really important. And as you're getting the CPT codes, as you're getting the information, keep a journal. Make sure you keep records of what's happening. Gather all that information. And if the provider is still not listening to you or the insurer you, know, you want to deal with, Call the insurance company, file a complaint with the insurance company, and if that doesn't work, you can go to your state insurance commissioner to mm -hmm. file an appeal. Good to know there are options. What, what if you needed the care? Maybe it was an emergency and the bill is just higher than you expected it was going to be. Are there resources out there to help you get it paid off? That happens to so many people. The first thing that you may want to consider doing is just to negotiate the amount. Figure out, maybe use, go online and figure out what the CPT code is and what normally should be paid by your insured and by you for this and offer to pay that lump sum amount. Even if it's less, sometimes a provider will take it to get that bill just wiped out. You want to also think about setting up a payment plan with that provider and making sure that you can pay whatever you say you're going to pay every month, because that's so very important. The health savings account that many people have access to through having a high deductible health plan, that tax advantage way that you're putting away money every month is this is what it's for. It's to use it for these costs. So that's another way to pay those bills. But for low income folks, you need to understand that for profit hospitals need to offer you some financial assistance if you qualify for it. So whether it's Medicaid or, or subsidized insurance or going through a charity care program at the hospital, very important to look at those options. And the one that I know most people go to, I'm just going to put on my card which is okay as long as you're going to pay that off right away because you don't want to put medical debt and then have more debt on top of that because you're paying interest on that credit card bill. So put so it on a low interest put card. It on a low interest card, 0% interest credit card yeah. preferably, but those promotional offers usually expire in 12 to 18 months. So be very careful if you're using a credit card. I'm glad you're talking about that. If you don't have money, you still try to have the procedure because people will put off procedures because they're afraid that, afraid that they can't pay for it. Absolutely. You know? It's so important to still go through with whatever. Your health is so very important, and you want to make sure that you get the best care, that you understand the care that you're getting, that you talk to your doctor and say, is this exactly what I need or could I do something else, and make sure that you can try to afford it. Um, talking to the hospital ahead of time, making sure that you investigate those different programs, really key. There's help there. Sure. Sharon Epperson is awesome. And we're happy you're here with us in health and wellness because you yeah. had such a scare. Thank you very so you know much. What I, you're appreciate talking about. I appreciate yeah, it. I appreciate it. It's brain aneurysm awareness month. So I'm there happy to raise awareness about health and wellness all the time, but especially mm -hmm. right now. I love that. Thank you, Thank Sharon. You. Sure. All right. Well, you can head to today.com. We put all of the information there to review. All right, well, coming up, an inside look at a historic mission from a NASA astronaut who's making history in her own right, how she's preparing for a trip around the moon when the third hour of today returns in just 60 seconds. One year from now, NASA will be in the home stretch. In November 2024, the Artemis II rocket will take a trip around the moon. And this morning, we are getting an inside look at how the crew is preparing from an astronaut who is set to make space history. My NBC News Now co-anchor Savannah wait, Sellers is here, reunited. Look at that. I know. <laughs> exactly. It's a little reunited. Bill and I should across move. the street. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning to all of you. It's great to see you all. Well, so that Artemis II mission will send the first black astronaut 
astronaut and the first female astronaut on a lunar mission. That woman is Christina Cook, and she told me how it feels to play a pivotal role in NASA's push to get back to the moon. I grew up in a small town in North Carolina. I didn't even see another engineer, much less an astronaut. And at that time, also probably not really seeing women as astronauts. Oh, definitely not. Christina Cook is used to being the only woman in the room, and come next year, she'll be the only woman who's headed to the moon when she embarks on the Artemis II mission planned for November 2024. But that first is just the latest on a long list, going back to when she was named an astronaut a decade ago, a phone call she remembers well. And I actually started out by telling them, hey, it's OK, I had a great time interviewing. Thanks for considering me. And they actually had to interrupt me and say, actually, we're calling to tell you we want you to join our team to come to Houston. Since that day, she set records, like the longest single space flight by a woman with a total of 328 days in space and participating in the first all-female spacewalk. What was that moment like, going out with all women? Yeah, it was, it was incredible. Hopefully that got people thinking about where we're at. We weren't just out there for a participation ribbon. We, we wanted to actually be excellent spacewalkers. This isn't very well known, but the coolest thing about that spacewalk was it was unplanned. It was the only spacewalk I did that was not planned prior. I never trained for it, she never trained for it. We actually went out to fix something that had broken. So we designed the entire spacewalk in one week with the teams on the ground. And normally a spacewalk is developed for years. Along the way, she's faced obstacles unique to women in the male-dominated field. The fleet of suits is actually built for a bigger-bodied astronaut. So I go out and do spacewalks in a suit that's two sizes too big for me. There actually are time factors that they add in for how much longer tasks will take in someone who's doing a spacewalk in a suit that's too big for them. Are there things about your job that you think are changing and will change and will continue to get better as more women do this? Definitely. In fact, the suit is a perfect example because the next suits that they're making for the moon surface operations are actually going to, by design, fit a very wide range of people. Among your many accomplishments, adding another one, the first woman on a lunar mission. What was it like to get that news? It was great news. Funny story, we were actually all late. No one was on time to this meeting. We had a meeting put on our calendars under a different pretense, so none of us had any idea how important this meeting was going to be. We were asked, how would you like to fly on Artemis II? Uh, when, you know, after walking in and seeing the people in the room, I knew that it wasn't a meeting I should have been late to. <laughs> but um, after kind of regaining my composure, you know, it took me a second to take it in. I said it would be an honor. and and we'll try not to disappoint you in the future by being late. <laughs> they'll be on time and they'll be uber prepared. Cook will be a mission specialist on the 10-day Artemis II mission that will send four astronauts around the moon on the Orion spacecraft. The team is currently training on a simulator Cook is seeing for the first time with us. This is our sim and it's just getting ramped up. And this is the first time the seats have been installed and we have software up and the displays are, are on. When we're on that far side of the moon is when we will probably be executing something like this. There we go. Oh, so there we go. The moon. Yep, yeah, the moon is there. This is the dream come true of any astronaut. It's still exciting every single day that we get to come and do training in this mock-up. The crew is taking courses in this exact replica of Orion. This is my seat, oh, so you're no. going to be sitting in my seat. Okay, that's, that's great. I claim that this spot up here, that's going to be my sleep spot. We'll be laying on our backs facing okay. up, and when we start to actually accelerate, we'll have that feeling of acceleration like this way, like kind of being pushed back in your chair. When you think about that moment, nerves? Are you scared? <laughs> Are you excited? What's that particular moment feel like? The moment that you actually lift off. Honestly, if I could assign one word to it, it would be the word fulfillment. Because you oh. finally realize you are fulfilling the mission that you came here to do. That's a good word. Oh, she was just so fantastic, everybody. So Christina says she sees one of her responsibilities on this mission as taking the dreams hopes and goals of everyone of all of us with her because she sees us as everyone's journey. I also asked her what would her advice be thinking about maybe a young person who wants to be an astronaut and she said 
do what scares you. She said if you go towards those things, not away from them, that is where the magic happens, Ooh. clearly. I mean, think about that. The first all-female spacewalk that we talked so much about yeah. wasn't even planned. They just had to go out and fix something, and they were the right people for the job. Wow. That, and that's how it should be. It's, exactly. Yes. Oh, she was so much great. fun. There's nothing, nothing more magical than the moon, but I know. Yeah, oh, yeah. going for that magic. That was awesome. Oh, that was <laughs> good. So cool. I know. Well, the Johnson Space Center is pretty magical, too. Yeah. <laughs> Getting <laughs> Next guest is a hilarious comedian who has gone from a small town to the big leagues. Mike Goodwin has been performing stand-up for more than a decade and took the stage on NBC's America's Got Talent. He's also the host of the Best Advice Ever podcast, and Mike recently launched his Big Dad Energy comedy <laughs> tour. Take a look. I remember when I didn't know how to spell a word, I would ask my mother how to spell a word. You know what she would tell me? Look it up in the dictionary. I used to be like, Mama, I don't know how to spell the word. <laughs> Y'all, it took me four weeks. I'm looking for elephant in the ales. <laughs> that was relatable. Good morning. It. It's so relatable. Good morning. How y'all doing? We're, we're, good. we're doing good. good. We're excited to have you here. I'm excited to be here. So, you know, getting into comedy, it was kind of the not traditional route. You started right. doing stand-up at your church. Yeah. How has that impacted church. your type of comedy? My type of comedy is for everyone. So I have the type of comedy where you can bring your grandparents, your parents, and your children. A generational mm. kind of comedy. And it's the type of comedy where you don't have to be on edge. Mm. Like, I just want folks to come out and enjoy themselves and have a great night. And laugh. There are a lot of people who say, oh, but if the person's not cursing or if it's not dirty, it may not be as funny, but you've obviously turned that on its head, right? We've known folks our entire life. Some of the most hilarious people I know don't use language. Mm. Like, my grandmother is hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I never heard my grandmother curse. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, I mean, I'm that family member, that friend that has long been in your life. Who's funny. It's funny, and you just have a great time whenever I'm around. That's great. We need that. We've established now you have big dad energy. Big dad. Big, big dad. dad. You know, big I'm dad. big dad. dad. That's the opposite <laughs> of big dad. <laughs> <laughs> that's another show. That's not the morning. That's the night show. That's the, yeah. <laughs> the, the other the side of my your kids, <laughs> how much of a source of comedy material are so your much, kids? So much. So I have two teenagers, which the uh, grocery bill has increased. Oh, look at your and, family. And the smells. I don't, I don't know. I have, a, I have a 13 year old son. I smell him before I see him. It, it, <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing, son? That's Did you so work true. third shift last night? I know. Right? Did they give you free reign to use them as material? They do. They give me oh, so good. much. It's so much. But they, don't, they haven't signed any consent form. Oh, right. right. Well, they're, they're still under your roof. Dad, so exactly. Yeah. Dad energy. So it turns out, which is funny, you and Craig Melvin are actually really good friends. Right. You know each other from back home. Yes. Um, he's upset that he couldn't be here today, but he has a message for you. Oh, Watch yeah. this. Mike, it's your old buddy Craig Melvin here. Um, I am so happy for your success. I remember when we used to hang out 20 plus years ago and you were doing this thing part time and then it turned into churches and then behind your back, your friends were laughing because none of us thought this was ever going to turn into anything. <laughs> Who's laughing now? So happy for your success. Mwah. Keep going. 
Oh. That is so, that I mean, it looks nice. like he's sitting on a toilet. What yeah, well, exactly. What? That's big dad energy right there. You gotta, you gotta hide. <laughs> hey, these kids, my wife. Yeah. Let me go do the message from my. I'm in the bathroom. Leave me alone. Go over the door. Wish I could get to the mic. I got records off the work. I also. Craig also wanted to give you a little something. Clearly, bow ties. Oh yeah. Are, oh are my your goodness. Signature style. So oh. this, this is a gift from him. This is beautiful. Ooh, this that's is, nice. Oh, that is great. That's a local cool company ties. there, right? They yeah, make this is yeah. out of Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, Breckridge, I believe, that they have. These are feathers, like. Ooh, it's beautiful. Which camera? The bow ties are thing, isn't it? That. That's like yeah, this thing, is right? my yeah, this is my deal. Now I, you I'm, can think of Craig. Man, every every time you wear it. Thank you, Craig. Like all the best to you. Thank oh, you. Thank y'all so yeah. much. This, so is much. this is so fun. Next time we'll time. get Craig in here and not where he yeah, was. Yeah, not where he was. Tickets for the Big Dad Energy Tour are available now. And check out Mike's podcast, Best Advice Ever. All right, coming up next, it's start today, whether you're training for a marathon like Chanel <laughs> or just working out at home. We're going to show you the right way to warm up and cool down. Then later, a star on the screen and in the kitchen. Stanley Tucci is here to show us how to make one of his absolute hey. favorite Italian recipes. Can't get enough of Stanley. Be right back. <laughs> Good, I'm hungry. <laughs> with Start Today. You may have heard I am gearing up to run the New York City Marathon in Ooh. November. I can't even believe I'm saying it, but it's true. With my help uh, or with the help of my trainer, Jess, I've been preparing for the big day, and I have learned there are some important steps to take before and after a workout. So joining us this morning, we have Liz Plosser, editor-in-chief of Women's Health. She's here to show us the right ways to warm up and cool down, along with two of our NBC staffers. We have Christina and Fazai. Good morning to both of you guys. So here's the thing. It doesn't matter whether you're running, you're going out for a power walk, you got to stretch. Absolutely. Strength training, swimming, pickleball, skiing, whatever All the, the sport is, you need to warm up. I used to be a person who thought, I don't have time for that. Who really needs it? I'm here to tell you it makes a big difference. Not only does it help prevent injury, but also it gets you in the right mindset for the workout and it improves your range of motion, warms up your tendons, your muscles, your joints. You get more out of the workout. Who That's doesn't want that? Let's, so let, here. let's yeah. start with something that I remember from my yoga days. Yes, which is let's get into cat it. Cat-cow. That's right, cat-cow. Cat cow. This is a great warm-up move to start with. So you're on your hands and knees with your palms under your shoulders, your knees under your hips, and you're gonna come up like a cat. So you're like arching your back. Do you have to make cat noises? <laughs> you can do that. Yeah, we can, we can all purr. And then you are coming back down the other direction, looking up to the sky. I like to sway my hips, get your hips kind of warmed up. You can make your uh, your feet go flat. You can scoop your toes. I also love to flip my palms and get a nice stretch in my forearms and kind of sway into it. It all feels good. Just have fun with it. Then we're going to go into um, a standing pose. These are called hamstring scoops. I know you love these, Chanel. You're a runner. You've been running. These are awesome before you go out for a jog so your feet are hip width apart. 
Take your right foot, place it a little forward, flex that foot. You're gonna get a nice stretch on your hamstrings as you scoop your arms down, big wide arms like you're making a big hug in the That's air. Good. Do about three on each side. So you'll do three over to the other side. That's all it takes, it doesn't take long. Yeah. Yep, super easy. Huh. And then to finish it out, we are going to do some knee hug walking or marching. You can do it in place if you've got um, a sidewalk or park in front of you, go ahead and take a stroll. So you are feet hip width apart and hug that knee in. Mm. Nice. And you're gonna alternate yes. sides. I almost feel like even if it's just when you get up in the morning, you know what yes. I mean? Just to get yes. that going. That's right, it's great for getting your glutes warmed up, your hips, you can feel it in your upper body, your shoulders, and go a little deeper and higher with each one. So that's it, super fast, fast. super fun, super easy. I think Not a lot of people know they're supposed to stretch, but what about the cool down afterward? Yes, okay, I am also a convert on the cool down. So you stress your body out when you're working out. It's a positive stress, it's a good for you stress, but you need to signal to your body that it's time to transition into the rest of your day. Let your parasympathetic nervous system come back in. Okay, so let's start with a child's pose. I like to take my, uh, my knees wide, you can take them in close, whatever works for you, and then you're gonna stretch forward. Oh, like you can take well. your hands over to the side, get a nice side body stretch, kind of lean over, over your hips. And if you've been doing some upper body strength training, it's great to thread the needle. So you take your right hand and you're oh, flipping yeah. it underneath. Yep. Yeah. So and then you can go the other direction. This is like a full body dynamic. Oh, no, I'm dynamic like, this is the real deal. Awesome for you. <laughs> and then while just you're gonna do this instead of the marathon. <laughs> <laughs> just gonna do while it. you're down on the floor, we're gonna flip over and do a supine stretch. So you're on your back and you're going to just kind of windshield wiper your legs. If you have lower back issues, I would mm. stop there. But if you don't, you can get a deeper stretch, perpendicular knees, and you're gonna look in the opposite direction. You feel that back open up, oh, it feels yeah. so nice. It's good in my shoulder too. And then last but not least, breathing. This is like, if you have no time and you say, Liz, I cannot make time for a cool down, just breathe, that's it. So I love to do triangle breathing. You are going to count in for three counts as you inhale. Hold it at the top for three counts, top of the breath and then slowly exhale for three counts. And you do that for about 60 seconds. While you're doing that, maybe take a minute and say, thank you, body. Thank you, body. Mm, so you know, good. Bask in the glow <laughs> thank of your you, body. play some music you love, and on to the rest Liz. of your day. I love it. Liz, and thank you, thank my you. friend. So good. Um, by the way, you can scan the QR code on your screen if you want to sign up for the Start Today newsletter. So many people are are part of this community. It's been amazing. And you can read more about my marathon journey by checking out today.com and Women's Health. Thank you guys so much. It's a beautiful article out today. Thank I, you. I love the article. Everybody should read it. Thank you guys. So, thank you. Well, you know what we do after we work out? What? <laughs> On the Today Show, we eat. Ah! <laughs> Tuesday. So award-winning actor Stanley Tucci is here to show us one of his other skills when he cooks up a classic Italian recipe. Yum. Come right back. with a special Today Food because we have Emmy award-winning actor, author, father, and one of America's favorite home chefs, Stanley Tucci. Stanley just launched a new cookware line with green pan, and he's going to show us how to make one of his favorite pasta dishes. But Stanley, I'm going to let you say it because I've always said pasta for Jules. Oh, that's terrible. I, I'm embarrassed. No, no, no. I'd say fagioli. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Well, there, there's a joke in there somewhere. Um, I, I, yes, fuss. But, of, no, I can't above. say it. Yeah. Yeah. Out of the above. I, <laughs> how do you say it? I'm not going to try. <laughs> I'm with Chanel. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 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 Pasta fagioli. Of course. That's what I said. Oh. Yes, of yeah. course. Silly, really silly me. <laughs> yeah. See the flair, Chanel. So, flair. So, but that's a very um, Italian American way of saying it. Okay. It, it was sort of. It's a very song, boring story, yeah. but I won't. Anyway, <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, so it's a classic, classic dish that has been, um, well, it's just been around forever. Mm -hmm. And it's been abused sometimes. Yes. It's made sometimes really badly. Yes. But it doesn't have to be. It's incredibly mm. simple. Well, especially mm. when we're using these pots. I yes, mean, well, the pots, about, the pots do everything. Tell us about this new cookware yes, this line. this is this cookware line that I came out with. It's something I always wanted to do. My parents always had really great cookware, you know, from the 60s and mm -hmm. 70s, a lot of Danish uh, stuff and well made. and they came to me yeah and they came to me and this company Green Pan and they said would you be interested in um, doing a line with us and I said yeah as long as we can make it in Italy mm -hmm. and they did because wow. they have a factory there and um, it's so beautiful. we it oh beautiful. thank you yeah. yes I wanted it to be quite modern and but like we were talking before I knew the things that I didn't want in a pan. Mm -hmm. Like when you pour the oil in and the oil goes like goes that. Right down the side. Yeah, this doesn't do yes. that. It's nice and flat. So cool. Yes. I love it. And well, it's all, you know. It's right. not we should get going. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. Sorry, sorry. I'm you should so love food. So you have onions. But... Okay. Can you see the onions? No, yeah, it doesn't matter. They will. There, there you go. Onions. <laughs> and then uh, cannellini beans, a do little bit of manu. Beans? I use canned beans. Okay. I don't have awesome. time to soak my beans. And a little bit of chicken stock. Okay. Uh, you're very good at this. No, I, this is like her thing. I, I, told you. I do enjoy yeah, cooking. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, you're telling me what to do. Then you can yeah. add the, the marinara, which is I didn't really know you put simple. Marinara in yeah, you can. You can put a lot. You can put a little, okay. whatever you want. That's, That's that. too much. I'm I, I was worried about <laughs> that. It seemed like a lot. And, that, and then um, you're going to stir it up. And basically, it's going to turn into what's in here? Oh, that's just the marinara, isn't it? Or is that beans in there? I don't know. I can't tell. Hmm. All I know it's is this is oh, that's just totally doable. Like, yeah, it's so not, simple. Yeah. It's so simple. Then you cook that down for a bit. Okay. You can add, this is, this is uh, cabalo nero, black kale. I love that. Which you strip, you take out the stalk. Why do you blanch it first? Because it, 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 it's, it's a bit bitter. Yes, thank you. Okay. It's a bit bitter and, and it's hard, mm -hmm. harsh. So what you want to do, it's, you can blanch it. You can actually cook it for quite a while if you want. And I like it because it doesn't get mushy, like it sustains. No, no, itself, it'll you know sustain. I mean? It has yeah. a lot. It's quite fibrous. Oh, this is uh, turn. And it's really, really delicious. You combine it all together with these little like mm -hmm. ditalini or some sort of tubular pasta. And you put it in here. What? What's the? Sorry. What? So many questions. Sorry. What's the rule? I'm to talk. <laughs> I just totally what? cut you off. What? What's the rule? Like, do you? Cook the pasta first and then put it in. Do you put it in at the very end? Do you serve it over the pasta? No, what you really what you should do is cook the pasta first so mm -hmm. it's al dente. Reserve some of the pasta water, right? Then take some of the sauce with some of the pasta water, put the pasta in, toss it all up, add some cheese mm -hmm. and a little drizzle of olive oil or something, and then reserve. But if you have extra pasta, don't add the sauce, just keep it on the side. The side. And then you go through the process again. Keep them separate if you're going to have them the next day. So they, otherwise, the pasta just swells. It just gets gross. It's like gross. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. kind of like actually healthy for, this for is like pasta. This is, this is, you could just live on this for the rest <laughs> of your life. It has everything you want. Well, this is so delicious. you don't use pancetta or anything. You can if you want okay. to. Yeah. So you can do whatever you want. Whatever you want. But this Especially is the way you should do it. Yeah, because this is, this is basically delicious. a vegetarian version. This you know, so a lot of the young. Italian diet was vegetarian. Because yeah. They were very poor. I love this. Mm -hmm. so, you like and today's it? Tuesday, so you can do this for Tucci Tuesday. Don't Tuesday. think I wasn't thinking that. I was very <laughs> excited about that. Tucci Tuesday, as I've told you in the past. Yes. I would cook from your cookbook and watch one of your movies. So wow. that was Tucci Tuesday. All works out. I love yeah. it. Not creepy at all. It's no. Like it, <laughs> how, how, many, how many Tuesdays did you do this? <laughs> a lot. Well, and my, I can't take all the credit. My husband named it. So okay, right. that, oh, he yeah, named it. What you know what? Together. She has okay. a child named Tucci. Did you she know does? That? Yes. Really? <laughs> it's Stanley. She knows me. Stanley. Thank you so much. This is my pleasure. Thank you very He's much. Never coming back. Oh, no. <laughs> so good. Oh, no, I, I, thank God I have security. <laughs> <laughs> you can get these pots and pans at Williams Sonoma for these recipes and more. Go to today.com slash food and see, you're actually gonna stick around. I'm gonna stick around. I'm never leaving. You're joining Hoda and Jenna on the fourth hour. We'll be right back. This is delicious. <laughs> she is good.
Joe, you know we love having you here. Thank you for having As me. Always, I love being here. To the show. Tomorrow in the third hour, actor Jamie Lynn Signer will join us live. Coming up on Hoda and Jenna, a performance by South Carolina rockers Need to Breathe. We'll see you tomorrow, everybody. Have a wonderful Have day. A wonderful day. Today, actor, TV host, and food lover Stanley Tucci is here. And get ready for a performance by South Carolina rockers Need to Breathe. Plus, what's got everyone buzzing about Adele and Taylor Swift? Find out when Justin Sylvester delivers the scoop. From Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza, it's today with Hoda and Jenna. It all starts right now. Hey, everybody! Let's go! It is Tuesday. It is the 19th day of September. Excited. I'm sorry. This is very cute. Oh, is, thank it a one, you. is it a one piece item? It's a one Can piece I see? item. Wait, Stan, I need to see. Full Monty. Turn. Hold oh, on. Please don't. No, no, I really I love it. To you. It looks so cute because it looks Thank first. It's just, you. It looks like a skirt, and it looks like a top. It looks okay. like a jacket, Thank and it's you. all one piece. It's like a uniform. I kind of like that. It's like a school uniform. So, did you decide when you were getting ready? Hmm, what do I feel like? Or did you just? How did that happen? I mean, how do you, do you think no, that I, I think, have that yes, type? Yes, you of actually do. Thought. You actually have a fashion sense about you. I saw it. Yeah, I and tried you it on. And you liked it. And I thought it looked cute. It's cute. It's like and a it's a little short, but it's super but cute. I'm and I like the. Thank anyway, you. It's very cute. Um, okay. Talk to me. You know how I am. About eavesdropping. Oh yeah, you like that. Um, there's. It sounds like I'm not alone because according to the New York Times, there's a hot new trend on TikTok, which is everybody loves to eavesdrop. So here's what happens. People eavesdrop on others in public. So eavesdrop in words, is such a weird word. Eaves drop. Just think about it. Eaves. Eaves. Are we now dissecting drop. the word like we did in no, SAT drop. prep? Eaves drop. drop. You're dropping in on somebody eaves. else's ears. Eaves. Eaves drop. What is eaves? By the way, if mean? you repeat a word enough times, but it eavesdrop is so weird. weird. When you said it, I was like, eaves who created drop. the word eavesdrop? Eavesdrop. So weird. <laughs> Okay. okay, so when you are at a restaurant, casually eating, and someone next to you is like, and then I broke up with him, and then your oh. ears go up, and you can't help it, and you're like, what did they say? And they're like, and it was, you know what, it just wasn't working, and you feel like you're kind oh, of- Oh, in it. In, in the drama. It. I have a really hard time, um, and you could ask Henry the next time you see him, going to small New York restaurants. Yeah, because you're right on top of well, each other. Well, the tiny little tables next to the tiny little tables, and sometimes we'll be talking, and I'll be pretending to pay attention to Henry, but really, I'm all in. To the other. To the other, and he's like. But wait, hold on a second. Pause. You're the best. You're one of... If of the best listeners I've ever met in my lifetime. But, but I'm listening to those people. No, but <laughs> why are you listening to Henry? I'm listening to those people because those people next to me are getting divorced and they're in a fight. And I'm like, yeah, honey, wow, work sounds really <laughs> tricky these days. And then sometimes it's Do so- Do you sometimes say- Yeah. Henry, yes. What's that? But that puts him usually over the edge. Yeah, he's mad. He's like, I'm trying to share yeah. with you our lives. He's like, we don't go on that many date nights and you're listening to these, shh. Okay, and you right. still want to hear it. Well, here's an example. So what they do is they listen, and then they post about the conversation that they witnessed. So, oh, this has a social media bend. Yeah. I see. So we have a woman, a TikTok of a woman who overheard a group of bridesmaids discussing a recent wedding, and it has 2 million views. Take a look. I just got back to my hotel. I was just at brunch and I have to tell you this story. I was sitting next to a table full of three girls and they were all talking about how they were in their friend's wedding a few weeks ago. She was kind of the ringleader of this dynamic and she was talking about how she felt so ugly on her day and it was so unfair that the day of her friend's wedding that she was in was all about her, the bride, and not about the bridesmaids. And she was going on to say about how like the bride was supposed to look so beautiful but she didn't, and the bridesmaids also didn't look beautiful. They had a rosé toast instead of a champagne toast, and maybe if she spent her money more wisely, she'd be able to afford champagne versus rosé. Ooh. I don't think I'm ever gonna eavesdrop again. <laughs> I did not like that. I'm never gonna eavesdrop no, again. Like I'm gonna that. take my- You know what that looks like? You know what it looks like to me? 
like gossiping Petty. about someone else's like, can you, be and then guess what? Like, no, I didn't no, like no. it. No, I know, me neither. I, I, I mean, the concept seemed interesting until I watched it. And then I don't like it. No, me neither. Do you not like it? I don't like it. <laughs> We don't and like I, it. And I'm sorry that I listen to other people because it's your business. It's not mine. And I'm going to go back to my <laughs> own business, which is my husband sitting right in front of me. <laughs> You've heard his same I know, story. I know. I can't help it. That was interesting. But I know. But you know what? I don't think there's anything wrong with pe listening, listening in. But I do think there is something about taking such joy judgment. in the delivery. Yeah. Judge judgment. Judy delivering like, can you believe what these people were saying and I roll and all that. Yeah, no. I don't. You know what? Here's the. You know why? I think that that sticks in my craw a little bit. It's because we're in a time right now where I feel like we're all desperate and thirsty for something good. Yes. And I think in the cracks in between the bad news cycle and this going wrong and that going wrong and everybody's on strike and this, you want in those little moments, yes. you want something that is like, let me totally. get you. Totally. That's why I'm very selective about those parts kinds of things. Yeah, what because, you let into your... Because you can literally sit there and go, uh, and by the time it's over, you feel really super crummy. Yes. And I'm just saying like, Look, I'm not trying to be all preachy and judge Judy myself, but I do feel like there's so little, there's so few moments now for it. Yeah, well, everything is so saturated yes. that when there is beauty, for example, you posted something this morning. I don't know why yeah. it hit me in a, such a really <laughs> real way, but Hoda posted this quote, yeah. this tweet, yeah. that was basically like a mom that said she realized there was a last time. Yeah, she said she was talking to her son who was 18 years old, and they were discussing the fact that there was a last time that she she will have ever have held him. Ugh. And they were talking about the finality of that, and they both decided that that was ridiculous. So she put him on her back and gave him a piggyback <laughs> ride for 20 yards because it wasn't over yet. Yeah. So I think it's like... Well, it also just shows you that you have to live in it. Like I said, you know, we, sometimes you can just be like, oh my gosh, can these kids please leave me alone so I can sleep past 6.30? But then you're like, one day those little yeah. feet yeah. are going to be teenage yeah. feet and they're not yeah. going to run into your room. Yes. And so like when you last, hold yeah. your kids yes. and you, ha you had a moment yesterday. Yes, I took, I went on a date with Hope and all Hope wants to do is come to 30 Rock. So I come back to work and we wander, <laughs> and we wander around the desks of 30 Rock. So if y'all are missing chopsticks and stuff, we take them. Take her to my room. Okay, because she grabs yeah. and takes. But we were under an umbrella. It was pouring and it was a suit. Spider-Man umbrella, it was teeny, and, and I was holding her because we only had one umbrella, and she was holding the umbrella. And I go, sweetie, and we we're walking to the subway, and I go, are you, are you, are you cold? Are you wet? And she goes, no, Mama, I feel so warm right now. And I was like, oh my God, because we were drenched, but she felt that's what yeah. she was feeling in that moment. And it was the it, of all the things that happened that day, like that's what she remembered. So but you could be thinking, oh my gosh, I'm oh, wet. Oh my gosh, get I'm a cold. Cab. Oh my gosh, Horrible. this is. T yeah. But instead, you just paid Forget attention it. to and her she words. Was, and by the way, she was so, and I go, but your pants are soaking wet. She goes, no, mama. She kept saying no. I was I'm like, warm. no, 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 I'm warm. Ugh. I'm warm. Okay, you know what else makes me feel good? What? Although I Hit haven't it. had enough binging of this recently. What? Well, Christmas, which is only 100 days away. 97. 97. Less than 100 days. Mm -hmm. if, I, if my math is correct. I think it is. <laughs> okay. think it is correct. The Hallmark Channel just released its countdown to Christmas movie lineup. It features 40 original films. <gasps> By the way, this is one of those things that's on loop. So our staff, staff thought it would be fun if we played a guessing game. So they're going to give us the title of the Hallmark movie, and we're going to try to guess the plot. First, never been crisped. Well, simple. Okay. I'll guess that plot. Go ahead. She's in love with a guy named Chris, and she's been dying under the mistletoe, waiting for him to give her that big smack those lips on. And she's never been Chris. She's met many men, but she's waiting for Chris. And she stands under the mistletoe, and of course, what happens? Chris walks up, says hello to her, passes her by. It takes the whole movie, but at the end, she gets Chris. Yes. Okay. Here's the actual plot. What Home for the holidays, BFFs Naomi and Liz reconnect with high school crush Chris, Chris Silver. Silver. A complex love triangle. Oh, for, even better. Forcing them to take stock of their lives and find the value of friendship. Okay, you do the next one. The next movie is called Checking It Twice. Okay, this one is so easy. Is it? Well, we meet a 
woman, I don't know her name yet, but she's already checked it once yeah. with a very handsome suitor. Oh. She checked him off the list a long time ago. Oh, okay. But she decided, you know what? I'm going to go back and check him out again. I'm going to check him twice. Check him twice. I love it. Let's okay, see. Okay, the real plot. A oh. hockey player falls for a real estate agent <laughs> in a career crisis when he's traded to her hometown and moves into the cottage in her hockey-loving family's backyard. Not what I expected, no, but, but I sounds, did like yours. Sounds I like yours. amazing, a hockey. All right, coming up next, is Adele married? Justin Sylvester has all the scoop on what the singing superstar said and the rumors that are swirling right after this. I don't mean to be a buzzkill on that, I feel bad. Welcome to today. Every day. We are adding to the star power in our studio. The biggest names, only on today. See, we're coming in this early, right? Everybody, it's today. Like I won the lottery. How do you feel at this age, this stage, liberated? We're just getting started, folks. Ain't no stop with us now. The boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. The miracle. This has been fantastic. Everything and everyone you're talking about, only on today. All right, it's time to get you caught up on all the hot celebrity scoop. E! News co-host Justin Sylvester is back in L.A. He's got everything we need to know. Hello, Justin. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. All right. Before we, got, we get started, yeah. I have a little business. Okay. Yes. You know, as a resident millennial, I have to let you know when a term is outdated. Okay? Okay. And okay. eavesdropping <laughs> is outdating. Oh. We prefer ear hustling. Ear hustling. Ear hustling. Yes, I like to ear hustle a conversation yeah. so I can you like bring it back to you on the scoop. Yes, I ear hustle all day. That's we can't thing. help it. We can't help it. Okay, wait. You've got to tell, tell us about the dating rumors between Taylor Swift mm. and a new man. Yeah, and a new man, Travis, Kelsey. Okay, first and foremost, these two have been rumored to be dating after Travis Kelsey went on a podcast and said that he tried to slip T Swift his number, but it didn't work backstage at her concert. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden, rumors started going everywhere, but nobody was confirming it. Now, the first rule of dating a celebrity, when someone in your crew is dating a celebrity, it's like Fight Club. <laughs> and you don't talk about Fight Club. Well, a sports announcer named Rich Eisen did not get that memo because listen to what he was doing all through Travis's game on Sunday. Even though that bone bruise and the injury one would think is delicate, he's been able to shake it off. You saw it on Thursday night when Travis Kelsey wasn't in there. It left a blank space. Uh, but I think he returns today and proves to be the anti-hero. Oh Wait, my that God! Is Are you kidding me? That's hilarious. Isn't this the greatest thing ever. The greatest. Yeah, Does because Travis only, think it's funny? only real Swifties would get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You know, he wasn't being overt. only real Swifties would get it. But Travis did see the video clip okay. because Rich posted it, and he said, "Well played, Rich. <laughs> well played." Oh, that looks. That's. I call that confirmation. All I, right. Yeah. Let's, or maybe not. Maybe not. Let's yeah, talk okay. about Adele. <laughs> is Adele married? Okay, you guys, speaking of confirmations, so you know Adele had been dating Rich Paul for mm -hmm. two years, right? And Rich Paul is a basketball manager. He manages LeBron James. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so at her Vegas residency, Adele goes into the audience. She talks to fans. And a fan asks Adele, will you marry me? 
Now, listen closely to Adele's response, because to me, it sounds like Adele called Rich Paul her husband. Take a look. You, you can't marry me. I'm straight, my love. My husband's here tonight. He's here. Oh, no, I don't want to try. I'm with Rich. You're crazy. Leave me alone. <laughs> Wait, by the way, good ear hustling. Good ear hustling, nice. Justin. That is some grade A ear hustling. Nice. Now, <laughs> It could mean nothing because, you know, I call Brad Pitt my husband at least once a month and I've only met the man one time. But this isn't the first time that oh. people have, like, found a clue. Huh. Oh. Take a look at this picture right here. A year ago, she posted her Emmys. Look behind the Emmy, that black book. What does it, it say? It says, The Pauls. Plural. Pauls. With an S. Like With, there are two Pauls. Zah. Yes, like the Pauls own this home, this $35 million home together. Ooh. So oh. I think they might be married. Okay, okay. you well, might be right. Let us know if you Thank do you, any Justin. more ear hustling out there and hear anything else. Okay, Thank Justin? you, Justin. I will. Okay. All right, don't forget, you can catch our friend Justin weeknights at 11 on our sister network, E. Coming up next, one of our favorites, Stanley Tucci. He's here. We're going to chat about family, food, more right after this. For years, Stanley Tucci has been one of the most beloved actors, but it's his latest role as a food lover and social media star that has everybody buzzing. And we are so thrilled that he's here to hang out with us. Hi, Stanley. Hi, Stanley. Hi, hi. I mean, hi. a food star. Yeah. Food star. <laughs> How does that sit with you? It's weird. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird, but I'm, I'm thrilled. It's another aspect of my life that seems to be burgeoning at a very late age. <laughs> Uh, so, but I'm thrilled. Let's I'm talk thrilled. about the transition because that's an interesting moment where, because a lot of people obviously know you from films, TV, yeah. and all the rest, and you made this transition. Was this a gradual put your toe in the water, let me see if I like it, or was it a deliberate decision? Like, Oh, no, no, no. It's been happening for many years at this point, uh, and obviously it, it, it just sort of kept happening Yeah. because I liked it. Yeah, totally. It was fun, and it was fun to cook, and it was fun to be with people and share recipes with people and learn from people. Uh -huh. And traveling throughout Italy, I learned such a huge, huge amount. And it got me in closer touch with the way I grew up. Huh. And every year just got better and better and more interesting to me. I feel like that's really great advice for mm -hmm. people that are watching that <clears throat> that may have a passion yeah. that isn't their job, but they're yeah. like in love yeah. with something. Yeah. Like that's where you lean in. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. authenticity there. No, it's true. And I think I started to love it the way I loved show business mm -hmm. you know and as you get older show business well it gets a little tiring yeah. after a while after 40 some years you get a little tired <laughs> so you kind of want to shake things up a little bit well it's interesting because you said you learn a lot and it's not just about the ingredients that go in and how long you stir it and simmer it but you you learn about life 
and yeah. cultures and yeah. all of that stuff. What did yeah. you take away from your experiences? A exactly that. Um, I'm very interested in the history of food in any given place. Mm -hmm. I live in, I live in um, London now and I'm really interested in the history of English food, which I find fascinating because so many um, so many countries, the f food exists, you know, because of topography, because of, you know, yeah. uh, p political issues, because of whatever, 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 um, and invasion. Whereas most British food exists because they invaded people. Wow. They invaded like everyone. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So then you have all this, this amalgam of incredible food because of the British Empire, whereas oh. other, other countries were about other people invading them. Um, Boy, that's interesting. It is I never so interesting. When it to you food. need to teach some sort of class. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, well, that's all I got, though, really. You know, it's a pretty <laughs> short class. Um, one of the other things that food has brought you is some notoriety uh -huh. on uh -huh. TikTok and other <laughs> outlets. Yeah, For right. example, we show videos of you stirring a cocktail. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of made you a, a heart, also a heartthrob. First I know. trap. I wish we hadn't. I mean, I'm sort of embarrassed with some yeah. of the things, especially since I adore your wife, that I've said about. Yes, I know. I know. She felt the same about you, as you know. Oh, yeah, um, but it's is that do your kids make fun of you is everybody my older kids just roll their eyes <laughs> Yeah, because a lot of it came out during the pandemic and the comments were You know <laughs> that type of thing. They were Stanley's blue, hot. They say. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and then my kids would be like, oh god dear dad, dad. Dad. Ugh, You're old and gross you know. <laughs> <laughs> The way kids do yeah, let's talk about your wife Felicity no. who is right yeah. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> sure. How, when did you guys meet? How long ago? We met about uh, 11 years ago or so. Uh -huh. And um, oh, that, that's very funny. It's at the Goodwood Festival of Speed. Uh -huh. And um, we met about 11 years ago or so and um, at her sister's wedding. Mm -hmm. And I was going to England to shoot Captain America. Mm -hmm. And we started dating. And we really, the things we talked about most of all was food. Yeah. Yeah. That and then we just started going out to dinner and then we realized we had this mutual love, you know, for food. She yeah. films some of your videos. I know. She does. Yes. Does she yes. get jealous when everyone's talking about how hot you are? No, I wish she would. <laughs> she's not the type. She she's not the type. She couldn't care, care less. less. Could, I would be furious. <laughs> she's like, sure. Um, by the way, you also love Harry Styles. We, yeah. lo we love him. Yeah, he's a good And you've guy. actually become fr are you yes. pals? Yes. Oh, how look cute. Look, y'all hugged. Yeah. Look at, is that geez, his I concert? look like his grandfather. <laughs> uh, that happened. He is the loveliest man. Yeah. He's very thoughtful, uh, kind, soft spoken, funny. Yeah. Really funny and super smart. A voracious reader. Oh, yeah. yeah. A voracious reader. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. See, See, send him another some thing books. to love about yeah. it. Send him All some right. Books. Well, Stanley's going to stick around. We're going to get some tips for throwing a dinner party coming up right after this. Oh. <laughs> Do you have any of those? Oh, oh that's me <laughs> giving the tips. Welcome to today. So happy to see you guys. Would you like my boost? Yes. Back. Here we go. Boom. Sometimes we just do things to help. That's our Hoda. <laughs> happy birthday. We got an awesome crowd, y'all. We are back with Stanley Tucci, actor, author, and TV host. And now he's created a cookware line appropriately called Tucci. Tucci. All right. Let's talk about the cookware line. It's yeah. very chic. Yeah. Thanks. I wish we had some Where right here. It? Why don't we have it? <laughs> we don't know. It's it, well, it's okay. Well, they, we'll, we'll show it. They saw it on the oh, there, it there, it there it is. There it is. How do you choose the colors? Yeah. 
Well, it was a it was a process. A lot of the colors, the designer, who when the when the company approached me, they had their designer obviously, and he had um, sort of you know he said I followed you for months on Instagram. <laughs> he was like a stalker, and, and, uh, but a good one. Yeah, a nice one. Nice, nice stalker. And uh, he said I looked at your aesthetic. I looked at the colors in your house. I looked at the stuff you used to cook with. A lot of stuff is sort of mid-century stuff that I had from my parents. Mm. Um, and he said. So I came up with these designs that, based on that, and mm. I was like, amazing, and the color too. Yeah. And then we started working on it together. Mm -hmm. And over a period of a year and a half, we worked on it together. I went to the thing, he would send me pictures, oh, we'd wow. talk about it and blah, blah, blah. And we ended up with what we have. What so the palette beautiful. is based on colors that, some of the colors that are in my house. Our kitchen. There was a green we wanted to do, but we couldn't get it because it had a certain toxicity to it, so oh, one, we, but you we know nixed what? it. That's a good thing that you nixed yeah. it. Yeah. All right, so yeah. we choice? That, yeah. We've got some good dinner party questions for yeah, you. Yeah, go ahead. Shall we? Yeah. Okay. Um, what is the best gift to bring as a host? Mm. Alcohol. <laughs> okay. Uh, I do, I think. Always. I think wine. Yeah. What's your favorite cocktail these days? I know you like to, we watched yeah. you stir, stir something. Yeah. <laughs> we, didn't, we don't even know what it was. We didn't so I think it was a Negroni, stir. but I just remember watching know. you stir it. Yeah, yeah. I, I love a, a martini. A martini? It's still, it's my favorite. Vodka martini? Go -to? Both. Oh. Both. Either. Tanqueray 10, of course. Oh. Uh, but yeah, I love, I, yeah. Olives I love no, martinis. No olives? I like an olive and a twist. Oh. Incredible, isn't it? Okay. Um, okay yeah. When hosting, do you see yeah. couples together, or do you prefer uh, to separate them? It depends on the couples, because sometimes you know somebody's new and they might be shy, yeah. and then you want to put them together. But it's oh, I think it's always nice to separate a little yeah. bit. Okay. Yeah. Unless it's a huge table, then it's like cruel. Yeah, because you want to yeah. be close to the yeah. people you love. Okay. What is your go-to meal to impress somebody? To impress. Impress somebody, I don't know. I would make like a lasagna bolognese, mm. but because it's, it's incredibly time consuming though. Mm -hmm. uh, and my wife and I will do it together. She makes the pasta. My pasta making skills are homemade terrible. Homemade pasta? Wow. Yeah, homemade pasta. And oh. then I'll do the sauce and we'll do the bechamel together and then we'll combine everything. What was Cute. the first thing you cooked for Felicity? Mm -hmm. Do you remember? It was probably either risotto or something really simple like pasta marinara, mm -hmm. something like that, yeah. And Whatever she, it was, She's it an amazing she cook. She cooks too? Yeah, as is her sister, yeah. Oh. They're great, great cooks. Okay, yeah. anybody dead or alive, who would you invite? <laughs> I didn't know where you we were We don't have to now. kill anybody. <laughs> no one's dead yet. Who would you invite to your dinner table if you could have a, a dinner party? Dream. Oh, God, it's so hard, that question. It's really asking. hard, that it's question. It's so hard. I, I know say, who I would ask. Who, who, Tony please. Morrison. Oh. oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. That's I'd like good. to have a yeah. dinner with her. Yeah. I'll say Rilke. Oh. Brian and Maria Rilke, the poet. Well, you Yeah, I don't think that. he was very funny, but... <laughs> explain but, the book but you that you can carried bring around. Humor. I'll bring yeah. the humor. Yeah, yeah. Explain yeah. the book, yeah, that you carried with you. Uh, Letters to a Young Poet. Yeah. That's a beautiful... He would, uh, uh, a poet had written... A young man who wanted to be a poet. Yeah. Uh, it was a soldier in the First World War, and he was writing to, to Rilke about poetry mm. and and Rilke was giving him advice and you carried that book with you. I carried it with me everywhere I lo I just loved it wow it's about the creative process it's beautiful that's beautiful beautiful thank okay you. Stanley we, we love you oh Please God, come I love back. you guys yes. thank you and we want to come to your house and cook yeah we want to sit can. with you and Felicity just yes. come over okay. I, I want to give Felicity fine. a book I hope I can get it do you feel like I'll, lugging some I'll things over back. the pond I'll take it back. Yeah. Oh, she you. had the best time with you. I, yeah, I'll tell her I love you. Okay, coming up next, if you're a master of random trivia, guess what? We've got a fun game for you, and you can play along with us right after this. Thank, Thank you. you.
Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. What's shaking eggs and bacon? Hold what? on. I'm just going to say it. What? Badass. Oh, thank you. So do you think you'll act forever? <laughs> Boom. <laughs> We're going to have lots of fun yeah. this morning. Yeah. All right, it's time to play one of our favorite games, and you can play along. It's called Categories. And here to host is none other than our associate producer, Ben Bass. Come on, Ben. Yeah. Take it away, Let's go, Ben. Thanks, everyone. Hey, Hoda and Jenna. So Hi. today we're playing Hi. Categories, but there's a twist. Okay. So you'll be playing for one of our Plaza fans. Her name is Kathy Bauhoff. Uh -huh. She's from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Oh. So here's how it works. Each round, you'll see a list of names along with a category. So you'll have to figure out which five names fit into that category. I love this. But be warned, there are also three incorrect answers on the board. Okay. So if you get three strikes, you're out and you lose the round. And guess what? We get to play together. We yes, do? Yes, you're playing together. And this round, you're playing for this beautiful new Hoda and Jenna they, mug. By the way, those are hard to get. Huge They're item. selling out Big We heard store. it was the number one seller. Sorry, From really. a source. <laughs> yeah, we're sorry. Okay. okay. Ben, what's our first category? So let's get our eight names on the board. Okay. Your first category is Ben and Jerry's flavors. So which of these five are real? Okay. okay. Monkey, yes. And Chunky can monkey. we go? Should we go? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Chunky monkey is fish That's food correct. Is fish food is also uh, correct. We know that, I think, I'm pretty no. sure. Boom chocolate. Yep, that's yeah. correct. How many are there? Five? Five, I yep. I don't know. Okay, try it. A uh, hunk of chunk of burning love. No. Whoa. Oh, all right. One strike. Okay. No, no, no even. I don't or think coffee, coffee, buzz, yeah, buzz. Yeah, that's that correct. All right. Great. You just need one more one correct more. answer. I don't think it's next lips. No, but it can't yeah. be. It can't be. Mocha frappuccino. That's disgusting. No, 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 no. Or, or Netflix and chill. Millie Vanilla! Dang Ooh. it! All right, one what more. Was it? Netflix, Netflix and chill. And you got it, yes. All right, so Kathy, you're going home with a mug. We won. Way yep. to go, girl. Barely. Sorry, we just barely made it. Okay, okay. let's do our next one. Yeah, love this game. So the next won. round gets a little harder, oh, but God, the prize good. is bigger. You're playing for a Hoda and Jenna sweatshirt. That sweatshirt's cozy. Eight names on the board. Your category is movies based on books. Oh, yeah, girl. Oh, oh so this is hard. Girl. You got this. Let's, let's go. go. Forrest Gump. For sure. Yep, yes, you got it. Definitely. Um, Mrs. Doubtfire, for sure. Yep, you got oh, it. How That's you know two. That? I know I that. Um, I actually don't know any Crazy movies. Stupid Love. Ooh. No, no. no. One strike. Uh, right. Just one. Go okay. ahead, girl. I got two. Um, I think Freaky Friday. Yep, you yeah. got it. That's three correct. Just need two correct. It can't be Girl's Trip. Well, may it could be. Maybe. Girl's Trip. Ooh. Ooh, that's two strikes. One uh -oh, strike now left. I'm scared. It can't be. Is it maybe? No, I've never be even honest. heard of it. What? Like but it's maybe. Hard? Okay, Legally Blonde. You got that one, yep. Okay, it's either Die Hard or Sweet Home. One more correct answer. Well, we know. Sweet Home Alabama has to be great with that. Sweet Home Alabama! Oh. Die Hard! I'm die sorry. Hard! Sorry, Die Hard is based on a book. Die Hard That's three is strikes. based on a book? Kidding? It's based on a book, I yeah, thought we were called Nothing all Lasts Legally Forever. We're gonna go like yeah. Jane Austen. Based Jane on a Austin. true story. Okay, don't try to go on. All right, so no sweatshirt for, for Kathy, oh, but sorry, Kathy. Oh, third round. One more? Third round, hardest round, but biggest prize. Oh, biggest Hoda prize. and Jenna We're swag bag. Do it for you, girl. So let's get our eight names on the board. What is it? Your category is minor league baseball teams. Oh, girl. So oh, which God. of these We're five dead. Hold on, I, are oh, real? Hold on. Dead. This, oh, y'all. The Toledo Mud Hens. That's correct, I know yes. That. Yep. Okay, what about, I'm pretty sure, okay, definitely not the straight flushes. Well, I don't know. Boise Bunnies. Ooh, no! That's one oh, strike. One strike. Okay, I got it. The Sugar Land Space Cowboys. That's real. Yep. yep, you got it. That's two. Albuquerque Isotopes. Yep, that's How do you three. Know you got it. I don't know. I'm just feeling it. Okay. Okay. Just need, need two more. Two more, two I more, think two more. Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimp. Yep, that's oh, real. Just need one more correct one answer. More, one more, one more. No, 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 no. no, no. Las, Las Vegas, Vegas Straight Flushes. Or El Paso. Well, let's try it. Las Vegas straight flushes. No, I'm sorry. Wait, we no. have one more. We you have one more. more. Chihuahuas? Are they really cool? Springfield so El Paso! El Paso! You let's got go. it! Yep, let's they're not go. Go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. the swag bag! Pink Kathy, gallery. you are getting the Hoda and Jenna mug and a Hoda and Jenna swag bag. I think that's a pretty good haul. All right. This Kathy, was a hard one. Ben, great job. Yeah. Excellent job. Thank you, Ben. Of Coming up next, y'all, they've had five number one albums, and now they're out with a new one. Get ready for some music by rockers Need to Breathe coming up right after this. Way to go, Ben! Let's go! How do we blow that second one? What was legally
Good morning, everybody. Here's what's happening in your neck of the woods. What? You deserve to be celebrated. Way to go, Reynolds. Oh, Al. Al, you're all of our heroes. Y'all yeah. love Al Roker. The City Music Series on today is proudly presented to you by City. And they are a Grammy-nominated band that has racked up more than two billion. What? I said billion. Yes, you did. Streams since they got back together in 2001. Now, need to breathe this out with their night studio album. This one's called Caves, and this fall they will be headed on their Caves World Tour, but lucky for us, they're making a stop right here in Studio 1A. Bear, we're so happy that y'all are here together. Thanks for having us. I mean, 2001, and here we are at 2023. How has your music kind of evolved over the time? It's changed some, yeah. but I think we've changed more. How? You know what I mean? Um, we've grown up, had kids. You know I mean? We're adults now, yeah. which is good. <laughs> right. We went through some pretty winding uh, yeah. ways, you know, but, um, we're just thankful. Yeah, well, and that's what this album mm -hmm. is all about. You yeah. say it's all about gratitude. Yeah, yeah, it kind of surprised me, actually. I listened back to the record and heard that. I didn't think huh. it when I was writing it. Um, but we're just really proud that we get to do what we love, obviously, and have been able to do it with the guys that we love. We're having more fun than we've ever had. Yeah. Um, so it's a good thing. Yeah. And you got cool collaborations, too. So cool. Who are you collaborating with? Who are some uh, of the people? We have Old Dominion on the record. We record. love Old Dominion, too. Yeah, Carly Pierce. Yeah, she's Carly awesome. Uh, so what'd you Boy do? Vance. Do you Judah, just who's going to play with us today. Yeah, yeah, we did, actually. You called um, up and said, hey? We met um, the Old Dominion guys on an All My Brothers tribute thing we did here. Mm -hmm. And they were like, we're fans. And so a couple months later, we called them and they were like, yes, we're now, You're saying world tour. Where are you going around the world? And where do you have fans that kind of surprised you? That's a great question because we're very, people are upset with us right now because we haven't announced all the Europe oh. UK stuff. But yeah. it's coming. Uh -huh. um, okay. So we're going mostly US right now. I think 50 shows or so. And then. Go with going that. to the yeah. And, well, wow. and as you said, you're headed on tour with Judah and the Lion performing with us today. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being here. Yes. Um, what are you going to perform for us? Uh, it's called Dreams. Dreams. Oh, I like it. Thank All right, you. take it away. I'm a windy shell. I'm a restless herd. Get a few things right, but still I find myself in trouble. I'm a loaded gun. I'm a full-blown worry. I'm a reckless soldier trying to crawl out of the rubble. It's hard to see the light from under. All these failures got me wondering. That's why. Gift was given in 
After all I did Steal the life that I would you That's why I throw my bones in the rhythm Sing my teeth in a good time What is that little it's mandolin. guy? Mandolin. What's it called? A mandolin? Mandolin, yeah. Mandolin. So it's spray painted poorly. But. It's cute. No, it's cool. <laughs> it's cute. <laughs> well, that's y'all are amazing. That was a great Incredible, song. Incredible, guys. Thank you so much. You. Need to Breeze latest album, Caves. It's out right now. Check them out on the Caves World Tour this fall, featuring, of course, Judah and the Lion. Yes. Thank you, guys. Thanks, we'll y'all. be back right after oh, this. So beautiful. Oh, Thank worms. Nicole Ari Parker will stop by. Can't wait for that. Plus, Donna sits down with TikTok star Alex Earl. Then we got Siri Daly. She's got some sweet and savory snacks. Oh, good. I need some snacks. We need Siri. Speaking of snacks, I'm Siri. Food. We're so excited. We're going to take a big bite out of our favorite fall fruits with the one, the only, the returning Martha Stewart. Hi. Oh, so it's great to be here. Nice. I can't well, believe it. Martha Stewart's fruit desserts. And we are so and excited the, to have you here in person. The recipes are so good in this book, and I've been baking every single one of them, and they're delicious. But I want to show you how to make apple pot pies. Yes. Can you imagine a riff on the chicken pot pie? I love it, but it's, it's sweet, not savory, it sweet. right? It's a Can dessert. I ask you first, though, how's your leg? Did you my hurt, legs you all hurt better. Yourself? You had a surgery? Yeah, my Achilles. Yeah, okay. Don't ever hurt your Achilles, please. Okay. Yes, <laughs> but you're all good. Okay. Yeah, I'm all good. So, the apples, you need 12 to 13 gorgeous autumnal apples. Okay. Mm. And uh, we're using Granny Smith's and Rome's. Uh, peel them, cut them into like six pieces. Mm -hmm. Add lemon juice yeah. to stop the discoloration and add flavor. Oh, okay. A third of a cup of sugar and 
a little bit of salt, just mm. three kosher salt. Yeah, kosher salt, three quarters of a teaspoon, and allspice, which okay. has a very nice flavor, half a teaspoon. You can stir that up, Sarah. Right. And then you saute half of them in a pan, add two tablespoons of flour. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, a third of a cup of bourbon. That's good. That's <laughs> He's good. Like, wow. Yeah, well, you. A little bit more won't hurt. And you cook that up until it thickens just slightly. Mm -hmm. And then add this. I guess it's cooking. Yeah. Is it hot? It's yeah. cooking. Yeah, it's a little too. So you want it to get it like a thickened up sauce well, it'll, kind of. It'll, the, it'll thicken up in yeah. the oven. Will it absorb too. that ultimately? Uh, oh, yeah. Ultimately, okay. it will absorb it. You add that to your other apples. Mm -hmm. This is half and a half of the apples. Mm -hmm. Can and I stop then, Okay. Off. Mm -hmm. And then these stir all together. Ooh, yum. Oh Spoon them into. <laughs> oh, stop it. <laughs> he just added more. Spoon Boom. those into a pot pie dish. Oh, that's cute. You see this cute? And this okay. is one okay. serving. So uh, You didn't put the pastry under, I know. Uh, no, no, no. Pot pies always have the pastry on <laughs> top. Oh, that's right. That's right. You know? So here's a square of puff pastry, just like that. Can you pre buy that or? It's store oh, yeah, yeah. It's a store bought. You can buy it. They, there's very good home, uh, frozen, frozen puff. Make a vent hole in the top or two mm -hmm. and put easy. that like that. And then egg wash. Mm -hmm. Just a uh, wow, uh, softly eggs. beaten egg. Yeah, the beautiful color, beautiful. isn't it? Uh, these are farm eggs. Really, really great. When do these things sit in water? I see water sometimes in these well, pans. Oh, no, not here. No, no, not here. You not don't want to do okay. because you want this to to uh, puff up, and the finished dessert will look like that. Top, How long in the oven? Top with 375 for about uh, 40 minutes. Okay, yum. And so delicious. A really cute uh, single-serving dessert. Oh, that's now, easier than it, Martha, actually. Oh, my gosh. I would never these would make are those. awesome. This is my way. happy place oh, right here. That's no, very impressive. You can't even talk. Yeah. So now, delicious. do you know what this is? Do you know what it's that is? Randy Smith apple? I don't know what that is. Do you know what that is? A pomegranate. I'm afraid to, an apple? This is a quince. It's oh. kind of a cross between an apple and a pear. Oh, okay. But oh, it's yeah, not yeah. edible it's uncooked. It's really, oh. they're very sour, very hard, very fibrous. So we cut them into uh, five quinces. We cut them, take the pits out, peel them, mm -hmm. and poach them in a wonderful syrup of maple syrup. Mm -hmm. Here we go, half yeah. uh, one cup of maple syrup. Mm and about a quart of water. Watch Carson's gonna try to put bourbon in a that. vanilla bean. <laughs> I already did. Boy, this is, you have to split the vanilla bean. It's a little oh. hard over here. Oh, that's cool. And let the vanilla bean, and scrape it. You want to get all those seeds out. Do you know how to do that? No. Yeah, see the Never seeds? Done that. Those oh, are vanilla wow. bean seeds, see? And you leave the thing in But then you yeah. put the seeds in. And poach all of these until they're tender. <laughs> Look what they look the color they Why turn. did you take the seeds out and then you put them back in? No, no, no seeds. Oh, okay. I thought you no, put no them seeds. in there. No, no the okay. vanilla bean seeds. Yeah, that's what yeah. I need. Yeah. Oh okay. no, because that's the flavor. Oh, okay. Now here are your cooked quince. Wow. And you add to this cooked quince, just a little bit of the reduced poaching liquid. Mm -hmm. And is that the one the liquid from your pot? Yes. Okay. And you boil it down yeah. and you uh, add two teaspoons of cornstarch. Mm. Cornstarch will again thicken the juices. So you don't have a very runny dessert. Okay. And these, this, <laughs> that Woodford Reserve is gonna love you. That's a good bourbon too. That's made right down in Kentucky. Mm. I know, yeah. my people. Okay, so now this goes right into your baking dish. Okay. Those dishes all are that'll thicken up. And this is the topping, which is flour, oh. cornmeal, and you can just oh, I love that. put this, this all is a over the top. Yeah, it's oh. sort of a crumble. Mm -hmm. All over the top like this. Had a quince yeah. in your life? You know, taste oh, it. You're going to love it. This is fantastic. Yeah, Have you tasted it? What do you think, guys? Do you love so it? So good. Someday yeah, my quince will come. This is a quince <laughs> crumble. I don't think I've ever had a quince, Martha. Oh, no, it is so good. We're having our first good. quince. Have you had a quince before? I I grew up. Oh, I grew up. I've never heard of it. It's been a best quince year, too. Really beautiful. Really good. Put this all over the top. And sprinkle your almonds, sliced almonds, on top of this. Today.com slash food is where you go. Yes. Mm -hmm. Pick up Martha's book. It's yeah. fantastic. We and ran out of time. Book number, book number 100. Have you written your tell-all yet? It's coming. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It'll be a good one. Uh, Thanks, <laughs> Martha. I bet it'll tell some tales, Martha. And Thank cranberry. You so no, much. Don't forget the cranberry skillet cake. That looks so good. And the recipes are on the website. And fruit desserts is out right now. Delicious. Thank you, Thank Martha. You. Thank you. Mm.
great Martha Stewart. She's making one of her favorites. It's a classic fish burger. And with more than 50 cookbooks full of recipes, for you to say this is one of your personal favorites, I mean, it's got to be good, Martha. Well, I, I really like the fish hake. It's a, an expensive fish. Compared hake. hake. Huh. And uh, it's a member of the codfish family, and, and it's a wonderful white fish. And when you cut it up into nice little cubes like this, it comes like that. That's a, uh -huh. that's a fillet. Mm. Um, just Is it like a halibut? I've never heard of hake. No, no, it's, it's lighter than a halibut. Okay. Mm. Uh, and, and as I say, less expensive. Breadcrumbs. Uh -huh. Nice, fresh breadcrumbs. So just mm. take a white loaf and grind it up in the food processor. Okay. Two eggs. Yeah. Mm. Really easy. Are those eggs from your farm? Yes, they are. Of course they are. <laughs> yes, they are. The, oh, the hens are laying really well right now because of the warm use, like, weather. By the way, can you use the boxed uh, uh, Italian breadcrumbs or panko or something like that? Uh, work, yes, or? you could. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. okay. I, but, I know you uh, make everything fresh. Though. But so this is a delicious and a little bit of cayenne pepper, which is very nice. Did you catch the hake in your little lake out there? <laughs> no, the no, hake or? is a saltwater fish. Okay. Not a fish. How come you don't have a saltwater pond? Um, well, I'm so sorry, but in Maine I do. Okay. In Maine I do. In Maine you do. Oh, okay. Well, then don't apologize if you have one. Incredible. A teaspoon of salt. Yep. Some freshly um, ground ch uh, chopped chives. Right from the garden, no oh, doubt. Yes. And uh, don't forget capers. Yeah. Capers. Ooh, about are those crushed capers? A quarter of a cup mm -hmm. of chopped capers. Chopped capers, okay. Rinse them on, out of the jar and then... Uh, How about some and, mayo? Are you going to bind oh, this thing? Definitely. You're making like a crab cake, basically. It here. is. It's like a crab cake, but it's a burger. This because we're not amazing. Yeah. And here's the mayo. We have so our just... taster. Chanel's already finished. Oh my gosh, I'm almost finished. Oh, this is almost, phenomenal. What do you, what do you so think, guys? It's so good. It's so good. Oh, Carson, wait until you try this. Why don't we eat more fish burgers in America? I don't know. Well, it's not be. that hard to make. No, no. it's not hard at all. And it's all. a nice alternative to red meat. Uh -huh. exactly. It is. Or chicken. It uh -huh. is. And, or turkey. Right. Turkey burgers are good, too. They're one of my favorites. So this is a very nice mixture. Um, make the burgers. The nice way to make them uniform in size is to use a little ring like this, yep. like a biscuit ring. Okay. And uh, just take some of the nice mixture mm -hmm. and put mm. it in here, pack it. Mm -hmm. And I, I like to put this on parchment paper and chill it before I oh. um, oh, actually that, cook mm -hmm. the burgers. Look at that perfect burger. That's ideal. See how nice? Yeah. So I have, some, home, I have some that are already chilled. Okay. Yum. And they're going to go why, right Why do we chill a, it, Martha? Why, a little why? olive oil. Why do you chill yeah. the burger? They hold their shape. Just hold oh, it, it together. Hold it together. Oh. Yeah, because the breadcrumbs and the mayo, it, it all Got it. gets mm. a little bit uh, firmer. It's a cold plunge. It's all the rage. And then just brown these. Yeah. Uh, and it takes oh, about eight minutes or ten minutes to cook. I gotta go back to the hake. How come I don't see hake well, at the, my you. local market? Is but it? you're not asking. You haven't looked. Oh, you have to it. ask for it. Yes, ask for it's it. It's there. Because what do they hold stuff in the back? No, they have the salmon. They have the cod. Right. They that. have the halibut. That. That's and right. Some of these. Just are asking for the halibut. A, a for the, okay. pound now. For the halibut. Just for the halibut. And now this is this one of the one of the garnishes is pickled onions. Yeah. So this is Japanese rice wine vinegar. Okay. A little bit of sugar and mm -hmm. a little bit of salt. It's like a sake. Almost. A red, a red mm -hmm. onion, sliced, mm. peeled and sliced. You make and it. just let that stay for oh a day or two, and look what happens. It pickles right up. Pickle. Yummy. Wow. See how pretty. What other sort of toppings do you like to put oh, on your fish? Oh well, burger? I like I like the onions. First, a little mayo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can. They're not yeah, ready. Yeah, I'm just kind of. So you're not how, ready. They really aren't. I thought they'd yeah. be sticky. This is a mustard apart, mayo, a, a mustard. buttered a buttered brioche bun, Ugh. mustard mayo. So add about a couple tablespoons of. Dijon mm. mustard to your oh, of mayo. Of course you would. It's so good. And the brioche get that bun. ready, and Carson, then put a this. couple Perfect. pickled onions I'm on. Idea. Carson, how pretty try these this. Are. Let me, while I have you, let me ask you just two quick business questions okay. here. Uh, book number 100, I believe, is in the workshop. <laughs> on biography. I'm, I'm running home right after this to to take more pictures. My hundred favorite recipes will be my hundredth wow. book. Wow. Oh, and we learned a little bit about you too in your uh, past. And oh yes, and a lot of a lot of historic you were a pictures. Never a Marine. Okay. <laughs> no. Always a Girl Scout. Okay, right. Yes, definitely a Girl Scout. And how about the Roku show, Martha and, Cooks? Oh, my gosh, we're doing that. Um, we have so many wonderful shows on Roku now. We They have my whole library, yeah, too. Yeah, that's uh, nice. On Channel 448. Mm -hmm. I live at 48. <laughs> Right. I lived at 48 well, Turkey Hill people, Road. Well, don't and tell I people your at, address, Martha. Well, I live at 48. She's, I'm she's not currently? Telling, I'm not, yeah, two houses, both number I'm going to edit that out. Yeah. So, no. like, don't edit it out. Four for eight. Oh, they don't question. know where it is. I'll take care of it on the West Coast, it's, but we're, you're in, in trouble now. It, it's, in, it's in Hudson, New York. No, no, no. All right, just keep telling people. Has Snoop Dogg moved in yet? You're going to need his help here. No, not yet, but his bodyguard, Tiny, is this Tiny, Tiny, of course. Martha, as always, thank you so much. Thank you. Are you enjoying it? This is
here to help us kick off the outdoor cooking season, who better than America's favorite lifestyle maven, Martha Stewart. She's out with a, a new book. It's a guide to all things grilling. It's called What Else? But Martha Stewart's Grilling. Yes. The 95th cookbook. Yeah, well, 95th book. 95th yeah. book. Lots of those are cookbooks. But grilling, it's its the season. The weather has finally gotten beautiful. Yes. And, uh, and people really like to cook outdoors. I enjoy cooking outdoors as yes. well. Yes. Do you have a less. grill like this, a charcoal? I, or? I'm a gas guy. You're a gas guy. Because it's faster for me. Okay. I've got small kids. I'm just trying to get in and get out. Right. But I know you love charcoal. I love, I love real hard charcoal, the kind the jewelers use. It gets up to 900 degrees. I like it really hot. And I really like pure. So I don't want to use any starter. Don't use those starter fluids. Okay. You know, start with, you know, with. How do you keep your grates clean? I well, mean, your... first, of course, put your grill away clean. Every okay. time you use it, use a brush like this. Scrub that grate so it's nice and clean. Okay. You can use a little bit of oil on a piece of paper towel and a, and a tong like this and yeah. clean, your, clean your grill. And then you cook. Now, this chicken has been cooking for... Oh, about 20 minutes. You want chicken, this is for the first, the first recipe, you want the chicken 165 degrees. 165, yes. you need your outdoor thermometer. Yes, you, yes. you have your little th re instant read there thermometer and you just use that. All right, let's get then, cooking here, Martha. Okay, let's so this, this chicken. is chicken with green chili dressing. It is so delicious. Once it's cooked, you make a dressing of cilantro, uh, zest of lime, juice of one lime, olive oil, and we can make this dressing ahead of time. Oh yes, okay. and you can say it gets, actually gets better ahead of time. Some scallions, some serrano peppers. That's your dressing. That's pretty simple. And oh, it's so simple. How long do you marinate? Uh, well, you don't marinate. This is cooked on the grill, just oh. salt and pepper. Okay. And then you put the dressing on after it's cooked. Oh. And there it is. And everybody's going to have a taste. You're going to have a taste of this. You're going to love They're already this. tasting now. Oh, yeah. What's the verdict, now, Carson Daly? What do you think? Oh, I mean, come on. Chicken, Martha. good. What can't you do? It's amazing. Good. The next thing is the Korean uh, skirt oh, yeah. steak. That's the best. And now these are, it's sort of like a skirt steak, but it is a uh, short rib cut in the flank style. See this? See how beautiful I love this ribs. Is? They're my favorite to yes. cook on the grill, but so traditional ribs So instead of the long ribs, yes. This is cut in a, a, the opposite direction, and boy, is it good. This is marinated. And the marinade is soy sauce. Not marinade, no, no, marinade. Mar marinade. Marinade. <laughs> and it's, uh, it is rice vinegar, sesame seeds, white or black, soy sauce, scallion, a little bit of light brown sugar, and freshly grated um, ginger and garlic. Okay. You want to grate a little ginger? Yes, ma'am. How, uh, how much ginger do we use? Well, you just, just grate it like that, yep. And it's you know, a lot. Go back and forth, yes. And then you Don't be afraid, all. Melvin, just grate it. I'm grating it, yeah. I'm grating it. Martha, is that enough? <laughs> yeah, that's good. And okay. put that all in there, yep. And then your short ribs go right in here. Those short ribs go right in here, and you put them on the grill. How long, how long? I do this overnight or okay. a couple hours before. So if you're if you're a late night, you know, if you you want to come home and cook, yes. these should be marinated overnight. What's the verdict on the short ribs? Oh, yeah. My favorite. It's really good. Here they are all Very marinated. Nice. Clean plate club. And then you just put these three minutes aside. I'll do that for you. Yep, you do that. I'll make myself useful here. Three minutes aside. Oh yeah, nice and flat. Uh, yes, ma'am. And you can also use these protective gloves. These have a little bit of silicon on them. So if you want to pick stuff Look up. Look at Guthrie helping out there. That's right. Oh, good. Do the we, got a, we got a burner over Five here. Five minutes aside. Yeah. Oh, okay. We got okay. about 20 minutes on this okay. side. The others, yeah, do it that way. Yeah. Uh oh, yeah, that's I got pretty, there just in time. Pretty well done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so this is served on lettuce leaves oh, with kimchi and the, um, the wonderful um, fermented chili sauce. Do you like that? And scallions and cucumber. It's and really this is one. so, so delicious. That's how you serve it. All right. What so do you think? I'm a big fan of uh, Korean And then grilled too. salmon is uh, my favorite because I love light salads in the summertime. And a grilled salmon, this is a salmon that's been overcooked. <laughs> Not really. No, that's, fine. That is so beautiful. Look how nice. Use one of these baskets for doing fish. Cooking fish can be a bit intimidating on the grill. It, it, I yeah, find but, that it falls apart. Or, yeah, but this is this great, that's why you this have one great of those. basket. Yeah. Use one of your this yeah. is Martha Stewart basket. It is, but uh, but uh, you can find these in, uh, other brands too. What's in the salmon salad and really quickly? Salmon salad is the, is the uh, salmon that's been cooked with a little bit of lemon zest. Always squeeze wow. fresh lemon juice over it. Flake it up. 
You want to flake it up, or you can stir. I'll stir. Put it yes, in there. Floss, no. And there's a great dressing. Do you like anchovy? I, I do. In oh, moderation. good. So <laughs> there's there's a dressing with olive oil, anchovy, a little mustard, salt, and pepper. Just pour that all over the whole thing. Whole thing, whole bottle. Yep. Okay. And then flake the salmon into big flakes. Al, what's the verdict? This is terrific. Delicious. Like a yeah. salmon dish. Where'd you get here? these eggs, Martha? Martha those cake, those are eggs cake, right at. Fresh. You can find all the recipes today.com slash Martha Stewart for Martha's book. Yep. Today.com slash shop. We're back today, food. We're heading to this 4th of July weekend. We have called in the expert to sweeten the celebration. Martha Stewart's here. She's going to show us how to make a sour cherry pie with three different spins on the crust. Is that right? right? Exactly. Sour cherries can be hard to find in the grocery store, no? Well, they're, they all, it's a very short season. Okay. So maybe two weeks, three weeks at the most. All right. And most of them come from places like New York State or Michigan, and they're beautiful. They're like little rubies, oh. and but you have to pit them. Okay. Because otherwise, your family or your friends will break their teeth. They have already. These have already been. Yeah, pitted, this is so this is a silly little pitter. Okay, that there's is a not better, the pitter there, you want. No, because there's a better pitter that I don't have with me, and it, it does multiples at, at the okay. same time. So, oh, this is but aren't they good? Today show pitter. We won't be. Easy. <laughs> okay. And so here is. The f it's the pits, exactly. <laughs> so this is the first crust with a nice fluted edge. Always make your pastry cold. Cold butter, cold flour, okay. cold water, and then uh, roll it out, keep cold it chilled. Heart. Fill it with the filling, which is sugar, a little bit of flour, a little bit of butter, and this is the crumb topping. Mm. This is is this the easiest of the toppings, Martha, the crumb topping? Yeah, very easy. It's just butter, flour, uh, brown sugar, and a pinch of salt. And so you just crumble the crumble over the top of the pie, bake it hot, like in a 400 degree oven. It is so good. I love Let's a crumble. See. Yeah, isn't I love it great? A so yeah, nice. crumble, crisp, yeah. whatever you want to call it. But it put a lot on because it really does yeah. enhance the sourness of those delicious cherries. Okay. Now, here is a very cute topping. This is the solid crust pie. Okay. And this is, you cut the, you cut the a little, if you have a round cookie cutter, you can do that. Yeah. But you can also use a pastry cutter like that to cut the rounds. This lets the steam escape. Oh. And your crust will get nice and crispy. Do you have a favorite? Top, a favorite crust top? No, no, no I make all of these. Okay. All You're of these. agnostic when it and comes to And now the okay. this is the most complicated. You roll out your dough and you uh, lattice top. Mm. The lattice top. Lattice top. That, that looks intimidating. So you can fake it and oh, just put it over, put them one way and then the other way. But if you're very particular, you can actually oh, weave wow. the lattice, see? What's the hardest part about it? The weaving or getting the pieces to be Rolling uniform? it out, rolling yeah. it out, and then cutting it with a little pastry wheel like this. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, how's that? Would you like that pastry wheel? No, not so, no. <laughs> there's, there's no. Like, why'd you ask? You, <laughs> you, you knew what she was gonna say. Martha and I've been together a long time. There are, I there know. are better. There are better pastry wheels. I'm just wheels. stirring the pot. Yeah. But, it, but it spoon. works. It works. Yeah. Don't you know? And so now remember, this one has to go way under here. Okay. So because you're gonna weave it. And do you bake bake the pies off for the same amount of time regardless of uh, the, the crust topping? No, some of them take a little longer than okay. others. Like the solid crust will take a little longer than the lattice. But look how pretty when you really weave it. Okay. Okay. Really good. This lemonade is what? This, this. Well, this is sour cherry lemonade. Oh. Very so sour. you can put your sour cherries, make a make a uh, syrup a of, of the sour cherries. Well, that's good. And, that's and you refreshing. mix it with lemon and orange and a little bit of mint, and that is so good. Sour cherries are just one of my favorite fruits. Martha Stewart, you're one of our favorite people. And here, this is for you. Oh, oh Martha made me cherry pie, y'all. Martha, these cute napkins. So cool. Did you make these uh, too? Yes, these are these are bandanas, and then you can stencil the names on them. That oh. is so good. Cool. Martha, thank you. you Recipes today.com slash food. <laughs>back with today food the one the only martha stewart martha martha yeah. martha we all know she's the queen of decorating cake baking <laughs> and gardening well now she's sharing an up close and personal look at her many talents and interesting stories she's got a new show i cannot get over this title martha gets down and dirty take a look the best use of a chainsaw i ever heard though a couple was getting divorced and they could not decide about what to do with their home furnishings. And the wife just said, okay, well you take half of everything. And she went away and her husband used the chainsaw and cut everything in half. So That's it's a feel good show. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't bode well for the dog. Yeah. Martha, good morning. You're out in uh, your, your, your house out there in the country. We love it. So how'd you come up with this title? I mean, I think we knew you were down and dirty, we deep did down know. inside, but everybody else thinks of you as like the queen well, of clean. Well, I am the queen of, queen of clean inside the house, but out in the garden, it is kind of dirty. You're working in the dirt, right? <laughs> yeah. So it gets me a chance to just just kind of be myself and and uh, and show all the great gardening tips, how to grow things, how to cook things outdoors, and uh, and today we're grilling all kinds of fantastic uh, sausages, um, which which I know Al Roker would really like. Mm. And the guests on our show are fantastic. We have Kim Kardashian, Tiffany Haddish is a hoot, <laughs> and there's some guy called Al Roker. Oh, Al Roker, Roker comes you on the show it. too. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I forgot <laughs> because it was, it was during the pandemic. But yes, I, we were talking about yep. the, the rub. Yep, and he, and he does a great rub. <laughs> so, oh, barbecue rub. Fun. Barbecue and, rub. They did say it was Martha yeah. down and, and dirty. Bar barbecue rub. Yeah. Well, Martha, tell yeah, us the show's about these... on Discovery Plus. Yeah. Okay. Tell us about these dogs you're grilling. Like, it, is there an art to it? Oh well, all kinds of dogs. 
you know, if you're going to have a grilling party, why not make it really interesting? Not just hot dogs, but special all beef hot dogs, kielbasa, uh, a Greek sausage we just found called Ooh. called uh, Lucanico. It's it's a combination of uh, meat and uh, oregano and lemon, mm. and we have beautiful cheddar bratwurst. Oh, These are so yum. pretty, and uh, and then of course, don't forget the rolls. The rolls have to be uh, beautifully buttered. Uh, before you put them on the grill, oh, and no. grill make sure yeah. you don't burn stuff. Yeah, you know Al Roker, he's he's also a proponent of not burning stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, if the flame is up high like that, just move the stuff or spray it with a a little spray bottle. But get your your rolls nicely, just slightly charred. Mm -hmm. And the condiments, oh my gosh, look at all the condiments we have on here: bread and butter pickles, French mustard. Mm -hmm. um, this is the uh, you know the baseball stadium mustard, of course. Mm -hmm. Chopped onions, red relish, green relish, sauerkraut, my favorite, oh. mm. sour cream. Uh, you have um, uh, spicy mustard, tomatoes chopped up, and this is fantastic a, a beet horseradish mustard. Oh, wow. So, horseradish. and bacon and dill pickles. Yum. And doesn't that make your mouth water? Don't you want Looks one good. of these right now? I wish you were here. Martha, maybe you ought to close the lid, Martha, just to kind of knock that fire down. Yeah, that's yeah, a good for idea. For one second, you're right. And I love this grill dome. This is a custom colored. You can get it any color you uh -oh. want. I love mm. this. So you, yeah, you can have it match your house, your backyard, whatever. It's a really clever, clever thing. Yeah. Oh, so let's let, let that hey, Martha, cool down a little bit. Hey, Martha, yeah. what's your per describe how you would prepare your perfect hot dog. What what are your condiments? What do you like on yours? Oh, well, let's let's get one right here. Here's a hot dog. And on a buttered bun, and I would put first, I like French mustard, so mm -hmm. I would put a nice mm -hmm. Dijon mustard on. Oh, I love relish, mm -hmm. and I would put relish. Do you know I have a hot dog at every hot dog stand? It's called a Martha dog. Wow. And, uh, and every place is a little bit Different from yeah, Rutz Hut has a Martha dog, uh, Raleigh's in Fairfield has a Martha what? dog, uh, the great hot dogs, the hot dog place in California and L.A. has a oh, hot Pink's? dog called the Martha dog. Oh yeah, Pink's. Yeah, I have. A, does Al Roker have a hot dog at Pink's? I do not. I do you not. Had a I'm not Martha, Martha oh, Stewart. Well, I, Come on. I think I think I think you should be working on that one now because those are very famous. Uh -huh. And so that's what I have: pickles, and I love bacon on. Mine too. Oh, I'm wow. going to put a piece of bacon in oh, there. That's a good one. So there there's you go. my hot that's dog. That's a good one. Well, I love and Martha. Martha, <laughs> Martha, one more thing. What do you call it when it gets really crispy, when your dogs get really crispy? Oh, snappies. These snappies. Oh, yeah. Oh, and okay. I love those. Yeah, um, Raleigh's is famous for snappers, as well as Rut Hut, Rutz Hut is also uh, famous for snappers. Okay. That really? you get, you know, snaps, snappers, you put in hot oil first. Oh, you know, you, you oh, fry right. them a little What's bit. What's happening to that then, grill? Martha, that's that's right. Right. Okay. 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 Well, I just <laughs> opened it a little flame going on. Okay. Oh, yeah. okay. All, right. All right, Martha, okay. thank you so no, much. No, this is good. <laughs> okay. Can you believe this, Jeffrey, that your two young girls are authors at ages 13 and 11? Uh, yeah, I just want to say the picture of the cookbook is probably like a year ago, kind of. So they're like growing every day like apples. And yes, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. It's incredible. I'm, I'm blessed and I'm so proud of them. Well, Madeline and Anna, what are your favorite things about cooking with your dad? Um, I love family time and I like, just love cooking with you because it's so fun. I like, just love cooking. Does he let I, you do things yeah. or d does he kind of take over and say, honey, like this, do it like that? It, yeah, it's sort of like do it, if <laughs> I'm just in the kitchen, I can do it. But sometimes he has OCD in the kitchen. So. <laughs> Anna, what do you think about cooking with the big man? He, it's really fun. He teaches me a lot of like new trips tricks and like tips with Aww. everything. Well, okay, so we want to hear, you guys are making an apple crumble. Do y'all ever go to the orchards yeah. and pick apples? Every yes, year. Yes, all the time. We love it. And there are so many apples out there. And today we are going to use uh, Cortland's to make an apple crumble. And it's very simple. This is a sort of a foolproof method. If you mess it up, the peeling or whatever it is, don't worry about it. So I'm just taking a Cortland apple. I'm going to show you how to peel it just top down like that. Very simple. Top down. And, okay. Um, and if you want to do this ahead of time, what I recommend is you take a bowl of water and put some lemon in it and just drop the apples yes. in that. What's that way the... it keeps it from browning. Very oh. easy tip. And I'm going to show you that it doesn't matter if I leave a little on, it's fine. 
Another tip I like to show is how to core. Now, a lot of people take that core and dig and all that. That's way too much work. I just put it right on top end and go down like three or four times. Yeah, just cut right. around it. Just like that. And voila. Boom. Oh. Okay, that's done. All then right. I'm going to cut it in some slices and give it over to my girls, and they're going to show you the rest. Okay. Okay. So What's this is next, like guys? A little moving factory we got going on here. Okay, we like so it. Here you go. Here you go, Anna. I'm going to pass that down. Okay, mm -hmm. right, I think that's good. So I have some apples here, and I have buttered a baking pan. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to add some cinnamon, mm -hmm. some sugar, mm. of course. And you're just going to mix that up, yeah. try and not spill it everywhere. And Madeline, could you use brown sugar if you'd prefer it for the crumble? Yes, you could absolutely use brown sugar. Okay, good yeah. to know. <laughs> okay, and, and now then, what do you do? Uh -huh. I am going to pour it in, and I'm going to fill about three fourths of the way. I, I'm going to, I, there's, I think that's good. Yeah. Yeah, that looks yeah. beautiful. So now we're going to start with our crumble. This is the topping of the apple crumble. So we have flour, dried oats, brown sugar, cinnamon, mm. salt, and then this butter. You want to chill your butter before so you can um, cut it into small cubes. Yeah. So yeah. I've already added everything in. And then you can just mix it with your hands oh, with like your that. fingers. Yes. Just crumble that up. Uh, you have kids. This would be great for the kids. Yeah, this would be something good. we could do. We'll By the way, it does look foolproof. Yeah. I mean, I'm pretty it surprised is. that this is all we this is all we need. Okay, now what do you do, guys? You want us to be so, sort of like a sandy consistency, and these butter things pebbles. of butter pebbles yeah. are really good. Yes, yeah, they are. So we're just gonna add. Oh, this looks top. so good! I cannot wait to eat this. Unlike <laughs> a pie, this takes a lot less Thank work. You. Now, Unlike Jeffrey, a pie. Jeffrey, though, the, let's just get, settle one thing. Wouldn't you say that a crumble and no, a pie? No, no, do not wait. Do not, do not tilt the scales, Jeffrey. Is a crumble the same thing as a pie? I said, is a crumble related to a pie? <laughs> like brothers and sisters. You like know, I think it's its daughters. own. I think it. I think it has its own sort of strata because what this is is pretty much the same ingredients. You have flour and all that stuff. Thank you, you might have some more things. In, but this is much simpler. You don't have to roll it and toast it, and uh, you just pop it in the oven. Watch. They're going to hand this to me, and like in about four minutes, we've done it. Right? It's a pie that's takes it. More time. So four 350 minutes? degrees, one hour. Take it out. Oh. Let it cool a bit because it's got to stop bubbling and get all nice and perfectly set. Okay. Sort of like lasagna. Ooh. So look at that, see, how delicious see. that Gorgeous. is. So we're going to cut that and go in deep and try. Oh, girl. Because it is apple season and the big apple. Yeah. Oh, so now girls. tell me, do you Wait, add a little ice you gotta, cream? You got to add, add a little ice cream. Do to that, Madeline, Anna? Yes. yes. It's so uh, good. You could always do add anything you'd like to do. Yeah. Yeah. Is it morning, so good? You could add ice cream. Oh, so yeah. cool. cool. Oh, it I wish like we could have some. Yeah, this is <laughs> sad. <laughs> this is real sad, y'all. All right, well, you've inspired us. We'll be us. back soon. All right. Thank you, guys. Girls, you all are great. We wish you a long... We can't wait till you can come to our studio and, cook and with talk us. about yeah. your book and cook with us. And, Jeffrey, you can come, too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I am to be joined by not 
one master chef, but two oh, master yes. chefs oh, here heard. in the kitchen. First, it's celebrity chef Jeffrey Zakarian. He's the host of the new Food Network show, Big Restaurant Bed. And of course, Savannah, who has her own cooking show. <laughs> called don't eat that. No, you will get stop sick. It. <laughs> no, don't eat that unless you, you want, have Pepto. I want you to support me on my cooking don't journey. Don't eat like, that. Like oh, GZ does. Yeah, so unless would, a bathroom is nearby. Oh, stop anyway, it. Anyway, Jeffrey, we're so Hi. happy Thank you're you. here. Nice to be here. Are Thanks. you happy to be in, among the so midst happy. of a chef? I, I love the show, what you're doing, and it's really incredible because it's really hard to teach someone. Like without like getting in there, like hold I know, your... but the only way to learn is to actually do it. That's right. Do, do you think she could do? Um, could we cook this? Absolutely. You ready? We're gonna yeah, do I'm a ready. spring mushroom How do you... pea pasta. Okay, careful. so slice. be careful. With that. She's like, first pointing first a knife at me. Don't, well, that's don't gesticulate with okay. a knife. That's first thing. Okay, okay, slice. Slice. Okay, I'm gonna put some shallots in here with garlic. Okay, mm -hmm. it's a very simple pasta, and I'm making it real time. What do I have first? Pasta is down in the water and it's very salted. So okay. when you want to salt pasta, you want to, it, the water should taste what? like the ocean. Remember, very it's good. Okay. Like Thank you. Okay, water should shallots. taste. I'm going to move a little mushroom. closer. The to mushrooms man, are going in here. Okay. Can I okay. help you, Jeffrey? Okay. We'll put those in here. So our mushrooms, shallot, garlic, very simple. Okay. Let them soften. You don't have to be crazy. Just leave it there. Medium. How's my heat. slicing? Fantastic. Oh, oh, Savannah. <laughs> so you want to make sure that they're evenly sliced so they cook and they look like this. Look how oh, I would eat that alone. Okay, Maybe so we're going to add to this some white wine. Go. Mm. Oh. And a little I'm bit of with white wine. pasta water. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not all of it, just a little bit. And why a pasta water? Because pasta water has all the starch from the pasta. Mm. And guess what? It and helps. You know that silky? Yeah. That silky pasta you get at a restaurant, you don't know why is it so silky. It's yeah. not like that. And that's why. So Can we're going to reduce it. In? Not quite yet because we don't want those to go brown. So these are peas. You could do frozen peas or fresh peas. Okay. If fresh, you could blanch them for a second. But honestly, take them right out of the, right out of the freezer. freezer. It's not? fine. Yeah. Just put them in. Okay. We have our pasta right here, boiling salted water. Mm -hmm. This is the sauce. And people don't understand. So the pasta next to the sauce. And all we do is we take the tongs, we don't throw... Now, I, let me just guess, and, and I'm not a master chef, but this is al dente. Al dente, to the bite, to the bite. Mm. So it's about a minute away from being fully cooked, and we're going to put it in here and just finish it. Oh. How beautiful. In here, and that's how you fit every pasta that you have in a restaurant that you like. Is in the... This is how it's done. Yes, it must. So you're just going to give it a little toss. Yes. Give it, can you do a little toss? Yeah, Be some, okay, okay. You know how to do it. Oh, okay. Oh, that's beautiful. Oops. Okay. Sorry, oh y'all. It's all right. Sorry. sorry. Oh, no. Uh, sorry. I'm going to fix it. Watch this. See this? I'm not going to take it off the pasta. Just like this. One, two, three, four. I'm Maybe sorry. You need to cook then the comes the peas. <laughs> then comes... I didn't mean to make such a it's mess. It's okay. A little cheese. A little this. cheese. <laughs> and because it's a little dry <laughs> and we're missing some, yeah. we're going to add a little bit more Jeffrey. pasta water. Watch this. Just like this. See, All you right. even spill a little, and Just you're a minute. master chef. And then at the very end, a little. some chili. I love oh gosh, chili. Very so finely good. minced chili. And we're ready to go. We're going to add a little basil to it. All okay. right? And you're going to come over here and taste. Your oh. knife skills are excellent. Well, thank you so much. We're going to chiffonade. That's what that's called. And oh. there you have it. We are done. A oh, beautiful God. spring pasta. Be careful. Spring okay, pasta. you try to flip it. Let's see you flip it's it. Hard. And I want to see you're some really, air. What you're doing is you're, not, see you're really air. not flipping. You're really just... Folding, so yeah, you folding. just no, no. very small, very okay. small. Okay, why are you giving her tips? Okay, go flip. There you go, much better. <laughs> Excellent. Wow. Thank you. I right. learned so much. I'm we actually going to say that was great. Come on, I'm going to make it rain. Some okay. pecorino romano, and this. Yeah, would you like a bite? Mm. Yeah, I would. Here you go. Yum. Mm. That looks delicious. What kind of pasta do you use? Uh, fettuccine, mm. uh, it's yeah. a flat pasta, tagliatelle. Okay. Bon appetit. Do you Thank feel like you, you have so to much. make your pasta or no? You don't. Okay. Uh, you can make it, but you really don't have to oh, make okay. it. Possible. Okay, well, oh, don't eat it. You have to read this tag. For this recipe and more, go to today.com slash food. Mm. Back now, 8.50 with Today Food. And this morning, not one, but two easy weeknight recipes that you can make on a budget. We've got a classic ratatouille. And we also have a special technique for roasted chicken. Celebrity chef Jeffrey Zakarian here to show us how it's done. He, of course, is the... The host of the new Food Network show, Big Restaurant Bet, GZ, welcome back. Thank you so much. Nice to be back. Before we get into it, Chef, we, we, we've we got to weigh into this debate here. Uh-oh. Um, I don't know if you saw this tweet from Stephen King earlier. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, Stephen... The Stephen King? The Stephen <laughs> King. He is taking Renowned salmon. Renowned chef. Horrifying, GZ. Get ready. He's taking salmon. He's yeah. wrapping it in a paper towel and, and microwaving it for three minutes. What say you to that? Absolutely. What? What? Yes. Why not? 
It's a it, really gentle way of cooking Because it's salmon. a 1982 device? <laughs> no, it really works. I cook fish in the microwave all the time because you don't have to put any butter. It doesn't, you don't have to use I'm sorry, the is utensils. It I'm shocked. I know. No, it works. It really and it works. it doesn't smell? No, well, well, it might, but it's it might, fish. but it, yeah. it, it okay. is fish. <laughs> All right, well, Chef is apparently team yeah. Very good. All right. Vegetables, too. Asparagus is great. Spinach is great in the microwave. Yeah, what? fish is where I All think All the nutrients yeah. stay. There's no water wow. loss. You dump in water. All the nutrients go in the water. All right. There you go. Now let's get into All a right. more, more traditional way of food preparation. Okay. Here. So, spatchcock. spatchcock. We're going to make spatch. What does that mean? <laughs> it's a fancy name for a flattened chicken. Oh. Oh, we're going to do it. So, we take a regular chicken. I'm using gloves so it's more sanitary. I'm just going to go down the back. Yeah. And that's the, that's the back of the chicken. And you can go either way. You can use a knife, but I've decided to use oh, some yeah. kitchen shears. Yeah. Okay. And what I'm going to do. Just like this. Oh, wow. Very easy. That's it. This is safe for the stock of chicken okay. stock. We don't throw anything away. Right. And uh, then you just put it like this. Oh, and oh wow. You yeah. hear that? Wow. Hey, I know. I know it's like hard. I know. Right. Oh. I know it's hard. So, so we, what's the benefit of cooking chicken that way? <laughs> well, it cooks Speaking in. Speaking of a Stephen King horror. <laughs> <laughs> You're worried about salmon oh, in the microwave. I'm, I'm cracking chicken over here. Jeez. Okay, salt and pepper. Oh, mercy. Uh, great question. Really, really easy because what happens is you get half the time. So a normal chicken like this would take about uh, 45 to an hour. It's about a three and a half pound bird. Yeah. You want to season with authority. You really have to. And it takes half the time. So oh, for this wow. to get up to 155, 160 eternal will be about 30 minutes, 35 oh, wow. minutes. Now, very important, hot cast iron pan. Skin side down, okay? And let's go over here. You can see what we're doing. We have this going. Beautiful, now we're gonna turn it over. And you wanna help me with this? Be careful. That's right. Watch out. We get a jumper. <laughs> okay. And put some, put the lemon. I like to put the lemon skin, uh, flesh side right there. Just put it in whole. Yeah, and what okay. happens, it gets nice and caramelized. Mm -hmm. You have a beautiful caramelized lemon. Let's stuff, there's no rules. Okay. If you have thyme and rosemary, fine. Whatever if you, you don't. Get, just throw anything it in that's a hard herb, like, you know, savory or, or sage or bay leaves or stuff like this, I love this. And then you just, Cook it till 165, very gently, okay? What's the verdict over there? It's so it's incredible. It's so oh, so good, right? So how do, is, how, what's the relationship between like quality chicken and technique in which you cook chicken? The relationship. Oh, that is good. Like, is this a fancy chicken that no one no. at home can get? No, so you want to cook the chicken to 155, 160. If you can do that and use a digital thermometer, it's pretty hard to me mess, up mess up a bird, okay? That's good it might cook a little longer, a little less, but you, you pretty much, so pretty much, it's so juicy. Yeah, yeah, you can go in the oven or sit oh. here, but I put it in the oven. Well, let's ready? get down to this ratatouille. Let's cut it down like this, and there we go. Right. There you have it. Okay, ratatouille, one of my favorite movies, one of my favorite things this to do. Film. Okay, so basically, this is great with vegetables that are, aren't at their prime, they're a little over. Oh. And that's, I got this from my mom and from when I worked in France. They don't throw away anything. And if you have a you couple of. You mean they're not in season or you they're mean they're in season, gone but they might be a little or wilted or like, yeah, not yeah. stale, okay. right. but a little wilted, not their anyway. best. Starting. This is a great relation. This is a great vegetarian dish. So we're taking eggplant, pepper, zucchini, yep. onion. And what I like to do is heat them in a cast iron pan separately. Why separately? Because when you put them all together, it's mush. So what we oh. do is we season it. We don't season, we just put them in there and then we sear them off. Separately. So, so you cook each vegetable. Yeah, oh, but it, wow. in the same pan. Okay. And then we sear the, uh, the eggplant, the onion, the pepper. And here we have all of them right now, all together, mm -hmm. already seared. And we're going to just add our last ingredients. And this is such a fantastic dish. Onions. Add? Onions. Mm. Oh, yeah. Pepper. Peppers. Yeah. Oh. As they say in my town, Boston, garlic. <laughs> garlic. <laughs> garlic. Okay, stir that around. Thyme, bay leaf, tomatoes. Now, a lot of people would put stock or water in this. No, no. That? You're going to see it looks dry, yeah. but once you bake it, once you bake it, all the water in the vegetable, wow. which are mostly really vegetables good. are mostly water, comes out. And look what That's you have. So this gorgeous. How long do you bake it? A little this time. is about an hour. About an hour, hour, okay. hour and 10 minutes. But you want it to look kind of like it's Beautiful. a little over. Mm -hmm. And I like to serve this room temperature to warm. And when you grate this, you can put some Parmesan That's cheese on it. Mm. She, let, me, let me make it rain for you. Oh, uh, <laughs> rain. I love, Cheesy. It. I love it when they and rain. Maybe a little olive oil. Thank you, sir. It's Chef, a fantastic thank dish. Jeffrey, really thank delicious. You for the, wow. this recipe and more. Yeah. It's today.com slash food. Stick around. Jeffrey's going to be back in the fourth yes. hour with a healthy and hearty pasta dish. Pasta. Thumbs up. Healthy. Uh -oh. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Oh, thank you.
know the saying, mm. chicken soup is good for the soul, especially in the cold months. And someone who loves chicken soup so much he makes it for his family all the time is celebrity chef Jeffrey Zakarian. He's the co-host of the Food Network's The Kitchen. Right now he's in his kitchen. He's at home in Florida. Hey, Jeffrey. Hi, I'm sorry I'm in Florida. It's 50 here, but I, I know it's really cold there. You know, that's know. just We uh, didn't know you lived in Florida, and now we're kind of angry at your jealous. tan. Look at your tan. No, I, I'm tan all the time. You know that. Anyway, <laughs> everybody loves a good chicken soup, and what I'm doing here is I'm going to do a mashup, right? I'm doing a chicken noodle ramen mashup, mm. and the reason why I like it is you talk about healthy eating, New Year, really delicious, but also yummy. I mean, food has to be yummy. I don't know about you guys, but yes. if it's not yummy, I don't want it. But look at this. Look at all these gorgeous vegetables. Mm. That's right from the market. Beautiful. There's nothing fancy here. Carrots, parsnips, some onions, some leeks, some great herbs and ginger. And it's very simple. So let's start with our vegetables, okay? So we're going to make sure our vegetables are cut evenly. Why? Because they cook evenly. Really important. Oh, but all a soup the same size. Is that makes sense. All yes. the same size. A soup is so easy. Just follow these techniques and you're going to be very, very happy. And, and the addition to making the soup is you get leftover stock that you can freeze. Okay, we're gonna take our celery, our carrots, we're gonna just cut them on the bias like this, very simply, and it's very easy once they're lined up together to make sure they're, they're the, same the same size, really yeah. easy. So we've taken our leek and um, what you make sure you cut it open and you wash it because there is dirt in there mm -hmm. and just follow the same yeah. methodology. Just a nice, probably this is quarter inch, I'm just guessing quarter inch, but everything's gonna be ready at the same time. So it shouldn't take that long to cook a proper soup. The stock takes the most time. It's like cooking the chicken takes about like an hour. Now, parsnips. I love parsnips, guys, because they have a sweetness that is just uh -huh. yeah, remarkable. Crispy. So, hey, hey, Jeffrey, crispy and Jeffrey, yummy. Why, why leeks instead of like another kind of onion? Here's a tip. Leeks have less sulfur than onion, so your stock stays lighter. It doesn't darken. You know, sometimes it oh, yeah. turns really brown, and I use leeks. It's a little secret of a chef. Okay. All right. So, are you ready for the big ready. deal? Yes, let's, let's cook, cook a chicken. chicken. Yes, sir. Very easy. We have our veggies. We're going to go over by, by the, my beautiful wife is holding the camera. She's the camera person today. So, mm -hmm. we it's have good. a pot, a very big pot, and we're going to put it on high. And we're using a four-pound chicken just like this. Use a tong so you don't have to touch the chicken. And just put that right in there. All right? And then, another secret, guys, chicken wings. Oh, tons of gelatin and tons of meat. There's tons of meat on chicken wings. We're going to put those wait, in. Oh, wait, and then, okay, sorry. You we, had us until we, you said we, the word gelatin. For a second. What does gelatin. that mean? Gelatin. Gelatin is that stuff that umami you taste when you smell soup that your uh, mom's oh. cooking or your grandmother cooked. And the schmaltz is the chicken fat. So all that together okay. is loaded in those chicken wings. And then chicken word. stock. Now, you just cover this. Notice, no water, no salt, no pepper, nothing at all, just chicken stock. Mm. You could use water, but I like to get it up just a bit, just jab it a bit. And I put a touch of white wine vinegar or Ooh. wine. You don't have mm -hmm. to, just a little acid. Now, we're going to let that chicken go for about an hour. Once it comes out, we're going to put it on a rack, let it cool, and then we're going to take all this delicious yes, chicken off. peel it off. So, you take the bones out? Or you, yeah. I right. take the bones out, everything, okay. and then we have our beautiful stock. And remember those veggies we cut perfectly? Yes. I know you know how to do that now. Yeah. All right. We're just going to slide that slide in there. Away. And magic, a couple of peas. You take frozen peas. Oh. I think this is going to probably take 10 minutes. You have all the flavor there. The miso is really special. The miso is soybean paste. It gives a little saltiness. It's really, really delicious. Where's so the ramen? We the ramen. Ah, where's the ramen? It's coming. All right. So remember, we have our soup, our beautiful veg, uh, vegetables are in there. Mm -hmm. And like, can you get in there, Margaret, and take a look at that? How Pretty. gorgeous that looks. Margaret. Margaret. Oh. Yeah, good shot. Are no. you ready? Okay, yeah, we need the ready. ramen, though, because we came for the ramen. Yes. You came for the ramen. So we're going to take a big bowl. I like to serve this in giant bowls. I have our pre-cooked ramen. Oh. This is beautiful. Whole wheat ramen. I just oh, you put can that in buy the bottom. Whole, where do you buy whole wheat ramen? Anywhere? Ah, uh, there's tons of it. Tons of oh. it. You can use regular, but I like the whole wheat, right? Yeah, it's and better I'm gonna, for you. Now we're going to have some fun. Now we're doing the mashup part, right? Oh. We're going to pour this glorious, healthy, Ooh, gorgeous soup ramen. on top. Of that. Yum. Oh, ramen. That. Takes me back to my college yes. days. Yep. Right? And then some Sprinkle chicken. Now, I choose to top. put the chicken mm. on. Oh, the chicken Just like this. I don't put the chicken in the stock because I don't want it to get overcooked. And a lot of people store their chicken Neither in the we. stock. Yeah. And, yeah. and what happens, it gets overcooked. And now, the secret. Now we have fun. Now we have our scallions. It's uh -huh. going to be like we're making a froth. Press it up. Yes. We're going to put some 
some beautiful pea shoots, some scallions, some bamboo shoots. Have fun here. I'm using whatever I found at the uh, at the farmer's market uh -huh. uh, or at the grocery market. Some radishes. radishes. Ooh. Oh, ginger. Jeffrey, Jeffrey, this is thank this you. We Ginger, got a roll, Jeffrey. It looks so yummy. It really does. You did great. Thank you, Jeffrey. Bon appetit. Thank you, Thank you, Margaret. you Margaret. Tell your daughters hey. All right. All right, guys. For this recipe, Bye. head to today.com slash food. still thinking about what to make for lunch today, you're going to want to see what chef and author Jeffrey Sakarian's got. Uh-huh, and this dish is one and done. And even better, it'll make use of all those veggies that you bought that you didn't use that are just sitting in the refrigerator. Okay, hi, Jeffrey. Hi, good morning, how are you? Good morning. Okay, before we get to this delicious dish, yes. which I'm into, Yes. Our whole producing team, including our executive producer, Joanne, cannot stop staring at your Instagram, and evidently it's going viral. Hey. <laughs> what are I, you doing which here? Pro, which Instagram? <laughs> this, right here. You working out, putting us to shame. Oh, okay. What? Yeah, what? you know, I, I try to do that every Wednesday. I work out every day, but I try to do that every Wednesday. I did it as a joke first. People said, why don't you just post that? It'd be fun. And I did it. Now it's it's... You know, look what happens, right? Stuff you don't plan on, like the pandemic happens and yes. life changes. And so that was life changing, just like the pandemic. I mean, oh my God. Honestly, most of us just gained the COVID 19. So the fact that you Speak put. for yourself, 25 <laughs> years. <laughs> the fact that you put those abs to work is, is helpful because you're cooking up something really delicious today. And you we're are so kind. Yeah. We're ready to eat. We sure are. Okay, what are well, you cooking? This is, this couldn't be easier. This is a Manhattan corn chowder. So chowder's great, but you know, it is summer. This is a hot or cold dish. It's fantastic. It's gluten-free and you can make it dairy-free. You have a little butter. You can take the butter out. Olive oil is very simple. So yummy and so delicious. I like to call it a one pot wonder. Come over here. I'm going to show you. Oh, like very that. simple. Uh, I am just in a pot, any kind of pot. You don't have to have a fancy pot. I put carrots, onions, leeks, celery, a little chili pepper and garlic. Ooh, I'm yeah. sweating it. Now this is the base for any soup in the world gumbo chowder chicken noodle whatever you want then all i do to that very simple is i'm going to add some tomato paste some fresh thyme mm -hmm. you can use whatever herb you like some uh, a little bit of canned tomato that's pureed Ooh, yes. and then very simply stock now i like to use vegetable stock i, I find it very um sort of neutral in flavor yeah. but you can use water yes you can use water and during the pandemic i cook most things with water because i don't want to have to keep running out and getting stocked all right, so then you just add your potatoes wow. and 25 minutes until the potatoes are cooked and then add the corn at the very end, about five minutes, because you want that bite on the corn. And summer corn is coming, you can feel it, you can see it, yeah. it's not quite there, but I'm, you can use any corn. A great tip when you're using store-bought corn, make a soup, because it doesn't matter. The, it, the, is the it soup turns is the that, corn into magic. Is, 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 that that is that frozen? frozen? Is that frozen corn or where'd you get no, that corn? No, that's just corn I took out of a cob. I bought it at the supermarket, oh completely peeled and shucked and wrapped and it was it's fine so i'm gonna let this cook for about 35 40 minutes total jeffrey and i have a question for this. you look at this i like my chowders oh, a little creamier what would i add to it that would give me that that like you know that white yeah. creamy looking moment 
Absolutely. So this is a Manhattan chowder. We've substituted uh, cream with tomato. Mm. So you simply take out the tomato, put the cream in it, and boom, and you're, happier. you're at that's your, you're at your happy he's, place. He's yeah, from that's the my South, thing. so he wants a little cream, you know? <laughs> no problem. I love cream, too. But, you know, this is summer's coming, and, you know, we'll, we want our abs to look, you know, kind of okay, right? <laughs> oh, for sure. And you know what I love about this? It seems like one of those recipes that you can freeze and save yes. for later. Yes. Absolutely. And plus, I serve this with my fried chickpea salad, some toasted garlic bread. Yeah. It's a meal. It's a soup meal. And people kind of forget about real hearty soups mm. can be still healthy. Gluten free, dairy free. If you want, just take the butter out and you have like everything in here and with a salad. You have a perfect composed meal. And by the way, it's so easy to cook for company, easy to cook for kids, easy to cook for anybody, anybody. Um, so, Jeffrey, is there anything in the kitchen that you cannot live without? Anything in the kitchen I can't yes, live without. Tell probably, us. Uh, probably. <laughs> that's a really that tough marble. question. Come on, anything. Uh, yeah, he, he probably, thinks your actual kitchen looks good. Yes. Well, at the kitchen is something that's really fundamental. You need fundamental good equipment. So I always tell people buy less, spend more, and you'll spend the same as you get all those other gadgets. So buy the mm. best, just don't buy a lot. So definitely like cast iron, anything at Le Creuset, anything Dutch oven ish works. I love to have very, very good pans, but I don't have a ton of stuff because where are you going to put it all? Yeah. So I always say, spend more, buy less, and you'll spend the same. I all think right. that's such a good idea because also yep. there's half the stuff stays in the back of the cabinet and you never even use it. <laughs> it's so right? true. Absolutely. It's so Absolutely. true. All Absolutely. Right. Well, Jeffrey, happy summer. Sending you so much love. Can't wait to try that, Jeffrey. Okay, to get this thank recipe. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jeffrey. Tell your girls hi. Cheers. To get this recipe, head to today.com slash food. Our guide this morning, the one and only Padma Lakshmi. Hi, everybody. Uh, Padma, of course, host on Bravo's Top Chef. Tonight is that hit show's 19th season finale. Chef's getting one last chance to compete for the grand prize. Padma, you've been there from the very beginning with the exception of that first season. Yes, that's right. Yeah, and it's been a really long, long, great ride. Yeah. I never thought that it would last this long, but I mean, you know, we're doing well. The show is better than ever, and yeah. the critics still like it, so I'm very lucky. And not to give away too much, but the scuttlebutt is next season, you guys are going to do something you've never done before. Is that right? Yes, we're going to go international for the whole season. We have been international for finales. Okay. Uh, we've but the whole to season Singapore and Macau and everywhere else, but the whole season is outside America. Don't ask me where yet. Okay. All right. <laughs> let's let's cook. Let's let's eat. What are we making this morning? Uh, we are making the healthiest dish possible. So I'm going to make a sauce, and it's a Balinese baked fish. I first had this dish when I was in Bali okay. over 20 years ago, and it's so simple. And the reason I like it is because it's very low effort. Okay. You'll see. We love that. It's very healthy. It's very high protein, and it's easy to make. Okay. You know, people always ask me how I stay lean yes. as, you know when I do all this eating on Top Chef it's not easy but it's eating like this okay. that helps after I finish so we're gonna start with onions in the blender and to the onions we're gonna add garlic ginger okay. a little bit of tamarind paste now tamarind, tamarind paste. paste is wonderful you can get it at any good supermarket it'll last in your pantry it's gonna add like a, a test tart and sweet tang to it. Okay. Also, I'm adding toasted sesame oil right. and cumin powder. Cumin powder. And a little salt to taste. That is really it. And about a, two or three tablespoons of water. Okay. Go ahead. We'll mix that up. You're going to mix that up. I'm not going to do it because of sure. the noise. But this is this what, what it looks, looks like. like. And what kind of fish are we using here? We're using red snapper, but honestly, you could use cod, you could use flounder. Any white fish. Any white fish. This is so easy. And, and they're already digging in over there. What's what's the verdict? How taste? is it? It's yummy. Got a lot of umami to it. Oh, you love the umami. And love then the umami. I'm, all I'm doing is pouring this. That's and it. this is going to go into an oven at 350 degrees for 20 or 25 minutes. And that's all. Foil? And then we'll, no foil. Foil. Okay. Foil. So you cook it covered. Cook it covered. Right. And then when it's done, I know it doesn't look very appetizing, but it's so delicious. All you're going to do is take fresh mint, uh -huh. oh, mint. And, and garnish, garnish. Okay. and a little bit of lemon juice. And, and this has literally 
like less than 250 calories a wow. serving. Wow. Yeah. And you're going to pair it with protein. bok choy? I am. I so. find cooking bok choy intimidating. Why? I, I don't know. It's probably because <laughs> I'm not a very good cook. It's so good. So you want to get bok choy and you just want to quarter it like this. Depending on the size, you can cut it smaller. Okay. And all we're going to do is dump this bok choy and That's blanch it, it literally for 90 seconds. And why okay? do you blanch it? So that it cooks evenly and you don't get weird spots when you're sauteing it. Okay. But you don't want to cook it for that long. Like this is going to cook for literally 90 seconds, two minutes. And then you take it out and you you're immersing it out. the coal. You don't even have to. Oh. I mean, look, if it's a weeknight and the kids are hungry and you okay. got to go, don't worry about emergency. So you're not in a restaurant. It's, it's got fine. a little kick. So Yummy. this is what it looks like when it's blanched about 90 seconds. I have butter melting here. This is so easy as well. And again, all I'm doing is adding some Asian ingredients to it, which is the toasted sesame oil. What? See a theme emerging. Soy sauce. Well, it's going to go with that fish, right? Onions. Garlic. No onions, sorry. That was garlic. garlic. That was ginger and a little bit of red chili. There's your bite. It's There's really your bite. Good. Uh, it's yeah. Yummy. yeah, and then you just saute this up. And I mean, I literally made it in real time. I made this whole meal in real time, except for the 20 minutes that the fish took. Right. That's yeah. how easy it is. That's and true, really good. Yeah. I love it. I like the flavors. Mm -hmm. yeah. Never yeah. thought yeah. I liked to do this joy. recipe. Yeah. Yeah. You don't cook a wow. lot. She has a cooking you, show. Savannah, I okay, have confidence that I can do this. Mm -hmm. So good. I could eat a whole plate of that box. Oh, that is yeah. Yeah. really good. Really good. Thank really good. you. Thank Mama, congratulations, you. by the way. Yes. Thank you so Folks much. Folks who tune in tonight for the finale, what can they expect? Yes, they can expect a lot. We have three contestants who all have different styles of cooking. And we're in Tucson, which is a UNESCO food heritage site. Tucson? So I'm very excited. Tucson? Yes! Yeah. That's Tucson. Nice people. I loved it. That's my home town. It was Yay, so nice. Pablo yeah. Lakshmi, thank you so much as always. Thank Congratulations. You. Today, food summer does not have to be all burgers and hot dogs, you know, and it can still be delicious. If you are looking to bring more veggies into the rotation, you're in luck all the way from the Butcher's Club at Palm Beach's PGA National Resort. We've got Top Chef Season 13 winner, Jeremy Ford with some veggie recipes to spice up the dinner. Hi, good yes, morning. Hi, I'm I such a huge fan. I'm a yes. fan. <laughs> all right, veggies. Now, look, I'm a little skeptical because I'm a carnivore, but this all looks delicious. But all this goes with carnivore stuff. Okay, so you're great. Good. So show um, me what you yeah, got. Yeah, this is one of my favorite dishes from the Butcher's Club at PGA. And we basically take these beautiful sweet Vidalia onions. Yes. Um, and we put them in a pot, okay. skin on. Oh, skin and on. And we have a little bit of milk, water in there. Mm -hmm. uh, some aromatics such as thyme, a little rosemary, some black peppercorn. You just put it in sprigs and Whee! all. I love that. Uh, yeah. How easy can that be? I mean, I'm into the ease of that. <laughs> okay. And the reason we do this is because we're, we're basically poaching the inside of the onion mm -hmm. slowly. So we'll bring this up to a boil and let it cook for like five or six minutes. Okay. And then we'll just check it by, you know, pulling it out and doing a little squeeze. And what do you want it to be kind of soft? Just a little softer than a, a raw onion. Okay, so like great. five to seven minutes. All right, we got our tasters over there. Wow. So we'll get the oh verdict. Oh, we already got an OMG. This is wow. it's so good. Okay, yes. so now what happens? So basically now we take off the root end mm -hmm. um, without 
taking off my finger. Yeah, right? my, that's always tricky. <laughs> you need those. And then we just pull the center out. So it's really, really oh, easy wow. once it's soft Yum. to pull this out, right? Oh, Take off the outside. Because we're going to stop. There what? we go. I know, right? So we'll pull all these layers off and okay. leave the outer two. Wow. And if you want to make it look cool, you leave the little top yeah, on. Yeah, that's a little hat. Okay, and then we're going to stuff it with this yes. looks like potato salad. Yes, of some yes. Sort. So, so in here is a little bit of horseradish, mm. some heavy cream, that's potatoes, good. you know, a light lunch. Yeah, I know. My goodness. <laughs> you said we didn't say it was a low fat. We just right. said it was vegetarian. We just said it was going to be easy and fun. Mm -hmm. So Yum. we stuff our gratin in here. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's a like gratin. Yeah, gratin. Oh my gosh. <laughs> gratin, as we would say hozy. Exactly. Yeah. Hozy. I actually learned this from my mentor, <laughs> Dean Max, taught me this years and years ago. It's so. a beautiful recipe. I, okay, yeah, then what, now what do we do? So now um, that that's stuffed in there, are you trying to stuff some? Well, I feel like this guy needs you to be get stuffed, okay, doesn't he? I don't right. want to waste my time here. Okay. okay. I mean, I don't want you to oh, you know, so waste you the onion. Not my time. I meant to say I don't want to waste this beautiful onion. I have all the time in the world. Oh, I <laughs> okay. love it. All right, let's do it. So then what, we roast it? So then we just pop this thing in the oven, let it get oh all crispy goodness. and delicious oh like that. Is and it then, so yummy, you guys? Oh, this is so, so yummy. Good. Fun, right? Like there's Nuts. gratin, but you never had gratin in oh, onion. Oh, horseradish. Yeah. Perfect. Wow. Yeah, OK. Um, cool. And then we bake that off and we roast it. So OK. So we can move on. And then you can serve it with this cream spinach. So how do we make that? Yes, the cream spinach is my so claim good. to fame. Uh, at the Butcher's Club in PGA, mm. this is our top selling dish. Oh, okay, wow. Everyone loves this dish. It's amazing. Even at Sovereign Seed in my other restaurant in uh, mm. South Beach, we run this dish. Okay. So everyone's had cream spinach, right? So simple, shallots, Usually garlic. Usually from a box, but... to be honest. <laughs> no! Yes. I will come to your house and cook it okay, for you okay. so you never do that. <laughs> oh, I'm going to learn from you okay. right now. Okay, okay. good, good, So good. what are we sautéing there? So that's shallots, garlic, and onion. All right. Wow. Right, so you'll get that nice uh, base, oh which is kind of like the base for most cream spinaches, mm -hmm. right? We're adding a little flour. We're adding a little is flour. Is this a roux? This is a roux. <laughs> okay, you're hired. Second French word, <laughs> roux and gratin. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and then we cook that out for like five minutes. Now it looks sure kind of dry and crumbly. Is that it's all dry right? and crumbly We're until we go. Ta da! Mm. We add the heavy cream and let mm. that cook for a little while. Okay. What makes ours so cool though, yes. right? So typically you have your spinach and your cream, okay. oh which is this cooked down. Yes, and you already cooked your spinach. We already cooked our spinach in boiling water, shocked it in ice water so we keep that beautiful green color. But mm -hmm. what makes ours funky and cool funky. is tarragon, basil, and dill herb. Ah. So it gives you this you awesome. Awesome. She, she knows. I mean, <laughs> we're about to be finished over here. Oh. oh my gosh. But wait a minute, you take these herbs and you just put them in the blender of the food processor? Yes, and then also ice it. So yeah, so I forgot okay. to tell you, you gotta ice it before you oh blend it, that way it doesn't continue to turn brown. Oh, Because okay. you want nice bright green spinach like this, Okay, right? we're gonna put all these specifics. You're gonna share this recipe. It's of worth course. It. Okay, the secret has been revealed. Mm. So the it has that herbie flavor. Guys, have a kit? Does it's that make sense? How do you get it so it's not too soupy? It's got perfect yeah. texture. The right amount of flour into your heavy cream mix. Mm -hmm. That's what's gonna give you the perfect consistency. Okay. So I always like a little bit more just in case so it doesn't get too runny, okay. right? This is amazing. I'm glad right, so you're enjoying. You're cooking it up, and then here's a dumb question. Do you then put it in the oven after this step? Yes, okay. if you want to. You could serve it hot out of this pot right here okay. onto a dish, but I like I like these little casserole dishes to get it really hot. Yeah, you know? hot, and then does it like brown off on the top or something? Could you put a little cheese on top? You could put a little, hey, you know what? Let's put some cheese mm -hmm. on top. Oh my gosh. Let's go. Yeah. Listen. And then you bake it and off. Bake it off a little bit. Bake it off. Oh. Get it, yeah, maybe even put the broiler on. Yeah, Why not? the broiler. Yes. Now we're talking. So, Guys, so what's happening? Used. Clean plate club? I was just about happy. to say. No. It's like, <laughs> like, you don't yeah. even miss the meat. Yeah, no. I was about to ask you, does anyone it, it, miss no. the meat? No. That onion is insane. Yeah. I've never had anything like it. Yeah. Okay. It's such a fun reiteration of our classic favorite two things, right? Gratin, creamy spinach, but just done a little differently, right? Yeah. Wow. Phenomenal. Oh, Say gratin out. again. Gratin. Gratin. <laughs> gratin. Mm. <laughs> Gracias for yes. the gratin, yeah. Chef Jeremy. Thank you so much. If you want to find these recipes and a lot more, go to today.com slash food.
And we are back with today's food. This morning's guest, Kwame Onwachi, a James Beard Award winner. You may have seen him as both a contestant and recurring judge on Top Chef. He's also, by the way, opened five restaurants all before turning 30. And now he's out with a follow-up to his acclaimed memoir. It actually is his first cookbook. It's fantastic. It's called My America, Recipes from a Young Black Chef. Kwame, so good to see you. Man, I'm, I'm so curious about how you, in this book, have taken your whole history, like from Nigeria to mm -hmm. the Caribbean to Louisiana to the Bronx, and how have this book has been just basically your lifeline. For sure. You know, it's my version of what... I found American cuisine as a kid. When you're a kid, you're not asking like, what ethnicity is this when you're eating food? You right. know, I know I'm in America and I'm eating something, so that was American food to me. So it shows a lexicon of how diverse American What do you remember is. about being in little Jamaica in the Bronx eating food that you're about to make for us today? Jerk chicken. I remember sitting on the side of the road with my father, getting jerk chicken out of a barrel um, and getting sauce all over my face. What is jerk sauce? What is jerk? So uh, jerk sauce, you know, it started as an act of like preservation, but it's a, it's a sauce that has so many different layers of flavor. Um, it, it starts with a marinade, yeah. and you marinate this, this chicken or pork or, or vegetables in this sauce, and then it's smoked and let's get Let's get to it. So the, the jerk sauce, I always recommend making this from scratch. So I have a pepper sauce here. It's mm -hmm. pretty much a scotch bonnet puree. Um, we have thyme. We have... Um, a little bit of tamarind, we have scallion, ginger, garlic, and soy sauce, and then allspice, cinnamon, and bay leaf and clove. We're gonna put that in the blender, act yep. like this blender's yep. going. No need to do that. <laughs> well, then the, the sauce comes out like this. So I like Is it to in make, like the barbecue sauce family? Is um, it? No, but you can make a barbecue sauce, which we're gonna do now. Okay. So we have ginger and garlic and onion sweating. You know, you add some ketchup to this, you add some brown sugar and then you add your jerk paste, and then you let this simmer for about 30 minutes until it gets nice, deep, and dark like this. I was saying when I went to uh, spring break on MTV, we flew into Montego Bay, and there was, the weather was so bad, I had to drive to Negril, and uh, we stopped on the street along yeah. the way, and I had my first jerk chicken. It's like a culinary thing I'll never forget. Your first real jerk chicken, Is it a right? street food? Is yeah, it's actually, it's actually a street food. Um, there's a lot of history in it, and that's the beautiful thing about My America. It gets into the history of the dishes and why they stood the test of time. Perfect. So you got your jerk barbecue. You can blend it if you want um, to make it smooth. I like mine a little bit chunky. The difference between my jerk chicken recipe is I like to brine the chicken. Yep. I like to infuse the flavor deep into it. So like I an overnight brine sort of thing? Overnight brine. Uh, you have your flavors of your jerk uh, paste in the brine mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And then you'll marinate it. Throw it on the grill. I love it. We're in the studio. You like to outside cook this, though. Yeah, because you got to add some smoke to it, you know. What kind and of wood chips do you like? I like to use pimento wood. The wow, wood never comes, heard of that. that. That, you know, grows the allspice berries, right. so you accentuate those flavors. Let's see our little chefs over there. What do you think of the jerk chicken? Our plates are almost empty. Are you yeah. serious? I don't yeah. you go. Come on. We, 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 we got oh my plenty. God. Oh, my right, gosh. We need more. You know what's interesting? A lot of times jerk chicken, it's just, there's, it's too wet. There's too much jerk sauce. Yours is perfect mm. because it's just a little bit, mm. and it gives you that hit. You know? well, so good. It, when you do it properly, like it's such a refined dish. You know? What is doing it properly? What are the cooking tips on the chicken? How does it differ from gotta, chicken? You gotta smoke it. You know, you gotta cook it in the grill. You gotta let it marinate. You gotta make your jerk seasoning from from scratch, mm -hmm. and that's how you build those layers of flavor. Mm -hmm. Is this what yeah, you're going to make it? You got, but we have to plug the family reunion because it's so Yeah, cool. the family Just reunion. say what it is, everybody. So the family reunion is this, uh, you know, four-day food festival at the Salamander Resort and Spa. We get some of the best chefs together in the Ooh. country and food professionals mm. and, and entertainers as well. So um, it's it's really exciting. Tickets drop today, everybody. Okay. Of course they I want to see all of you oh at the God. family reunion. <laughs> oh, be good. What is the side dish, by the way? The side dish is sautéed uh, cabbage and carrots. Oh my God! How's that, guys? Good. I mean, are you kidding me? Yeah. Amazing. You know what we need? We need rum punch. <laughs> a little rum oh, punch. I got well, <laughs> well, congratulations on everything, man. Thank Looking you. forward to Thank the you. family reunion. The book is beautiful, too. Yeah. So much. Uh, great writing, great recipes, and this looks delicious. So there's a good lesson on jerk chicken. Kwame, thank you. That recipe, Yum. by the way, mm -hmm. is on our website, today.com slash food. And for the cookbook, check out today.com slash shop. It is awesome. Hello. Dawn Burrell made a name for herself competing in the long jump at the Sydney Olympics. Look at her. Back in awesome. 2000. <laughs> the next year, she won gold at the Indoor World Championships before she tore her ACL and decided to turn to another path which was cooking. Well, yes, as a I... chef, Dawn's been nominated for a James Beard Award, wow. a finalist in season 18 of Top Chef, and set to yes. open her restaurant late August. Yay.
in Houston <laughs> later on this year. But first, she's here to show us how to eat like an Olympian. Hi, Don. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I mean, I guess you're just a star at everything you try. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've been told to do the best that I can in every endeavor. So nice. Oh. Try to do okay, just yeah. like you do. We are not Olympians at anything except for eating. <laughs> eating yeah. We actually excel at that yes, sport. Yes, we do. Awesome. So what? We want to start the day with breakfast. Right. You say there's three things we have to have every single day. Um, so I like to say that you should have some nuts for, for really rich proteins mm -hmm. um, and nice proteins and good fats, okay. you know, for your body. Mm -hmm. um, raw fruit and um, and some grains that are also rich so um, and will this? help you. This is a chocolate granola. Ooh. Chocolate um, granola. Yeah, and so this is granola? sort of fun on mm, on sure. vanilla, yogurt, mm -hmm. or, you know, in, you know, on top of a, maybe oh, like wow. a little mm. chia seed bowl mm. or something like that. That's great. Beautiful, mm -hmm. yeah. And then this is a power smoothie. Delicious. This mm. power smoothie is filled with protein, antioxidants, and good fuel for your workout in the morning. Okay. okay. Um, and it's a good grab and go, like breakfast, uh, the, the, you know, that you can take to the track mm, with you or too. you run with little you banana. whatever. Yeah, yeah, some bananas blueberry. in there, dates, uh, blueberries, and, um, and almonds. Love and it. Almonds. It's delicious. That's yeah, when you good. use the protein. And then mm -hmm. avocado. You say start your day with some good fat. The, exactly. So if you are a savory breakfast person, um, this is a way to go as well because you have some nice protein from the, this is a chili paste with um, oh, almonds yum. in it. Yum. And so, Al swears by yeah. this. Is this that, the paste that's you love? That's the Trader Joe red yum. chili. Yeah, yeah, pie. yeah. And then you add a little bit of um, almonds in there and then yum. you have oh, some wow. a protein packed uh, breakfast for, for yourself mm. with, oh, a, with some nice fat. Have a little avocado yeah, toast. have a little avocado toast. toast. Now, once okay, we move to lunch, uh -huh. one of the things we, we never had when we were in Tokyo were some greens. Oh, I haven't, had a, I haven't eaten anything green in three weeks. <laughs> help uh, us out here. Well, well I'm going to help you out with that yes. because we all need them, right? Um, so here we have um, a vitamin-rich salad um, with um, great antioxidant qualities also because it's a turmeric and vinegar dressing. Mm, I mean, it's a ginger dressing. Mm. And um, what you'll do is so, you'll... I'm going to top this off yeah. a little bit. That looks beautiful. Um, um, there, this is a versatile dressing. You can use it on chicken or fish. You and know, you it has seeds on your salad too. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think it's interesting. Seeds are also like rich, rich oh, fats, wow. good fats for the body, Yum. and um, and also some fiber. Some yeah. fiber that's, that's great delicious. for uh, That looks digestion. so good. Yeah. Yeah. Let you do thank this you, one. thank you. Yummy. Sorry. And for um, dinner, you swear yeah. by this chutney. This is, um, yeah, this is a go-to chutney. It is Trinidadian um, as far as culture is concerned, but you can also puree it and make it into a glaze that is functional for, like, roasts and things like that. What we did here is we just used it um, as a chutney or a relish on this chicken. It's called cuchilla. Oh, wow. It's made, it's a little bit spicy. It's made with mangoes um, and ginger. This amchar, um, amchar masala, which is a um, garlic very lovely peppers. spices, oh, this garlic peppers delicious. and everything like that. Dawn, thank you so much. Oh, my thank pleasure. You. Thank you. You can find the recipes at today.com slash food, and she's back on the third hour uh, to tell us how to turn an athlete's cheat meal into a breakfast of champions. Oh, by All the right, way, right. speaking oh. of champions, yes. our champion weather person, Dylan Dreyer. A uh, little birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Uh, I will, uh, we have a special uh, bubbly drink. Oh, yes. Yeah. You get cider. So. Thank you. Thank you for the cider. You're going to drink in. while you have apple cider? Yes. yes. I ring in 40. Wow. You're only 40? The big 40? That's it? Wow. <laughs> I was Hanode wanted when to I say happy birthday, morning, too. But... <laughs> How old are you, Hanode? Are you 21? No, you better not. No, no. <laughs> I can't drink. Hanode's just a baby. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Well, happy birthday, Dylan. Happy birthday, Dylan. Happy birthday, Dylan. Happy birthday. We love you. So much. Wow. You guys yeah. are so sweet. Cheers. Cheers, Dilly Dilly. We love you. Yeah, like like they need a, a reason to drink. <laughs> I know.
are back with Today Food, and it is inspired by a trip to London, so we thought Nicholas Holt would like to <laughs> stick around. Plus, he said he's never had a popover. So we got Gail Simmons, our <laughs> culinary a, expert. Not as you know it as a That's popover. That's right. right. Food writer, permanent chef, judge on Top Chef, now in its 20th season, 16 former competitors from all mm. around the world head to London, facing off for the ultimate world all-stars title. Gail joining us now to make a traditional Sunday roast using lamb. Gail, good yes, morning. that's right. Good, good morning. morning. Good to see you guys. That's good right. Morning. So London. So London. Top Chef, this is the first time in 20 seasons that we did our entire season overseas. We lived mm -hmm. in London for two months shooting over the summer and fall. Must have been wonderful. Mm -hmm. It was wonderful. Okay. <laughs> and most of all, I have to admit, like, I, I love British food. I think it gets a bad rap. But first of all, London is an incredibly global city. <laughs> yes. But I really Nicholas love Sunday <laughs> roast. What was the Sunday roast is a beautiful tradition, I Isn't think. Isn't it? And I'm Sun very excited about yes, this. Yes, yeah. and it really goes well with Easter, obviously, mm -hmm. coming up, or Passover, right. or whatever you may be celebrating right now. Um, this time of year, spring. So I decided usually it's done with a big beef roast. Right. But I'm making a leg of lamb. Okay, okay. so this is a boneless butterfly boneless leg Boneless and butterfly. Can you ask Thank your you. butcher oh. to get this? You like absolutely this. can. Yep. It's very standard. Okay. And I'm going to start with making the marinade for uh -huh. it. So you're um, doing mint, which usually people uh, you know, pair with lamb. Exactly. Mm. It goes so well. I'm using lots of fresh mint. I'm going to throw it in a bowl with lemon juice. And, okay. Ali, you're going to help me out okay. here. So in the bowl, I'm going to dump. You can dump in lemon zest, okay. garlic, and a little Aleppo pepper. You can use just chili flakes mm -hmm. if you have. Let's season it up. Is that spicy? Mm. They, they are spicy, but Aleppo has a beautiful, mellow chili okay. flavor. And then, Al, if you want to whisk, okay, I'm going to pour in some olive, olive oil. oil. Yeah, okay. I got salt. This is absolutely delicious. Yeah, oh, good. I'm glad you like, dig in. Like, got to yeah. eat it when it's hot, especially Thank the you. popover, which, Nick, you will know as Yorkshire pudding. Well, is it is it the same, essentially? As exactly what? the same. Okay. They just cook them in these crazy tins that we'll get to in a minute instead of in one big dish. Okay. Oh, okay. So, so you've got your, your marinade. So I've got my marinade. Now, pour it over my leg lamb, but not all of it. Save a little bit of it, which will act as the extra sauce later. That's okay. gorgeous. All Thank right. you very much. You've done this before, Once sir. or twice. And how long do you let it sit in the marinade? At least four hours. Hours, you can put it in the fridge. You can leave it overnight okay. and cook it the next day if mm -hmm. you want. You're going to toss it around and make sure that it's nice and coated. Okay. Leave it, cover it, and then you're going to take it out, pat it dry, and throw it right on a very she, hot oh, grill. Heavy. Gail, should, you let, wow. should you let the, the meat get to like room temperature before you throw yes, it on? Yes, you want to take it out at least 45 minutes, and actually you want to season it because there's no salt in that marinade. Uh -huh. But we'll do that as we go. Right. Um, Season with salt and okay. pepper. Mm -hmm. You want to pat it dry after it's after it's come to room temperature, and then you're gonna let it. Grill. I've never cooked lamb. Do you want a little redness like inside, or do yeah. you? A you little, have to but it I find, and this is personal, that unlike steak, that I like really medium, mm -hmm. rare, rare, like totally pink inside. Lamb can be a little tougher, a little chewier, so I like to cook it slightly more medium right. than okay. medium rare. So now we're going to make, make my popovers. Pop exactly. Over, which so is important. In one bowl, I have flour and oh. salt. In mm -hmm. the other bowl, I have four eggs. I'm going to whisk with, I like to add a little maple syrup. I'm oh. traditional, but I'm Canadian. This is uh. what I was excited about because I took a bite and I, I love Yorkshire pudding, but this has got a nice sweetness to That's it. That's right, a little crust. bit of sweetness. I like this Some addition. melted butter. Mm -hmm. Nicholas cooks, so he's taking notes. I am. I this love is, that. I love that. I've ever had. I, I feel it's very, um, oh. it's serendipitous that we yes. have a Brit to eat my uh, my Thank Sunday roast. Usually you make yeah. it with beef fat, but this is a, a yes. wonderful. Yes, I'm using melted butter here. And then I'm just going to put my dry ingredients whisked in it's like a very moist this pancake. Is like, that's yeah. exactly it but like when they pancake. come out of the oven they're actually oh huge gosh. as you saw earlier um they and they deflate a bit but they're so much tell fun. them about the shrinkage jerry <laughs> <laughs> like a precisely pearl. all right so i mix that all up put it in a pouring tin now here's the key to yorkshire pudding okay. the key to popovers is you want to preheat this pan this is a fancy popover pan you don't mm. need it you can use a muffin tin okay but you can see that there's already sizzling melted butter mm. at the bottom because i preheated it take it out of the oven and immediately while it's still hot oh. pour in three quarters of the way because you don't want to pop over too batter much that's over. right because so they get huge over. yeah <laughs> and that's that is the name um so you pour it in and then you put these in the oven about 15 to 20 minutes at 425. This and they delicious. come out so puffed up and, and serve huge. Immediately. Serve immediately. I mean, already they amazing. have. They I mean, deflate. But yeah. they are but they chewy so and I'm delicious. And they go with the lamb. <laughs> are you happy, I'm, Nicholas? I'm very happy. I'm glad, glad you stayed. And you. then you have the extra. Much better than the crickets. Oh, yeah. that's right. Yes. sauce. Mm, mm, this mm. is. How's my Sunday right. roast? Delicious. It's incredible. Oh. Is this the best interview you've ever had? <laughs> it, it certainly is. I'm very happy. It's taking the bad taste of the crickets out of my mouth as well.
<laughs> Nicholas we came to play. I like that. All right, Gail, thank you so much. Nicholas, thank you so much. And thank for you. these recipes, head to today.com slash food. This morning, Chef Elena Besser, she is going to make something awesome as we get back to the routine looking for those easy and affordable weeknight dinner ideas. And to cook along with us, just scan that QR code. You can order the ingredients with one click, add them to your cart, and schedule pickup or delivery. Elena, good morning. Good morning, my sous chef. How are is, you today? I am well, thank you. Good. You're putting me right in my place. Absolutely. I love it. Are you ready to get to chow? I, I like a woman who's ready to go. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Let me know how to do How did you pick this as an easy meal? Okay. Okay, so zucchini is in season right now, yeah. therefore it's going to taste so much more delicious than it otherwise would, and it's going to be more affordable because we have a lot of zucchini available. So I figured, okay. let's take zucchini and let's turn it into a luscious, creamy sauce that doesn't have any added now, I said to you jokingly backstage, I said, why, did you, why do you cut the zucchini in this particular size? Why are they so small? And you actually had a great answer for that. There's a reason for it. Yes, there is a reason for it. So the reason why is because the smaller you cut the zucchini, the faster it's going to cook. And listen, we're trying to get food on the table as quickly as we right. can. We're busy people, so we want to make sure that we cut it into smaller pieces. These are about a quarter of an inch thick. We're going to add those diced pieces to a sheet tray, half of them, mm -hmm. and then we're going to take the other half and put them into a bowl. So these just get a nice drip of olive oil and mm -hmm. we're gonna hit them with a little bit of salt to awaken that flavor yep. the higher you go when you season the more surface area oh that's the a thing coverage you get. Right. highly recommend so that, yes, yeah sprinkle, make it rain. and then the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna take some garlic cloves and we're quartering them so here's the thing you could smash them if you want but I know a lot of people get intimidated by that action so I figured let's just quarter, quarter them put them right into our bowl, and then we're going to add it with some sauteed onions. And this is going to go at about a medium high heat mm -hmm. uh, until that zucchini is nice and softened. You're gonna wanna give it a cover so you get that How caramelization from the bottom. How long is that roughly, like 10 bottom. minutes? Yeah, about 10 minutes. Yeah. You get the caramelization from the bottom, but at the same time, it's softening the zucchini, and we are left I like where this is headed. This I can do everything you've done mixture. so far. It's not That's out of my really reach. Yeah. Okay, and another thing that maybe also isn't out of your reach for me personally white wine. as well, white wine my yep. friend. So to add even more depth of flavor and to pick up any of those brown bits that we get on the bottom, um, also known as the fond, we are going to continue cooking that. It's going to infuse with flavor and we want to cook it at that medium high heat until it reduces down. It's delicious Is this the sauce? Are you making the sauce? Or is this, this is just the like, sauce okay. that we're making it. while those are roasting How's the in the sauce oven. Taste? This is amazing. It's like, like it. creamy. It does. Doesn't it? No cream. cream. There's no, cream. no cream, cream at all. It is wow. so creamy and silky. So the and reason why after you cook it, you blend it? After you cook it, you blend it. And Al, you make a great point. The reason why we're getting that nice brightness is because once we have transferred that reduced uh, situation that we got over here to a blender, we're adding in the zest of a lemon. That gives us our brightness. Mm -hmm. And then we are also adding in some fresh basil. Mm -hmm. You know what I like that's not in here? I'm glad it's not as eggplant, because I like zucchini, but I don't like <laughs> Oh, eggplant. well, there you go. Good. I'm happy we didn't use that's eggplant right. then. It's so good. And then a little bit of our pasta water, and that gives us even more creaminess oh. and even more of a starchy component. That's, that's probably so, where it's coming from, you got the it? pasta oh, water. You're, you're like how's it going it. over there? Oh, you good. Got no, it? I'm about, we only had about two okay, minutes great. left, so I'm going to take my shot here. We're going to take our pasta. You can use any noodle that you want. This is as the Today Show team made sure I pronounced properly, Pockery. Pockery. We have our yeah. Italian, so we want to make sure we're doing it properly. Oh, Shout no. out to like Anthony and them. Katie. And we are adding that directly into mm -hmm. this gorgeous blended sauce. By the way, can I just say for school nights, if we were making this in the daily household, we might 
do this sand sauce and just do it with a little butter and cheese for the kids. So yes, delicious. Yeah. And then, and then and hype the it up for the adults. Exactly. Exactly. Can you use a different pasta? You could use any pasta you want. You could use this rigatoni. Really good. I love, you could use penne. I like fusilli. something that has a tube. Yes, fusilli. That would catch mm. the sauce beautifully. Great suggestion. Wow, that's We're going to finish mm -hmm. it up with a little bit of that fresh lemon juice from the lemon, lemon that we juice. have reserved <laughs> over it. here. And you can add a little pasta water as you go to get it to a nice, luxurious consistency. And last but certainly not least, we are going to top it with no some giant pads of butter. No what is that? What are you noticing no, on but top? But it feels like it is. It's it feels crazy. Like we are adding pistachio. some pistachios. Oh, pistachios. Oh, oh, some oh, Sicilian like pistachios. Oh, We've got some done fresh basil. Oh, yeah. That roasted zucchini. So we get those crispy bits. We get really zucchini good, two ways. Yeah. Dinner like this. Yeah. We're starting off with some gorgeous thick cut bacon. Boom. Anytime there's bacon in a recipe, I'm yes. a happy gal. So we are just going to slice this bacon on up. We're actually making a sweet corn mac and cheese for everyone that's wondering. Uh. Um, and what I like to do whenever I'm cutting like pancetta or bacon or whatever, I'll put uh. it in the fridge or the freezer right. before slicing it mm. so it just makes it easier a little thick, to cook. I actually started exactly. using scissors. Really? Oh, that yeah. is also yes. a yes. great tip. Because I, I sometimes can't get the knife through because it's so fatty. Right? But. Exactly. Scissors, they'll get the job done. Also okay. great for cutting up herbs for garnish. Uh -huh. yeah. Good point. Okay, so, so we're going to render this. We want to make sure that this is cooking at like a medium low heat. We mm. don't want it to be too high because it could cause the bacon to burn and stay a little chewy. We want it mm. to be really crisp and delicious. Right. So this, what's in season right now? We corn. got a lot of corn. <laughs> yes. And it is so delicious. It's so sweet. And it actually has a lot of great starch in it. So we, and that's going to allow us to get a really creamy sauce mm. without creating a bechamel base, which is oh. traditional of a mac and cheese. Right. So we are putting it with the bottom down right into the bowl mm. and slicing it off of the cob. Okay. And you can keep that cob uh, for later, which I will show you what we're going to do with the cob oh. as well. Some people make uh, a stock out of it. Yeah. It Exactly. You can make a stock out of the cobs. Oh. Al, you always know what's up in the kitchen. Oh, yeah. I respect that. About I don't you. know much else. Okay. <laughs> so we have cut off that corn. Uh -huh. And then what we're going to do is we are going to take that residual bacon fat that yeah. we have. That adds that flavor. Liquid gold, baby. <laughs> exactly. You know it. And we're going to take some shallots that we just grated uh -huh. on a box grater. We're going to mix those up. If you didn't have shallots, could you use onion? Yeah, absolutely. You uh -huh. could use onion. You could use leek. It's you could add a little extra good. garlic if you want. Mm -hmm. And then a little chili flake for some heat this okay. you can keep out if you want as well you know if you're sensitive to heat don't worry about right. it and then of course once that sauteed down we add that corn in and saute it up hit it with a little bit of salt and pepper mm -hmm. your kitchen at this point is going to be smelling amazing it smells great <laughs> and already. then we will take that mixture All and that. transfer it into a blender oh. so this blender uh, it just has the mixture along with our pasta water which mm -hmm. is another liquid gold I call right. this unicorn juice because <laughs> it has this magical thing where it creates a really nice starchy component which will coat that pasta mm. and give us oh. a luxurious thick sauce. And I noticed you have some Parmesan. Is that yes. Too? Oh, you know it. Okay. So you can use pecorino or parm. Pecorino will give you a little bit of a saltier experience. Mm -hmm. um, but if you can only find parm, that works too. And we are now making our sauce. So at a low heat oh. or even off the heat, depending on how hot your pan already is, you're going to transfer back back and forth between our cheese, a little uh, bit of pasta mm. water, and then we're going to add in my good pal cheddar. Uh, <laughs> it's always better it. with cheddar. It's always better with cheddar. You know it. So we're adding a little bit at a time and continuing to mix because mm -hmm. we want the sauce to emulsify and get creamy. Right. If you dump it all in at once, it could break. So, so just in the meantime, be careful we've been with that. Boiling your pasta. Yes. In the meantime, we've been boiling our pasta. We have taken a little bit of that pasta water to add to our sauce as we're cooking it up. Right. And I even took some of those corn cobs that we had oh, and yeah. popped them into the water. And what that's going to do is it's going to further infuse use that mm. corn flavor That's into cool. the pasta itself. Okay. And then you're going to take the sauce and the pasta together? Exactly. So once that cheesy sauce has melted and mm. emulsified, we're going to add that pasta directly into it, give it a nice toss, add any more so uh, pasta Beat water it. that we need, and we're garnishing with more cheese, that crispy bacon, and some fresh chives. Oh, it's so baby. good. This is and like, it's time to eat. You know right. what I love about this? Because it's salty, but you have a sweetness without oh, like mm -hmm. sugar right? or anything. You know? Fantastic. Oh, I'm and the so corn happy. made it creamier. Oh, like without Lina all the yeah. Thank you so much. Wow. Thank you. Very good. Wow.
and it's an exciting day because we are launching a full Today Table cooking show with some of our favorite chefs all over on Today All Day. And we have one of them with us, Chef Elena Besser is with Good us. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, my friend. Congrats. Thanks. Yeah. I'm seriously so pumped about this series. I think everyone is going to love it. Such fun recipes. Mm -hmm. And it premieres and easy. today. Yes. An easy yes. recipe. I love that. Well, it yes. smells so fresh in here. Yes. I mean, there's just so many herbs mm. that go into this recipe of yours. Yes, there are. Uh, herb quiz, quick quiz. Al, can you name all these herbs? Uh, dill, chive, uh, uh, mint, uh, basil, uh, parsley. Yes, you got them all. Okay. You got them Yay. all. Yay! Sometimes out I have to taste parsley to so make yes, sure it's not so I love so it. This is such a fun way to use all of those beautiful herbs that are in season, coming in season right now. I know mm -hmm. our gardens are starting to bloom. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a really easy herb pesto okay. that has a lot of spinach in it as the foundation. So and we should mention people can shop along right now. If you just yes. scan that QR code, mm -hmm. you can get the menu. I don't know the verbiage for it. I don't have the verbiage, but you can get all the ingredients. It takes you. Right to Walmart and get some and then yeah, they can ship yeah. them right to your house. Wow. So this is a really easy herbaceous sauce, and it's going to have some lemon herbaceous. zest and lemon juice in it. Mm, so what we're going to do you. is we're just going to take a lemon. This is a rasp grater, also known as a microplane, mm -hmm. and you just zest you have one that those, right? beautiful <laughs> right. zest into <laughs> it them. at the restaurant that I cooked one. at. We would get in trouble if we sliced a lemon before zesting it it's because there's so much flavor mm. in the uh, zest of the lemon itself. Mm. Okay. So you want to stop at the way. Zest? Yeah, you can pre zest, but just make sure. There. Yeah, make sure you put it in your refrigerator in like an airtight okay. baggie okay. or you cover it up. Okay. Then Smells what you're good. also going to do once you've zested them, you'll slice them in half, take a citrus press, pop that in. Contrary to popular belief, you actually want to put it cut side down to mm -hmm. get the most juice out okay. of it. Mm -hmm. This has one garlic clove in it too, so we will. Typically take all of these lemons, pop okay. them in there. So good. But for time, I want to make sure we get to all of the different steps. <laughs> okay. Then you're gonna take a ton of fresh spinach, okay. several handfuls. You want to have a really nice high-speed blender or mm -hmm. a food processor. Take all of those herbs that we have over there. You oh, can use any variety in. that you want. Um, and the main thing here is you just want to go with soft herbs that are gonna easily break down. Okay. Right. You're also going to add in some olive oil, extra virgin olive oil for extra flavor mm -hmm. and we're going to pop that in blend it on up and then you are left with this beautiful bright green Yay, sauce which yeah. is right over here so Could this you just everyone can see arugula instead of the spinach yes, to a, pepper it up I mm. love that suggestion you absolutely could use arugula you could use any green I love the nuttiness so the peppery taste this of the This is such arugula. a good idea to get rid of those extra herbs right? in your garden cuz I did that last year I had all these herbs and I just had nothing sure. to do with them It's the best and or it's ones so that are easy kind of on their last leg Yeah, yeah. Got to throw in there. Absolutely, freshen them up. So we have rigatoni right here. Okay. This is my favorite pasta shape. It catches all that saucy goodness. Mm -hmm. You're just going to take all that rigatoni, transfer it right into this big bowl of sauce. And what's fun is you can just serve it directly in this bowl. So oh, it's yeah. all going to come together right in I love this bowl. And the extra pasta goodness. water. Yes, the pasta water is yeah. key. We really want pasta water here. I call it unicorn sauce. I know that's ridiculous. <laughs> but the reason why is because it's magical, my friends. Okay. This has all of that starchy goodness that's going mm -hmm. to really allow the it. sauce to stick to the pasta itself rather than running right off. Mm -hmm. So we are just going to continue mm -hmm. tossing this up. And a fun little thing that I like to do other than adding a lot of cheese, because mm -hmm. I'm from the Midwest and I can't help myself. <laughs> Wait, I need as much cheese. Chicago. Oh, that's right. We talked about Born that. and raised and we're both Wildcats. <laughs> yeah. but, you are know, you throwing dates in there? Okay, oh, this is a dates. crazy twist. Oh so I actually, I, half of my family lives in Israel, so I love eating dates. Oh my God. Love them, love to integrate them into mm. anything. And a little bite of sweetness. These taste like concentrated maple syrup, if you will. Yes. So I like to add them to the oh top of whatever, uh, of this pasta oh, wow. specifically, oh. but also whatever I'm cooking. Girl. You like it? And then some toasted pine nuts because a little extra nuttiness. We're happy to have it. And oh. some extra fresh mm. herbs. And oh you know God. what? I'm so happy everyone likes it. What's oh great God. about this too is that if you have leftovers the next day, it is delicious cold. It tastes Can like I sing a, your praises? Mm. So you should go to today.com, watch her show, get this food, because sometimes when chefs are here and they cook, there's a little buzz in the studio about how good yeah. it was. With you this morning, everybody was buzzing mm -hmm. about how good this pasta is. And this is another one. And you know what I love so about much. this? Sometimes I find with pesto, it gets monotonous, and I'm eating the pesto, and I'm like, ugh. This mm -hmm. is like... You get a lemony bite and then yeah. you get a nice crunchy salt, but then the sweetness cleanses your palate and for another looks, salty pesto bite. Yes. Beautiful. So we said yes. My, oh, that was not such planned. great descriptions. Fantastic. I love all of you. It's such Thank a pleasure. you. By the way, if you, you like so dates, 
Rancho Metaluca. Okay. Makes a, it's, a ran, it's a date farm out in California. Spectacular. Really? Okay, got it. <laughs> TV host Elena Besser. She has not one, but two desserts two. that we can make ahead of time. So all you have to do is scan that QR code right at the bottom of the screen. You can cook along with us with one click, select get ingredients, and then you can schedule that pickup or Perfect. that delivery. Elena, good morning. Good to morning. You. Good morning. Always, good always morning. great to be with Pumpkin you. Pumpkin mini cheesecakes. You know it. Yum. It's always fun when you have an individual dessert portion and mini versions sure. of desserts just bring me so much joy. So we are changing up the traditional graham cracker crust and we are using ginger snaps to add that autumnal flair. So we have some okay. brown sugar. We've got our ginger snap cookies and we are going to pulse this on up in a food processor. Ooh, can I until pulse? I love to yes, pulse. Yes, please do. Just just the, what do you got the over there? What is that, butter? Yes, and we've got some melted butter. Feel free to get after that. And once it is all night, keep on going. Yeah. Ooh. And once it is fully the consistency of sand, okay. you're going to stream in. Greg's really having a good time. You're doing great. Oh, you're going to so stream sorry. in that melted No, you're doing it. Keep going, Greg. Keep going. Stream in that melted butter. And it's going to end up looking like wet sand. Then you push oh, yeah. it into the little ram. <laughs> exactly. And you take a glass and press it down to create this little crust. Chanel, if you Honestly, want to try it. Honestly, I could just eat can. this bite. I thought that was brown sugar. <laughs> it, it's a little brown sugar like brown plus sugar. ginger snacks. Oh, that's, yeah. that's good. Right, right? Oh. This is by itself. Right? right, so you do that. And so you do that. You pop that into the oven for about 10 minutes to set. And then we're going to start on our filling. So okay. we have cream cheese. We have brown sugar. We've got white sugar in here. And we are Other going. Side. Yeah, I keep doing that. I know, it's KitchenAid, Elena. It's a KitchenAid. Yeah, I love KitchenAid. They're the best. <laughs> um, and we're going to whip this on up. Then we're adding in all of our other flavorings. So we've Great. got the cinnamon. Eggs going. That's a warm we got flavor. our eggs. That's a warm flavor. We have oh, ooh, one wow. hand. Hey. 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 One more. Let's go. Wow. Hey. Hey. Look one at this more. executive chef right there. There we go. Hey. Oh, man. Oh, in my man. kitchen at home. Look at that. Skills. I love it. And then we're adding a little so bit like, of kosher salt. <laughs> exactly. We're adding in some vanilla extract. And this wouldn't be a pumpkin cheesecake unless we had our pumpkin puree. So you True. could also swap out sweet potato if you want. You pop that in here. You end up having this delicious mixture. Yum. Wait, where do you get that? Is that in a can? Yeah, you can get it in a can. Okay. Let's save the time. You know? Okay. I know, I know. And then we are pouring it into all of our ramekins. It's a nice 
thick, delicious batter. Same. Who doesn't love a good ramekin? Well, well, Pop that in, and then we are going to sure. bake it in the oven. And this is the fun, is really awesome. chefy mm, moment here. Okay. And this is what's going to give us that luxurious, creamy texture. We are going to add in water wow. to the bottom. This creates a water bath. So what happens is, instead of that cheesecake cooking too quickly, it's going to slowly poach it, so you get that really delicious, ah. creamy texture. I gotta get your food. But wait, there's more. There's wait, more. there's more. We also, oh, we're gonna start eating. Have some so please start eating it. We have some brown sugar oh and gosh. butter. We've got pumpkin seeds. We have mm. pecans oh or God. pecans, Ooh, however you say it. it. And a little bit of salt. Mix it up. We're making Girl. a brittle. Oh my! We have really this brittle, ridiculous. And we're topping it with. Oh. Um, some whipped cream that is sweetened with maple syrup. I wasn't expecting this. The fall flavor. It's Isn't so this soft. Fun? Yeah, Here's it's the a thing. Pump, it's Each like a layer is yummy on its own. Like oh, even yay. that right there is yummy. Oh, like, I'm so and it's fun to just snack on the brittle because it that's comes what I mean. in these nice. Wait, we didn't pieces. talk about the crumble. Oh, we have to talk about the crumble. Okay. Okay, so crumble is such an easy dessert that you can make really far in advance. You can make all of these in advance, by the way. Mm. This you can store in the fridge for oh, up gosh. to a week, unmold and serve it. And then with the crumble, you could make this oh, and freeze it. Wrap it on up. Um this is cranberry and apple crumble. Uh, oh you bake gosh. it in the oven, let it cool completely, wrap it up, put it in your freezer, and then right mm. before you're serving, pop it into the oven at 350 degrees. You're going to put tin foil over it, pour some melted butter over it oh to God. reheat it, Whoa. and then serve it a la mode because always ice cream. Mm. Is there some lemon something in here? Or what's there's going some on? lemon, there's a little orange. If orange isn't your thing, you can just omit the orange. Um, oh, this is but great. I'm happy you guys like it. Crumble's so easy. It's so delicious. It's a crowd pleaser. And what I love about it, not very many dishes. You yeah, make it in the iron, yeah. you pop it on the table. Oh it looks stunning, and your whole family is going to love it. Cheers to you. I like them both. I know they're both really yummy. What are you doing for Thanksgiving? I am going to be in Florida with my family. It'll be fun. It's the first year I'm not cooking in a while. I was going to say, you? you deserve to. I was just about to invite you to, to my, uh, my in laws' place. <laughs> So what are we making this morning? We are making a spiced apple loaf cake. We are celebrating the bounty of the season with these gorgeous apples. You can use Honeycrisp, you could use Granny Smith, whatever your favorite apple is. And we're going to start by peeling it up and giving it a nice grate on a box grater. Okay. I figured it would be easier to grate it instead of taking all that time to chop. We're doing a lot of chopping yeah. already. That's a nice yeah, pro tip. Yeah. So let's, let's make it easy. Watch your fingers. Yeah, be Thank careful. You. Wouldn't that be terrible? Please. Yeah. 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 Craig Nolan. Safety only. Safety <laughs> only. Um, and then the next thing we're going to do is we're taking a bowl of sugar and some oil, uh, adding two room temperature eggs, a little bit of Greek yogurt for some. Oh, that's where you get that little tang. You could also use sour cream if you prefer, and then a nice healthy amount of vanilla extract. Mm. In baked goods, vanilla extract kind of acts like the salt. It brings out all of the flavors mm. in the baked good. Uh, so if you want to keep yes, mixing that up. And I notice we keep the wet and dry separate here. Absolutely. We want to keep the wet and dry separate. It's really important to just 
make sure we're mixing the wet together before the dry so that we have a nice even baked good that is really fluffy and delicious. Ladies, awesome so bo, how are yeah, you? Yeah, I love it. Delightful. Yummy. Really oh, good. Okay. Delightful. Good. And then we're going to add in some warming spices. Spice. We have cinnamon, ginger, nutmeg, our flour, all of our rising agents warming in here. Warming spices. Mm. I didn't, I've never heard them referred nice to as that. Nice and cozy. And then what warming we're going to do spices. is we're going to take those apples, we're going to add them to the wet ingredients, okay. and then we're going to mix that all in with the dry ingredients. And it goes into our grease loaf pan. And if you want, you could actually add a little olive oil in there. The fruitiness oh, cool. from the olive oil okay. is really going to add a lovely So this goes flavor. into this. So this goes into this, goes into our pan. We bake it until it a uh, toothpick insert in the center comes out nice and clean. Mm -hmm. And now we're making the frosting. It's and this the frosting is frosting. yummy. That's That's real good. That's so part. what we're going to do is we're going to cream together butter and butter. Uh, cream cheese. Butter. And we all the butter. Yeah. That's what this holiday is all about. Yeah. There's yeah. even more butter in a second. So get ready. <laughs> so we're going to cream all this together. And then we slowly, it's not turning out. It, it, yes, it is. It's going to turn it, Oh, there we go. Look I was looking at the wrong side. <laughs> and we're just going to cream that together until it's nice and whipped. We are adding in cinnamon. One of, one of the warm spices. Yes. Yeah, a you, warm spice. Feeling warm. You're yeah. learning. You're learning. I love it. Some vanilla extract as well. A warm extract. That's yeah. a warm extract. <laughs> a pinch of salt to additionally awaken all of the flavor. And then we're slowly but surely, do you want to add it in? Sure. Adding in that uh, powdered sugar. And this is going to make sure it adds a subtle amount of sweetness, but we don't want too much. Yeah. I, I don't like when a, a frosting is too overpowering yeah, yeah, yeah. and cloyingly sweet. So we're adding a little bit in. And then a touch of milk to smooth it on out. Okay. And once that is done and whipped to perfection, we're heading on over to our stovetop. This is a fun little extra thing that I think this is unexpected. It's fun, right? Yes. So we're melting oh. a little bit of butter on our on a skillet. Okay. Mm. And once we've sliced up our bread, uh, you take it next level. And you toast it on up <laughs> so it gets nice and yeah. toasty. It tasted toasty. Did you, spring, did you sprinkle a little salt on top of that frosting? You know I did. And it tastes so good. It really did nailed it. Yes, that thank frosting you. Is Spot on. It's not too heavy either. Oh, mm -hmm. I'm happy to hear that. I and like this that. is a fun dessert that you can serve after the meal. You can also serve it in the morning. I was going to say, it's yeah. breakfast. If well, you want to do a make ahead, then how do you, like, you make it and then you put it freeze in the it? freezer or the fridge? How yeah, long will so it you keep? You can wrap it in plastic wrap, yeah. then wrap it in foil because we want to make sure no air gets inside of it. We don't want any freezer burn. Yeah. Pop it into the freezer the night before serving, put it into your refrigerator. It will thaw. And then you can slice it up, mm -hmm. griddle it if you want, griddle or you can it. just have it as is. Yes, and put that. Nice. Yeah, have it for breakfast, have it for lunch, have nice. it as a snack, have it after dinner. <laughs> Enjoy have it. Have it. it. So good. Long. I'm yeah. gonna thank you. Have it while you're meditating on that thing. Oh, oh, I still wish we had it. Oh, we will have that. <laughs> Cannot go wrong with dips. I love dips. I'm a dip head from the old country. Here to show us a few of her favorites is Chef Elena Besser. Hello. So nice to meet you. Oh, it is oh. so great to meet We're you. We're so happy that you're here. Okay, everyone loves that everything bagel seasoning. Oh, addicted. Yeah. Obsessed. Addicted. Okay, so I didn't think about it in a dip, but you say yes, you can. You can absolutely dip it out, you know? Okay. All about the dips. My dad is... Um, I say he's part bagel because yes. he eats a bagel literally every yeah, day. So I this was is, half Jewish. This, I was like, yeah, oh. Also that. And, um, and this is it. an homage <laughs> to him. And um, so all you have to do, you can buy some gorgeous everything bagel spice at the store. Okay. You can add that on in. To what? I like adding a lot into the cream cheese. That's oh, an important cream cheese component. This is softened cream cheese right okay. here. We also have some sour cream. So what I oh. like to do is just add that on in. Right? I love sour nice cream. I, I love French onion dip. Do, Do you, you love from the packet? Oh. The oh, onion with dip the, packet? Yes. So you just dump it in. Oh, I can rub it on my gums Fritos. sometimes I with the packet. It's, it's so, so nice. Weird. I'm a strange person. I have it growing up. It's the way it's going Okay. To it. Okay, so we added lemon juice and zest, and okay. we're just going to continue to mix this on up. Okay. And do you want to help me out? Let's pour in some capers. Let's okay, add some. Mm -hmm. How many? The capers are strong. No, you're kidding. I'm serious. I'm fully serious here. Big caper fan. And you just just mix it all some up. Some spring onions. Some spring onions. Let's do it. Absolutely. Great. This adds a nice little crunch. It's like all the things that you love in a bagel in dip form. Oh which my is gosh. The best. I could eat this with a spoon, actually. I'm not joking. Right. Like Would yogurt. you like to? I you want to like to Okay, it. here. Let's yes. go. Here, here, try it with the here spatula. Okay. Thank you very much. Just right Look, there. Well, we it. have the pretty ones right here, but you add a little extra um, look, you can scallion on in. top, right? Can I like, tell you something? This so is delicious. so yummy. Mm -hmm. And you can mm -hmm. have tomatoes or cucumbers, whatever yes. you want. Any crudite you want, mm. feel free to leave it out. And it doesn't. you don't just have to have a bagel for breakfast. You can have it whenever you want. Like, I love it. I love that. I, like, that's that's yummy. seasoning. I can put mm. in anything, the everything bagel. Mm.
This morning on Today Food, we're so excited. We're going to take a big bite out of our favorite fall fruits with the one, the only, the returning Martha Stewart. Hi. 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 So Hi. great to be here. Hi. I can't well, believe it. Martha Stewart's fruit desserts. And we are so and excited the, to have you here in person. The recipes are so good in this book, and I've been baking every single one of them, and they're delicious. But I want to show you how to make apple pot pies. Yes. Can you imagine a riff on the chicken pot pie? I love it, but it's sweet, not savory, it's sweet. right? It's a Can dessert. I ask you first, though, how's your leg? Did you my hurt, legs you all hurt better. You had a surgery? Yeah, my Achilles. Yeah, okay. Don't ever hurt your Achilles, please. Okay. Yes, <laughs> but you're all good. Okay. Yep, I'm all good. So, the apples, you need 12 to 13 gorgeous autumnal apples. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're using Granny Smith's and Rome's. Uh, peel them, cut them into like six pieces. Mm -hmm. Add lemon juice yeah. to stop the discoloration and add flavor. Oh, okay. A third of a cup of sugar and a little bit of salt. Just mm. three kosher quarter, salt. Yeah, kosher salt, three quarters of a teaspoon, and allspice, which okay. has a very nice flavor. Half a teaspoon. You can stir that up All some. Right. And then you saute half of them in a pan. Add two tablespoons of flour. Oh yes, a third of a cup of bourbon. That's good. That's <laughs> He's good. Like, wow. Yeah, well you a little bit more won't hurt. And you cook <laughs> that up until it thickens just slightly. Mm -hmm. really and then add right this. Now. I guess it's cooking. Yeah. Is it hot? It's yeah. cooking. Yeah. yeah, it's a little too. So you want it to knows. get it like a thickened up sauce well, kind it'll, of. It'll, the, it'll thicken up yeah. in the oven. Will it absorb too. that ultimately? Uh, oh, yeah. Ultimately, okay. it will absorb it. You add that to your other apples. Mm -hmm. This is half and a half of the apples. Mm -hmm. Can and I stop then, Okay. Off, mm -hmm. and then these stir all together. Ooh, yum! Oh Spoon them into. <laughs> oh, stop it! <laughs> he just added more. Spoon Food. those into a pot pie dish. Oh, that's cute. You see this cute, and this is one serving. So um, you didn't put the pastry under, I know. Uh, no, no, no. Pot pies always have the pastry on. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. You know. So here's. A square of puff pastry, just like that. Can you pre-buy that or? It's store oh, yeah, yeah. It's okay. a store, but you can buy it. They, there's very good home uh, frozen, frozen puff. Make a vent hole in the top or two, mm -hmm. and put easy. that like that, and then egg wash. Mm -hmm. Just a uh, wow, softly eggs. beaten egg. Yeah, the beautiful color, beautiful. isn't it? Uh, these are farm eggs. Really, really great. When do these things sit in water? I see water sometimes in these well, pans. Oh, no, not here. No, no, not here. You not don't want to do, okay. because you want this to to uh, puff up, and the finished dessert will look like that. Top, How long in the oven? Top with 375 for about uh, 40 minutes. Okay, yum. And so delicious. A really cute uh, single-serving dessert. Oh, that's now, easier than it, Martha, actually. Oh, my gosh. I would never these would make are them. awesome, by This is my happy place oh, right, right here. here. No, that's very impressive. You can't even talk. Yeah. So now, delicious. do you know what this is? Do you know what that is? A Granny is? Smith apple? I don't know what that is. Do you know what that is? A I'm afraid to, an apple? This is a quince. But oh. it's a cross between an apple and a pear. Oh, okay. But oh, it's okay. not edible it's uncooked. Not. It's really, oh. they're very sour, very hard, very fibrous. So we cut them into uh, five quinces. We cut them, take the pits out, peel them, mm -hmm. and poach them in a wonderful syrup of maple syrup. Mm -hmm. Here we go, Half yeah. uh, one cup of maple syrup. Mm -hmm. And about a quart of water. Watch Carson try to put bourbon in. A that. vanilla bean. <laughs> I already did. Boy, this is you have to split the vanilla bean. It's a little oh. hard over here. Oh, that's cool. And let the vanilla bean and scrape it. You want to get all those seeds out. Do you know how to do that? No. Yeah, see the Never seeds? Done that. Those oh, are vanilla wow. bean seeds, oh, see? Good. And you leave the thing in. But then you yeah. put the seeds in. And poach all of these until they're tender. <laughs> Look what they look at the color they. Why turn. did you take the seeds out and then you put them back in? No, no, no seeds. Oh, okay. I thought you put no, them in there. No, no the okay. vanilla bean seeds. Yeah, that's what yeah. I need. Yeah. Okay. Oh no, because that's the flavor. Okay. Now here are your cooked quince. Wow. And you add to this cooked quince just a little bit of the reduced poaching liquid, mm -hmm. and is that the one the liquid from your pot? Yes. Okay. And you boil it down, yeah. and you uh, add two teaspoons of cornstarch. Mm. Cornstarch will again thicken the juices. So you don't have a very runny dessert. Okay. And these, <laughs> that Woodford Reserve is going to love you. That's a good bourbon I love them. too. That's made right down in Kentucky. Mm. I know. Yeah. My people. Okay. So now this goes right into your baking dish. Okay. Those dishes. And all that'll thicken up. And this is the topping, which is flour, oh. cornmeal. 
and you can just oh, I love that. Put this it's all just a crumble. Over the top. Yeah, it's oh. sort of a crumble. Mm -hmm. All over the top like this. Yeah. How to quince this in your life? You know, taste oh, it. You're gonna love it. This is fantastic. Yeah, Have you tasted it? What do you think, guys? You love it. So yeah, someday yeah. my quince Heaven. will come. This is a quince <laughs> crumble. I don't think I've ever had a quince, Martha. Oh, it is. We're so having our first good. quince. Have you had a quince before? I, I grow. Oh, no, you. Oh, I grow quinces. I've never heard of it. It's been a best quince year too. No, really beautiful. Really good. Put this all over the top. And sprinkle your almonds, sliced almonds, on top of this. Today.com slash food is where you go. Yes. Mm -hmm. Pick up Martha's book. It's yeah. fantastic. We and ran out of time. Book number, book number 100. Have you written your tell-all yet? It's coming. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It'll be a good one. Uh, Thanks, Martha. <laughs> that it'll tell some sales, Martha. And cranberry. So don't, don't forget the cranberry skillet cake. That looks so good. And the recipes are on the website. And fruit desserts is out right now. Delicious. Thank you, Thank Martha. You. Thank you. Mm. Great Martha Stewart, she's making one of her favorites. It's a classic fish burger, and with more than 50 cookbooks full of recipes, for you to say this is one of your personal favorites, I mean, it's got to be good, Martha. Well, I I really like the fish hake. It's a an expensive fish compared hake, hake. Huh. and uh, it's a member of the codfish family, and and it's a wonderful white fish. And when you cut it up into nice little cubes like this, it comes like that. That's a uh -huh. that's a fillet. Mm. Um, just is it like a halibut? I've never heard of hake. No, no, it's it's lighter than a halibut. Okay. Uh, and and as I say, less expensive. Breadcrumbs. Uh huh. Nice fresh breadcrumbs. So just take a white loaf and grind it up in the food processor. Okay. Two eggs. Yeah. Mm, really easy. Are those eggs from your farm? Yes, they are. Of course they are. <laughs> yes, they are. The, oh, the hens are laying really well right now because of the warm use, like, weather. By the way, can you use the boxed uh, uh, Italian breadcrumbs or panko or something like that? Uh, work, yes, or? you could. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. okay. I, but, I know you make uh, everything fresh. Though. But so this is a delicious and a little bit of cayenne pepper, which is very nice. Did you catch the hake in your little lake out there? <laughs> no, the no, hake or? is a saltwater fish. Okay. Not a fresh How come you don't have a saltwater pond? Um, well, I'm so sorry, but in Maine I do. <laughs> okay. In Maine I do. In Maine you do. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, then don't apologize if you have one. Incredible. A teaspoon of salt. Yep. Some freshly um, ground ch uh, chopped chives. Right from the garden, no oh, doubt. Yes. And uh, don't forget capers. Yeah. Capers. Ooh, about why are those crushed capers? A quarter of a cup mm -hmm. of chopped capers. Chopped mm -hmm. capers, okay. Rinse them on, out of the jar and then... Uh, How about some and, mayo? Are you going to bind oh, this thing? Definitely. You're making like a crab cake, basically. It here. is. It's like a crab cake, but it's a burger. This because we're not amazing. Yeah. And here's the mayo. We have so our taster. Just... Chanel's already finished. Oh my gosh, I'm almost oh, finished. Oh, this so is phenomenal. What do you think, good. guys? It's so, so good. So good. Oh, Carson, wait until you try this. Why don't we eat more fish burgers in America? I don't know. Well, it's, it's not that hard to make. No, it's not hard at all. No. And it's a nice alternative to red meat. Uh -huh. exactly. It is. Or chicken. It uh -huh. is. And, or turkey. Right. Turkey burgers are good, too. They're one of my favorites. So this is a very nice mixture. Um, make the burgers. The nice way to make them uniform in size is to use a little ring like this, yep. like a biscuit ring. Okay. And uh, just take some of the nice mixture mm -hmm. and put mm. it in here, pack it. Mm -hmm. And I, I like to put this on parchment paper and chill it before I oh. um, oh, actually that, cook mm -hmm. the burgers. Look at that perfect burger. That's ideal. See how nice? Yeah. So I have, some, home, I have some that are already chilled. Okay. Yum. And they're going to go and why, right into Why do we into chill a, it, Martha? Why, why? A little olive oil. Why do you chill yeah. the burger? They hold their shape. Just hold oh, it together. Hold it together. Oh. Yeah, because the breadcrumbs and the mayo, it, it all Got it. gets mm -hmm. a little bit uh, firmer. It's a cold plunge. It's all the rage. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> and then just brown these. Yeah. Uh, and it takes oh, about eight minutes or ten minutes to cook. I gotta go back to the hake. How come I don't see hake well, at the, my you. local market? Is but it? you're not asking. You for haven't looked. Oh, you have to ask for it. Yes, ask for it's it. It's there. What do they hold stuff They're, in the back? No, they have the salmon. They have the cod. Right. They have the halibut. That's right. That. Some of these. Just ask for the halibut. Just ask for the pound now. For the halibut. Just for the halibut. And now this is this one of the one of the garnishes is pickled onions. Yeah. So this is Japanese rice wine vinegar. Okay. A little bit of sugar and mm -hmm. a little bit of salt. It's like a sake. Almost. A red, a red mm -hmm. onion, sliced, mm. peeled and sliced, you make and it. just let that stay for oh a day or two, and look what happens. It look pickles at the right up. Pickle. Yummy. Wow. See how pretty. What other sort of toppings do you like to put oh, on your fish? Oh well, burger? I like I like the onions. First, a little mayo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can. They're not yeah, ready. Yeah, I'm just kind of. So you're not ready. They really aren't. I thought they'd be sticky. This is and a mustard apart, mayo, a, a mustard. buttered a buttered brioche bun, oh. mustard mayo. So oh, add about gosh. a couple tablespoons of Dijon mm. mustard to your oh, of mayo. Of course you would. It's so good. And the brioche get that bun. ready, and Carson, then put a couple Perfect. pickled onions on. 
Carson, how pretty these are. Let me, while I have you, let me ask you just two quick business questions okay. here. Uh, book number 100, I believe, is in the workshop. Hold on, I'm, I'm running home right after this to, to take more pictures. My 100 favorite recipes will be my 100th wow. book. Wow. Oh, and I we learned a little bit about you, too, in your uh, past. And oh, yes, and a lot of, a lot of historic you were a pictures. Never a Marine. Okay. No. <laughs> Always a Girl Scout. Okay, right. Yes, definitely a Girl Scout. And how about the Roku show, Martha and, Cooks? Oh, gosh, we're doing that. Um, we have so many wonderful shows on Roku now. We They have my whole library, yeah. too. That's um, nice. On Channel 448. Mm -hmm. I live at 48. <laughs> Right. I lived at 48 well, Turkey Hill Road. Well, don't and tell I live your at, address, Martha. Well, I live at 48. She's, she's I'm not currently. Not, I'm not. Yeah, two houses, both numbers. I'm going to edit that out. Yeah. So, no. like, don't That's edit ridiculous. it out. 448. Oh, they don't question. know where it is. I'll take care of it on the West Coast, it's, but we're, you're in, in trouble now. It, it's in It's in Hudson, New York. No, no, That's no, all right. Just keep telling people. Has Snoop Dogg moved in yet? You're going to need his help here. No, not yet, but he. Yeah, his bodyguard, Tiny, is this Tiny, Tiny, of course. Martha, as always, thank you so much. Thank you. Are you enjoying it? This is awesome. I'm here. Us kick off the outdoor cooking season. Who better than America's favorite lifestyle maven, Martha Stewart? She's out with a, a new book. It's a guide to all things grilling. It's called What Else But Martha Stewart's Grilling. Yes. The 95th cookbook. Yeah, well, 95th book. 95th yeah. book. Lots of those are cookbooks. But grilling, it's it's the season. The weather has finally gotten beautiful. Yes. And uh, and people really like to cook outdoors. I enjoy cooking outdoors as yes. well. Yes. Do you have a grill less. like this, a charcoal? I, or? I'm a gas guy. You're a gas guy. Because it's faster for me. Okay. I've got the small kids. I'm just trying to get in, get out. Right. But I know you love charcoal. I love I love real hard charcoal, the kind the jewelers use. It gets up to 900 degrees. I like it really hot, and I really like pure. So I don't want use any starter. Don't use those starter fluids. Okay. You know, start with you know. But how do you keep your grates clean? I mean, well, your... first, of course, put your grill away clean. Every time you use it, use a brush like this. Scrub that grate so it's nice and clean. Okay. You can use a little bit of oil on a piece of paper towel and a, and a tong like this and yeah. clean, your, clean your grill. And then you cook. Now, this chicken has been cooking for, oh, about 20 minutes. You want chicken, this is for the first the first recipe, you want the chicken 165 degrees. 165, yes. you need your outdoor thermometer. Yes, you, yes. you have your little th re instant read there thermometer and you just use that. All right, let's get then, cooking here, Mark. Okay, let's so this, this chicken. is chicken with green chili dressing. It is so delicious. Once it's cooked, you make a dressing of cilantro, uh, zest of lime, juice of one lime, olive oil, and we can make this dressing ahead of time. Oh, yes. Okay. And you can say it gets, actually gets better ahead of time. Some scallions, some serrano peppers. That's your dressing. That's pretty simple. And, oh, it's so simple. How long do you marinate? Uh, well, you don't marinate. This is cooked on the grill, oh. just salt and pepper. Okay. And then you put the dressing on after it's cooked. Oh. And there it is. And everybody's going to have a taste. You're going to have a taste of this. You're going to love it. They're already this. tasting that. Oh, there. Yeah. What's the verdict, now, Carson Daly? What do you think? Oh, I mean, come on. Chicken, Martha. good. What can't you do? It's amazing. Oh, the next thing is the Korean uh, skirt oh, yeah. skate. That's the best. And now these are, 
it's sort of like a skirt steak, but it is a uh, short rib cut in the flank style. See this? See I love this ribs. Is? They're my favorite to yes. cook on the grill, but so traditional ribs So instead of the long forever. ribs, yes. This is cut in a, a, the opposite oh, direction, and boy, is it good. This is marinated. And the marinade is soy sauce. Not marinade, no, no, marinade. Mar marinade. Marinade. <laughs> and it's, uh, it is rice vinegar, sesame seeds, white or black, soy sauce, scallion, a little bit of light brown sugar, and freshly grated um, ginger and garlic. Okay. You want to grate a little ginger? Yes, ma'am. How, uh, how much ginger do we use? Well, you just, just grate it like that, yep. You know, a lot, go back and forth, yes. And then you Don't be afraid, all. Melvin, just grate it. I'm grating it, yeah. I'm grating it. Martha, is that enough? Yeah, that's good. And okay. Put that all in there, yep. And then your short ribs go right in here, those short ribs go right in here, and you put them on the grill. How long, how long? I, I do this overnight or okay. a couple hours before. So if you're if you're a late night, you know if you you want to come home and cook, yes, these should be marinated overnight. What's the verdict on the short so, ribs? Yeah. My favorite. It's a great great they are all Very marinated. Nice. Clean plate club. And then you just put these three minutes aside. I'll do that for you. Yep, Martin. you do that. I'll make myself useful here. Three minutes aside. Oh yeah, nice and flat. Uh, yes, ma'am. And you can also use these protective gloves. Oh, these have a little bit of silicone on them. So if you want to pick stuff up. Look at up. Guthrie helping out there. That's oh, right. Good. Do the we, got a, we got a burner over Five here. Five minutes aside. Yeah. Oh, okay. We got okay. about 20 yeah. minutes on this. Okay. Yeah. The others, so yeah, do it that way. Yeah. Uh oh, yeah, I, that's I got pretty, there just in time. Pretty well done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so this is served on lettuce leaves oh, with kimchi and the, um, the wonderful um, fermented that's chili that, sauce. Yeah. Do you like that? And scallions and cucumber. It's and really this is so, one. so delicious. That's how you serve it. All right. What so do you think? I'm a big fan of uh, Korean And then grilled food. salmon is oh. my favorite because I love light salads in the summertime. And a grilled salmon, this is a salmon that's been overcooked. <laughs> Not really. No, that's, fine. That is so beautiful. Look how nice. Use one of these baskets for doing fish. Cooking fish can be a bit intimidating on the grill. It, it, I yeah, find that it falls apart. Yeah, or... but this is this great, that's why you this have one great of those. basket. Yeah. Use one of your this yeah. is Martha Stewart basket. It is, but uh, but uh, you can find these in, uh, other brands too. What's in the salmon salad really quickly? Salmon salad is the, is the uh, salmon that's been cooked with a little bit of lemon zest. Always squeeze wow. fresh lemon juice over it. Flake it up. You want to flake it up or you can stir. I'll stir it. Yes, there. And there's a great dressing. Do you like anchovy? I, I do, in moderation. Oh, good. <laughs> so there's, there's a dressing with olive oil, anchovy, a little mustard, salt, and pepper. Just pour that all over the whole thing. The whole thing, whole bottle? Yep. Okay. And then flake the salmon into big flakes. Al, what's the verdict? This is terrific. Delicious. Like yeah. a salmon yeah. dish Where'd you get these here? eggs? Martha. Martha those those are eggs those right are at... Fresh. You can find all the recipes today.com slash Martha Stewart for Martha's book. Yep. Today.com slash shop.
We're back today, food. We're heading to this 4th of July weekend. We have called in the expert to sweeten the celebration. Martha Stewart's here. She's going to show us how to make a sour cherry pie with three different spins on the crust. Is that right? right? Exactly. Sour cherries can be hard to find in the grocery store, no? Well, they're, they all, it's a very short season. Okay. So maybe two weeks, three weeks at the most. All right. And most of them come from places like New York State or Michigan, and they're beautiful. They're like little rubies, oh. and but you have to pit them, okay? Because otherwise, your family or your friends will break their teeth. They have already; these have already been. Yeah, pitted, this is so this is a silly little pitter. Okay, that there's is a not better, the pitter there, you want. No, because there's a better pitter that I don't have with me, and it, it does multiples at, at the okay. same time. So, oh, this is aren't the they good? Today's show pitter, we won't be. Using <laughs> okay, and so here is. The f it's the pits, exactly. <laughs> so this is the first crust with a nice fluted edge. Always make your pastry cold, Maybe cold butter, cold flour, okay. cold water, and then uh, roll it out, keep cold it heart. chilled. Fill it with the filling, which is sugar, a little bit of flour, a little bit of butter, and this is the crumb topping. Mm. This is, is this the easiest of the toppings, Martha, the crumb topping? Yeah, very easy. It's just butter, flour, uh, brown sugar, and a pinch of salt. And so you just crumble the crumble over the top of the pie, bake it hot, like in a 400 degree oven. It is so good. I love Let's a crumble. See. Yeah, isn't I love it great? A crust in general. So yeah, amazing. crumble, crisp, whatever you want to call it. But put a lot on because it really does yeah. enhance the sourness of those delicious cherries. Okay. Now, here is a very cute topping. This is the solid crust pie. Okay. And this is, you cut the, you cut the a little, if you have a round cookie cutter, you can do that. Yeah. But you can also use a pastry cutter like that to cut the rounds. This lets the steam escape. Oh. And your crust will get nice and crispy. Do you have a favorite? Top, a favorite crust top? No, no, no I make all of these. Okay. All You're of agnostic these. when it and comes to And now the okay. this is the most complicated. You roll out your dough and you uh, lattice top. Mm. The lattice top. Lattice top. That, that looks intimidating. So you can fake it and oh, just put it good. over, put them one way and then the other way. But if you're very particular, you can actually oh, weave wow. the lattice, see? What's the hardest part about it? The weaving or getting the pieces to be Rolling uniform? it out, rolling yeah. it out, and then cutting it with a little pastry wheel like this. Oh, yeah. How's what's, that? Would you like that pastry wheel? No, not so, no. Yeah. There's, there's, no, there's, why'd you ask? Because you, you, you knew what she was going to say. Because Martha and I have been together a long time. There are, there are, better, like there are better pastry wheels. I'm just wheels. stirring the pot. Yeah. But, it, but it spoon. works. It yeah. works. It don't, you know. And so now remember, this one has to go way under here. Okay. So Because you're going to weave it. And do you bake bake the pies all for the same amount of time regardless of uh, the, the crust topping? No. Some of them take a little longer than okay. others. Like the solid crust will take a little longer than the lattice. But look how pretty when you really weave it. It's okay. really good. This lemonade is what this, this. Well, this is sour cherry lemonade. Oh, Very so sour. you can put your sour cherries, make a make a uh, syrup a of, of the sour cherries. Well, that's good. And, and you mix it with lemon and orange and a little bit of mint, and that is so good. Sour cherries are just one of my favorite fruits. Martha Stewart, you're one of our favorite people. And here, this is for you. Oh, Martha made me cherry pie, y'all. So Martha, good. these cute napkins. So cool. Did you make these uh, too? Yes, these are these are bandanas, and then you can stencil the names on them. Oh. That is. So cute. Martha, thank you. you go. Recipes today.com slash food.
And we are back with Today Food, the one, the only, Martha Stewart. Martha, Martha, yeah. Martha. We all know she's the queen of decorating, cake baking, <laughs> and gardening. Well, now she's sharing an up-close and personal look at her many talents and interesting stories. She's got a new show. I cannot get over this title. Martha Gets Down and Dirty. Take a look. The best use of a chainsaw I ever heard, though. A couple was getting divorced, and they could not decide about what to do with their home furnishings. And the wife just said, OK, well, you take half of everything. And she <laughs> went away, and her husband used the chainsaw and cut everything in half. <laughs> So That's it's a feel-good show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Didn't bode well for the dog. Yeah. Martha, good morning. You're out in uh, your, your, your house out there in the country. We love it. So how'd you come up with this title? I mean, I think we knew you were down and dirty, we deep did down know. inside. But everybody else thinks of you as like the queen well, of clean. Well, I am the queen of, queen of clean inside the house, but out in the garden, it is kind of dirty. You're working in the dirt, right? <laughs> yeah. So it gets me a chance to just, just kind of be myself and, and, uh, and show all the great gardening tips, how to grow things, how to cook things outdoors. And, uh, and today we're grilling all kinds of fantastic uh, sausages, um, which which I know Al Roker would really like. Mm. And the guests on our show are fantastic. We have Kim Kardashian. Tiffany Haddish is a hoot. Mm -hmm. And there's some guy called Al Roker. Oh, Al Roker, Roker you comes on this show, it. too. I, yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I forgot because it was and during the pandemic. But yes, I, we were talking about yep. uh, the rub. Yep, and he, and he does a great rub. <laughs> so, oh, barbecue rub. Bar well, rub. They did and say they, it was yeah. Martha down and, and they, dirty. Bar barbecue rub. Yeah. Well, Martha, tell yeah, us the about show's these. on Discovery Plus. Yeah, okay. Tell us about these dogs you're grilling. Like, it, is there an art to it? Oh, well, all kinds of dogs. You know, if you're going to have a grilling party, why not make it really interesting? Not just hot dogs, but special all beef hot dogs, kielbasa, uh, Ooh, a Greek sausage we just found called Ooh. called uh, Lucanico. It's it's a combination of uh, meat and uh, oregano and lemon. Mm. And we have beautiful cheddar bratwurst. Oh, These are so yum. pretty. And uh, and then, of course, don't forget the rolls. The rolls have to be uh, beautifully buttered. Uh, before you put them on the grill, oh, and yeah. grill make sure yeah. you don't burn stuff. Yeah. You know, Al Roker, he's he's also a proponent of not burning stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, true. if the flame is up high like that, just move the stuff or spray it with a, a little spray bottle. But get your your rolls nicely, just slightly charred. Mm -hmm. And the condiments, oh my gosh, look at all the condiments we have on here. Bread and butter pickles, French mustard. Mm -hmm. um, this is the, uh, you know, the baseball stadium mustard, of course. Mm -hmm. Chopped onions, red relish, green relish, sauerkraut, my favorite, mm. sour cream. Uh, you have um, uh, spicy mustard, tomatoes chopped up, and this is fantastic, a, a beet horseradish mustard. Oh, wow. so, horseradish. And bacon and dill pickles. Yum. And doesn't that make your mouth water? Don't you want Looks one good. of these right now? Sweet. I wish you were here. Martha, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh yeah. Maybe you ought to close the lid, Martha, just to kind of knock that fire down. Yeah, that's yeah, a good idea. Yeah, for one second, you're right. And I love this grill dome. This is a custom colored. You can get it any color you uh -oh. want. I love mm. this. So you, yeah, you can have it match your house, your backyard, whatever. It's a really clever, clever thing. Yeah. Oh, so there let's it goes. Uh, let that hey, Martha, cool down a little bit. Hey, Martha, yeah. what's your per describe how you would prepare your perfect hot dog. What what are your condiments? What do you like on yours? Oh, well, let's let's get one right here. Here's a hot dog. And on a buttered bun, and I would put first, I like French mustard, so mm -hmm. I would put a nice mm -hmm. Dijon mustard on. Oh, yum. I love relish, mm -hmm. and I would put relish. Do you know I have a hot dog at every hot dog stand? It's called a Martha dog. What? And, uh, and every place is a little bit Different from, yeah, Rutz Hut has a Martha dog. Uh, Raleigh's in Fairfield has a Martha what? dog. Uh, the great hot dogs, the hot dog place in California in L.A. has a oh, hot Pink's? dog called the Martha dog. Oh, yeah. Pink's, yeah. I have a, does Al Roker have a hot dog at Pink's? I do not. I do not. I'm not Martha oh, Stewart. Well, Come on. I, I, think, I, think, I think you should be working on that one, Al, because those are very famous. Uh -huh. And so that's what I have, pickles, and I love bacon on mine too. Oh, I'm wow. going to put a piece of bacon in oh, there. That's a good one. So there there's you go. my hot that's dog. That's a good one. Well, I love and Martha. Martha, <laughs> Martha, one more thing. What do you call them when it gets really crispy, when your dogs get really crispy? Oh, snappies. 
these snappies. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. And I right. love those. Yeah, um, Raleigh's is famous for snappers, as well as Rutt Hut. Rutt's Hut is also oh. famous for snappers. Okay. That right. you get, you know, snaps, snappers you put in hot oil first. Oh, you know, you, oh, you fry right. them a little What's bit. What's happening to that girl? Martha, that's, that's yeah, a yeah, lot of snappers. Okay. Okay. Well, I just <laughs> opened a little flame going on. Okay. Yeah. All, right. All right, Martha, okay. thank you so no, much. No, this is good. <laughs>believe this Jeffrey that your two young girls are authors at ages 13 and 11 uh, yeah I just want to say the picture of the cookbook is probably like a year ago kind of so they're like growing every day like apples and yes the apple doesn't fall far from the tree it's incredible I'm, I'm blessed and I'm so proud of them well Madeline and Anna what are your favorite things about cooking